welcome along and welcome to the 10th and final Farming Simulator League Tournament. Uh, coming to you live this weekend from Hero Fest in Switzerland. Um, unfortunately, I'm not, um, but uh, remotely here, I'm also joined by Mr. Kermit Live. Welcome, Kermit. Hello, Alex. How are you? It's uh, I missed I'm... you guys last month. I'm glad to be back. Oh, we missed you too. It was uh, it was not quite the same without you. <laughs> I appreciate that. Yeah, I'm happy to be here. Uh, of course, this is the last tournament of the regular season, so we have the grand finals next month. So we know Trelleborg are going to be first place. Uh, Voltra looking pretty good in second place too, depending on what happens here today. Um, some surprising things to talk about. No Cortiva at all this weekend. Uh, I found that quite surprising, and no John Deere on the uh, Sunday finals yet again here this month. Um, so yeah, lots of places up for grabs. And it's it's an interesting one. Uh, Horman very much today can overtake uh, Cortiva and and take that third place spot, which at the beginning of the season, uh, after the the first two three games, we would never have considered that being a case. <laughs> we right. would yeah. Never have thought Cordiva would be out the top three, and uh, and yeah, their presence here, not being here today, um, means that they're they're not. Yeah, I mean, is... I guess it depends on what Herman does. If Herman uh, makes it further than the quarterfinals, if they win the quarterfinal today, they'll jump Cordiva into third place. Otherwise. Uh, they're going to be level on points. It also comes down to whether my insanity can get the win against Trelleborg as well. So, you know, there's there's just a lot of ifs today. Um, Trelleborg, speaking of them, Alex, we watched that earlier when we were uh, waiting for oh. the sound check. The new bail record, 140 points via the Trelleborg toss. They grabbed the bail right off the back of the bailer with the telehandler and chucked it straight in. And they broke Vulture's record of 139 with the highest score you can get on a first bail, 140. It's, uh, yeah. Welcome it, to the tutorial of the Farming Simulator Tournament Client. This video will give you a quick overview of the game mode. A match consists of two teams with three players on both sides. Once the lobby is full, the game starts with the pick and ban phase. Vehicles with different properties and perks that give you and your team additional powers can be selected here. First, the team captain bans the vehicles which won't be available for both teams in the upcoming match. Afterwards, they can select a specific team perk that'll give their team a certain advantage and they might secure a harvester or baler as well. After this stage, the captain can pick his own tractor and player perk. This stage will be repeated for the other players as well. A little twist in the pick and ban phase are the limited amount of points a team can spend. So make sure there are enough points for every player to be able to pick and choose wisely. More details about the vehicles and perks can be found on our stat sheet, which is linked on fsl.giants-software.com. Before we let you play, however, let's have a short look at the map for some orientation. Compared to last season, it got a little facelift. It features more hills in the terrain and there are two separate fields now. We've also added additional hidden paths to the silo and the barn zone looks much smoother altogether. To reach the bale barn, you will still have the three dynamic bridges linked to those of the other team. But take care, they are tricky. As a safe way, you can always use the static ditch crossing instead. As soon as the game starts, every player sits in his or her selected vehicle and is looking for the randomly spawning harvesters and balers on their respective pods. Make sure to claim them before the opposing team does so. If a team is able to secure all harvesters or balers, the game ends in a rush. Unless you secured one of them during the pick and ban phase earlier. Once you have your garage together, you have 15 minutes to win the game. So, how do you win? The goal of the game is to score more points than your opponent. You get these points for delivering bales at the barn. 
To increase the value of the bale, you can sell the grain you harvested on the field at the silo. This increases your multiplier and decreases your opponents. But be aware, there are special events happening during these 15 minutes of game time as well. At minute 12, 8 and 4, special drops will appear somewhere randomly on the map. Each of these 16 random drops has a different impact to either of the teams. So make sure you pick the one which fits your current tactic or goal the most and be prepared to adapt. Excited? Then gather two friends and form your team on our website fsl.giants-software.com. Train hard and compete in one of our tournaments. Enjoy and happy farming. All right. There we go. <laughs> that's that's how you play the FSL. <laughs> yeah, um set you up there at the wrong time, Alex. Oh man. We're I'm have I have a feeling we're gonna see that highlight here in a bit, so we can talk more about Trelleborg here in a moment. Uh just a reminder to yes. everyone watching at home, you're seeing the German casters, you're seeing Homer, you're seeing the red cat, um, Steven and Stefan. So don't be alarmed. The sound is not desynced. You're listening to the uh yeah, apparently. Uh, the American language broadcast. Uh, uh, the social post I, had the U.S. flag. Uh, that's because I've been oh, hired and uh, I've yeah. taken over the scrim streams. But on on the screen now, <laughs> it, it shows both. So I like it. Look at that. We've yeah. we split yeah, the flag. It's, um, it's good. Um, yeah. No, I did. I did see that before. Um, <laughs> I, I didn't comment on it. I just I didn't, I didn't <laughs> just lie. moving along. Because the thing is, the thing is. <laughs> If you put well, strictly speaking, that isn't the English flag either. Right? Yeah, one hundred percent correct. Yeah, I saw someone make that comment on Twitter, and I wanted to respond with that as well. Um, but yeah, so uh, we're going to have a look at yesterday. Well, actually, we're going to have a look at the play-ins. Um, yeah. So Horman built uh, Fabius uh, beat Fabius uh, flamboyance. Uh, Manor two went through against Power Team Esport. Kawana Gaming lost to Bednar, who were through. Uh, My Insanity beat Lidner. Uh, Trelleborg beat Astragon, and uh, the final one there that I missed was Trelleborg <laughs> uh, uh, knocking out someone. Beating John oh, okay, um, it was that one. Uh, Baltra yep. and uh, Potinger both came in with a pass um, because uh, for some reason um, they didn't end up facing any teams. So, yeah, uh, yeah both those two teams Very uh, interesting. got a pass. I know that I believe it's Bednar and Kalwana who played yesterday. Um, they're both they were both remote um, because of the travel restrictions in Switzerland. So uh, Bednar has made it to today. They're playing Corona. That should be our first match of the day. So uh, if, when you don't see Bednar in person, that's the reason why they're playing yeah. uh, online remotely. Um, but the rest of the team should be at Hero Faced in, in person. And we're going to have a look yeah. uh, here shortly. We're going to look at the circuit points. Oops. And we know Trelleborg have secured first place. But there is some stuff up for grabs today as we have a look at yeah, it now. So, so, yeah, Trelleborg well ahead. Trelleborg are unassailable. <laughs> yeah, with 650. Yeah, I mean, the um, thing is, though, like, yeah, they've secured first place. But when it comes to the grand finals, anything can happen. Um, the main thing is you don't want to be 16th right now because then you're getting matched up with Trelleborg. Yeah. And, and Voltra have shown that they can uh, that they can beat Trelleborg. You know, it's it's... It's not out of the realms of possibility that uh, you could end up with a, a Vulture Trelleborg final at the grand uh, at the grand finals. Yeah, and uh, and and Vulture take it. So, yeah, there is everything to play for next month. As soon as today's uh, tournament is over, it decides the positioning for uh, for the selections for the finals, and that's it. It has no other bearings on the finals beyond. Um, Choosing where you uh, where you'll be in the bracket for that, so uh, it's uh, it's quite quite a lot to play for for some teams to get themselves positioned right to get the best route through for that fight grand final. Right, um, you are a hundred percent correct, and I mean the grand final will be next month. If you're uh, if you love the FSL, you get three days of it next month from the studio in Erlangen for the championship. We're about to have a look at the bracket. 
And uh, yeah, so there we have it. So a really interesting bracket today. Uh, we were talking about Horriman and uh, Mind Santi being able to make quite a bit of headway today if they get through their first rounds. Their first rounds are yeah, it's not Ultra easy. and Trelleborg. <laughs> so right. um, yeah, it's it's not looking great for them. We will. Uh, that doesn't mean there can't be an upset, and we do have upsets here fairly regularly. Um, yeah. The the teams that must be really happy though are those on the top bracket. Either Bednar, Krohn, Pottinger or Manitou are going through to the final. And that is, for those teams at the moment, that is really good. Um, you know, Pottinger could really do with those, with that massive number of points that they would get just by getting through to the final. They would leap up the table. They're currently sitting in 15th. They're the lowest uh, ranked team on here. And... Yeah, that would throw them up probably as far as tenth, I think. Well, um, yeah, that could make maybe a huge not quite difference. that far, but it would make a massive difference to them, definitely. Yeah, yeah there's there's a lot at stake still. I mean, and not to mention the prize money too today. Um, so you know, there's there's still every reason to play for, especially if you're thinking about places, you're thinking about prize money, just gathering some momentum as well going into next month could be key because once, I mean, the standings, the standings do mean something, right? We know Trelleborg has oh, yeah. been consistently the best team, but at the same time, you never know what could happen. So if you have some momentum, anybody can beat anybody. Um, it's all, you know, everything's at stake when it comes to the championship next month, the end of the season. Um, it's going to be an interesting grand final. And we're about to get started with our first matchup of today. Looking forward to this one. Bednar versus Krona, I believe, should be our first one. And uh, we're I just think about if I, to have if I was, uh, If I was to um, make a prediction for this one, which I normally am, uh, <laughs> I never normally do, um, I think uh, Krohn have a really good chance of going through on this match. Um, they are uh, two reasons. One, they're, they're live at Herofest. Um, there's a certain uh, amount of um, help from uh you know being their life being in place um and uh and and not necessarily uh sitting doing it remotely um, right and maybe uh, a little added uh, pressure too to be honest uh you got the watchful eye bit, of people I, on you and maybe still too early at the convention uh at this point early on today for a lot of people to be there um so hopefully by the end we'll see those seats that you see on your screen now filled up um but yeah, Bednar is, of course, like we mentioned, they're not there in person. They're playing remotely. So you're only going to see Krona out here in person. Oh, there are some more people in the stands. Uh, man, Alex, I can't wait till you and I can meet up at one oh. of these in real life. You know, for, for me, it's just been bad timing. I started the FSL in the middle of the pandemic and uh, started my job as community coordinator with Giants in the middle of the pandemic. It's... So I've not even been able to travel over to the office in Germany yet and meet my colleagues. So it's definitely an interesting time to to uh, be a part of this company with just the craziness of the pandemic and what it's brought. I've, I've said it a few times. One of the, one of the things I, I have missed over the past two years, more than anything, is being able to go out there and do the FSL live. It is just the best experience. Um, and Hero Fest, Hero Fest is the first gaming uh, convention that I uh, that I went and passed at. Oh, yeah, really? And, so some nostalgia and, and, here for and, you and today, I'm, maybe. I'm really missing. Knowing that that it's coming live from there this uh, this week, uh, of this month and 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 not being able to be there in person is uh, is killing me at the moment. <laughs> I would love to have been there. Yeah. Even bet. even though the travel to get there is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah, so here we go. Uh pick and ban phase time. This is the first quarter final of the four to get us going. Bednar versus Krona. Just a reminder, if you're new to the FSL, maybe you watched yesterday and it was best of one. When you get to the Sunday event, it becomes best of three from the quarterfinals on to the final. So uh, we'll have, you know, each team will have to win two of the three games to advance to the next round. So just be prepared for that. And we'll see who can take this first one. 
And uh, yeah, some un, uh, some some not very usual yeah. banning going on here at the moment. Uh, looks like uh, Bednar are uh, are trying to make sure <laughs> that there's no first bail shenanigans with the dollar handlers <laughs> this game. And this I, um, I will not the farm sim league, like Alex, since like what two three months ago when when uh, we saw the craziness uh, pulled out. Um, with the grain dumping on the ground and it just, it, it's definitely changed a bit. And I missed last month's tournament, unfortunately, uh, due to uh, a death in the family. Um, but you and Lars, you said that you guys, you know, you, you were surprised by some of the things you saw and it seems like teams can, uh, disrupt other teams more often now. Yeah. And it's, I, I think, I think that's the thing that's going to be really telling is it was one of the, the rev revelations last month was that um, the teams at the top, um, Trelleborg and Cortiva uh, especially, don't tend to innovate. They tend to be a little bit reactive and they're, they're I mean, and, and they are very, very good at being reactive. You know, they can take, a, uh, a tactic that somebody else comes up with, they can refine it absolutely perfectly, and then uh, they they can beat everybody with it repeatedly. Um, but they don't tend to alter their own tactics to test something new very often. And I think there's a lot of scope there for teams to create two or three different tactics that are a little bit hidden and they can go and disrupt those top teams a lot. And I think when a team starts doing that, then you're going to start seeing uh, those, the, certainly the Trelleborgs and the, and the Cortivas of the world, um, having a little bit, uh, a, a little bit of trouble um, Ye reacting to that. Right. We're underway here. Um, the we first are. match of today. Uh, thanks to everyone watching on YouTube and Twitch. Um, much appreciated for you all being here. And Felden in chat, thanks for the condolences. Uh, yeah, I would like to... De I actually dedicate this uh, today to my cousin who passed away because he was like a brother to me and he would be proud uh, of, you know, me chasing my dreams here. And, and I am absolutely... He told me when I spoke to him last to live life to the fullest, so I'm trying to honor that. And uh, I'm just, I feel really blessed to have this job and get to uh, be a part of the farm sim community as, as my employment. Um, and this past week, I got to do my first in-person event, super top secret, can't really talk about it, but you'll know soon enough what it was. And I had a, I had a blast, it was a lot of fun. We're gonna see a first bail attempt here. Uh, both teams coming in and 124 points for cool. Bednar. Let's see what Jack Roo uh, coming get. in with oh not quite doing the slide 117 so All two right. decent first bail scores here pretty pretty even just you know I, I sometimes I wonder like is it worth yeah you get some good points right but you also uh, have to really like go out of your way for those first bail points sometimes I feel like if you're doing transport company especially. Um, at least this is advice that I've gotten from other experienced players. Sometimes it's better to just ignore it and uh, be out there just getting as much straw on the ground as pressing and pressing as many bales as you can. Um, my, my thought is that that first bale is worth so much. And if the other team goes and takes advantage of it and you don't, then... Yeah, true. But if you press, you know, eight more bales... You, you then, need to... In that time yeah, they're spending, the you make up for in, the, in that time, you're probably going to press maybe one or two bales. If you if they get a 120 for first bail and you leave it and you get a 40 for your first bail, you've got to be pressing, um, you uh, what, uh, eight more bales than them, seven more bales than them? Yeah. You know, it's just one of those things you got to think about. It's, it's but points. the first bail is fun to see, in my opinion, too. Oh yeah, I think that's the main part of it. But, um, but uh, as I've uh, been around would, the FSL more, be... it definitely seems like sometimes we've just been proven that what you think is normal may not necessarily oh, oh, be yeah. 
The way to but it's, go. It's, it's the thing of, and that, and the, but that, I mean, that is just if if you get a, if they get a one twenty, and they get a a, a one, uh, and and so if they get one twenty and you get a forty, that is four more bales you've got to press just to make up the difference. Yeah. Which I don't think you lose pressing four bales worth by dropping off first bale. You know. That that would be a, that would be impressive. <laughs> and we've got. Uh, they're filling up. It's a very uh, a very standard sort of uh, run here. Oh, looks like we've got a full harvester though. That is going to cost some precious time. From uh, for Crone here. Ale dude and Jackaroo now. Yeah, they're trying to get that horse filled up. And meanwhile, Bednar has already got uh, the auger wagon, the grain cart, the chaser bin. What do you guys, do uh, you call that an auger wagon in the UK, Alex? I'd, I'd probably call it an auger wagon. The trouble is, uh, A, my farming experience is about 20 years old. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so then we did not have those on our farm at all. Right. Um, but yeah, I'd probably call it an auger wagon, I think. Right. So um, I guess here in the U.S. we call them grain carts. Yeah. Um, so it's just interesting to see, you know, uh, what they're called in different places of the world. We've got some Bednar fans in chat and uh, over on Twitch. We got the uh, Czech flag being shared. Lots of love for Bednar. Oh, Belton says, given yesterday's the matches, the first bell is oh, well what? worth it. Oh, nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Given given that 140 yesterday, uh, it, it is well worth it. And I did I, I did ask the question, actually, when I saw the clip uh, of, of what Trelleborg did. Did they lose time harvesting? Did they lose uh, grain, importantly, from having one person on that telehandler getting that 140 <laughs> point. Um, right. And I, I, I do kind of wonder about that. That that would be when I would I would question having two people doing that first bail. I just I, I have a feeling that uh, Trelleborg are not even going to attempt that today because I feel yeah. like it was like, let's see if before the season is over, if we can just break this record, like just to you know, assert our dominance a little bit more. <laughs> it is, it is one of the nice things record. about the playing matches and actually why, why I'm quite excited uh, next month uh, that we're, we're doing three days worth of the FSL um, to, right. for the finals uh, is, is the fact that teams do tend to experiment in those early stages more than they experiment in these tournament finals. Right. Right. And so you do tend to get the higher first kill numbers, the higher grain deliveries, all of that kind of stuff, and new tactics and things used in that part of the tournament rather than this part of the tournament. Yeah, it's it's also I don't know is it a gamble though? Sometimes in the play-ins you don't want to you don't want to uh, gamble too much because it's best of one. So if you screw it up, your chance is over. But of course, Trelleborg, I mean. You gotta, you know, pretty much trust what they're doing at this uh, point in time of this season. They've just continuously been one of the most consistent teams throughout the entire season, and I'm excited for next month too. I think a couple of months ago, we it was uh, myself and you and Lars did the commentary, and he was telling us a little bit about how uh, the championships will work. Um, it's basically like a three-team group stage, um, and the top 16 teams are going to get in basically one against 16, two against 15 and mm -hmm. so on. Um, and then the rest of the teams will be randomly drawn into the group. So there's a potential yeah. that there could be some really interesting group matchups. Um, of course, like you said, three days worth of FSL action. So uh, there's going to be a lot of FSL uh, to go around. And when the final is uh, done, We'll only be, uh, what, a week away just about from uh, the release of FS22. Um, it'll yep. be eight days away from uh, the release of Farming Simulator 22, which, by the way, that's the giveaway today. 
during today's stream and there's a link in chat now so uh, if you can't afford to get it or you haven't pre-ordered it yet enter the giveaway maybe uh you'll get a chance to win it maybe if you've already pre-ordered it enter the giveaway give it to your friend even if it's uh you're on a different platform because now farming simulator 22 is going to have cross-platform multiplayer uh everyone can play together that's going to be pretty cool to see uh what people do with that and there's a lot of exciting stuff on the way with 22. And that's the I have I have saved up most of my holiday for next month. <laughs> I, I booked a, I'm booking a whack of time off, both for uh, the end of uh, or for the grand final of the FSL and FS 22s release. Because yeah, it is a, it's an exciting month next month, it really is. Right. Oh, we've got some bales starting to be picked up here. Big crone. They're starting to fill that up. And wow, Bednar have a lot of bales on their uh, auto stacker at the moment. That is going to be quite a difference if they can get these in. 242 to 124, five and a half minutes just about to go. The first match of today's quarterfinals. Crone leads 242 to 124 at the moment. Kiwi Rob in chat says that's if Farm Sim 22 doesn't get delayed. It's coming out November 22nd. It's coming out, yeah. There's it's never been any November. wavering I, I, from it, that it, date. I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to say something jinxy now. Um, Farm Sim has never had a delayed release. It's had a. It, it, it's come out later than expected but, uh, for FS19 particularly, but. FS19 never had a release date announced earlier than its actual release date. Right. All right, so everybody, everybody was expecting it in November, and it got announced for November and came out in November. So I am not expecting a delay to FS22's release. All right, we're 20 seconds away from the super drop. Let's we'll see what it's going to be. Krona are looking pretty good so far here. Just consistently controlling this matchup. Here comes the super drop. Bednar really need this to get back into this one. What's it going to be though? Lord Baylor for two bales for both teams. So that would just score two bales, basically. Um, so Bednar, Bednar might want to go for this. Looks like Krona are going for it, and probably smart to get it so that Bednar can't. And they grabbed it, so that is not good news for Bednar there. Three thir uh, 362 to 224, 244. So Bednar have some catching up to do in the last three minutes here. Both teams have a really decent number of bales back at their uh, barns, though. 18 bales still on the field for Crone. 24 on the field for Bednar. So Bednar Ooh, have the bales to win this. It's closer, and Bail Combo oh, countered, and though, for Krona. Oh, Bail Combo countered! So that, that might help. That is good for Bednar. Bednar uh, needs so to get these bales in. How do you draw the winner for the giveaway is a question in chat. It's run through Gleam, so if... Uh, let me click the link real quick. It'll run out in 10 hours, and then whoever wins will be emailed. Um, that's the nice thing about how Gleam works. You have to enter your email, so you don't have to you don't have to stick around at the end of the stream. If you win, you will be contacted via email, and you'll receive uh, Farming Simulator 22 your prize if you win when it releases on November 22nd, and it'll unlock. Gleam All is right. uh, Gleam is great for for running giveaways. It's, oh, made, uh, yeah. it's made running my own ones so much easier. Yeah, it's my preferred method, especially because you don't have to chase anyone down that wins. No. Like, 
you know, if you do it in the middle of stream chat, they have to be active and that can just cause some problems in itself. Um, but yeah, I, I, pre I prefer it really too. Krona have now opened up a 98 point lead. It's just gone a little bit smaller than that. Oh, now it's back. It's even higher. 140 to go. Uh, we are having a look but at, I believe Bednar bringing some bales in. No, that's Krona. Bed there. Oh, that was Bednar. This is Krona now. That was Bednar. This so Bednar, again, still have the bales to win this. They just have got to get them on in this minute and a half yeah. in order to do it. Having the and bales and, and scoring them are two different things, right? We've seen it absolutely. before. You leave bales out there, you're just doing yourself a disservice. Um, all right. Let's see what's going to happen here. It's yes. going to get a little bit closer, but then Krona have four on the belt. Here comes Jackaroo with another couple on the baler. 692 to 634. This is really too close to call with a minute to go. It could come down to, mis to a mistake. Bale's dropping off the belt. Krona yeah, look comfortable, are looking at but the you never know. For the, for the unforced error, more bales coming in for, for Bednar. They've been pretty good, actually, at getting these bales back. Uh, I... Is Still know if there's enough out time. There and bailing more. I don't. Yeah, I don't think there's enough time to get any bales that are in those balers back. Seven fifty-four. Oh, and uh, I'm wondering if SDR was like um, thinking about trying to counter there. He kind of delayed putting those on the belt. Yeah. Um, but there's no really counter or combo at stake. Like... This is gonna be. This is gonna be close. <laughs> Eight oh four to. Bednar, oh, 844 to 852. This is getting really close now. And there's two more. Bednar two have more. the bales, and they have the time, and they've taken the lead. It's 884, got to the 862. Come from behind to take nice. The game. Well, they did it. Um, wow. You, you said they had the bales. It was just a matter of whether they were going to get them in or not. It looked like Crone was like comfortably in the lead throughout that entire round until the very end. I think they led almost the entire way until the last 15 seconds or so. Um, and a I good the win there by Ben. seconds, it was those, those two bales waiting to go up. Um, we the, were just seeing them at seven seconds, and they were far enough up that, uh, up that conveyor to actually take it. Yeah, look, look all bales that. were delivered, so that's what it came down to. Four more bales. Um, nicely wow. done, even with the super drop for Krona. Like, if, if Krona hadn't gotten that, who knows? It may have been an easier win for Bednar. Uh, but Bednar takes the first one. It is best of three here on the uh, finals. So this is our first quarter, quarterfinal matchup of the day. Uh, and Krona will have to figure out a way to bounce back from that, or they'll be going out here, and it'll be Bednar advancing to the semifinals, and I know we've got a lot of Bednar fans in chat right now, so I'm sure they're have. pleased with that I'm person. I'm just looking at the chat and, and the predictions coming in at the end, towards the end there of, oh, Crone have got this, Crone are, Crone are, uh, Crone are beating them. And then that <laughs> just stops at that seven second mark when, when they overtake uh, where, where those bales are obviously going in. And it's yeah. just, yeah, that, that was some Racking play from Bednar. No obvious uh, uh, unforced errors on either team, um, and uh, and yeah, they they just managed to outplay Crone, which is which is good to see. Um, you know, Crone are Crone are a very good team. They're up in sixth. Uh, they are looking at moving maybe a little bit higher today, uh, depending on um, on how uh, Horman and My Insanity do as well. Um, right. But they, they've got to get past Bednar in the first place. <laughs> um, who can get themselves, uh, probably get themselves up to maybe ninth. Uh, I don't think, yeah, they, they can't get them any, themselves any further than ninth today. Um, which I think they already done by making it to these finals. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, uh, that's that was a a good set of play from Bednar there. They They did really well there. And Bednar, um, if you're just tuning in, Bednar does not have the invisibility cloak power. Um, we saw like the empty <laughs> chairs there a moment ago. Um, because of travel restrictions, they were unable to uh, travel to Switzerland for this event. So they are playing remotely today. They're the only team, I believe, in today's quarterfinals uh, that made it this far. As we have a look at My Insanity and Manitou behind them, um, the teams laying in wait and uh, ready for their moment today. 
in the crowd watching on. I uh, wanted to say hello to Lead Dog in chat. I saw Lead Dog pop in and say, what a game. How you doing, Lead Dog? All right, here we go. Game number two. The Bednar fans are out in force. We got any Krona fans in here? <laughs> Nothing but Bednar fans. Man. Krona needs all the uh, support they can get right now. Hopefully uh, they can get some momentum in this one or uh, they're out. And Bednar will be moving on. Good morning, Lead Dog. Hope you're doing well, buddy. And hello, everyone else on YouTube and Twitch that's tuned in. Myself and Virtual Farmer. Uh, Twitch partner, Virtual Farmer. How you doing, Alex? Oh, thank you. It's awesome to have you um, here today. I'm doing well. Uh, hey hey to, uh, to Lead Dog as well. Uh, yeah, one of your teammates, right? On one of your strong... Uh, on, yeah, I believe so, yeah. On Red Dirt's Rough Riders, I believe. Riders. I, 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 I lose track in all fairness. <laughs> there, are, there are some, uh, yeah. There Putting are you some on the spot today. <laughs> there are some fantastic streamers. Uh, oh, there in, really in is. 100%. Um, 100%. Um, and I'm excited for 22 because, I mean, it's part of my job, obviously, to pay attention to uh, the content created for Farming Simulator and, and get to know the uh, streamers and YouTubers out there. And so it's, it's, it's a blast to be a part of this community, especially uh, as a Giants employee and getting to interact with people on a daily basis. I'm excited for uh, everyone's reactions of 22 and oh. uh, for the future of Farming Simulator. But for now, we've got another quarterfinal matchup seven between Bednar weeks. and Krona to go. <laughs> yeah, seven <laughs> weeks. I like both teams' shirts, if that helps at all. <laughs> so, so. <laughs> all right, fair enough. Uh, you, you know, there's there's some definitely some good shirts uh, in the FSL. There's also some good team oh. pictures. I think it's Herman that uh, probably oh, I would consider best. having the crown of best team picture. If if, uh, if the there were points for style, I think Harmon would would have them uh, <laughs> yeah. for their team picture because it's just absolutely brilliant. Amn uh, says asking me if I stream Farming Simulator. Well, I do on the Giants channel. Yes, every Friday yes. Um, when there's not a tournament and I'm not out of town, which has happened a lot this month. Uh, every Friday, right here on this channel, uh, U.S. evening time hours now from. 7 until 10 p.m. Eastern time. I do Farming Simulator League scrimmages, which is just basically open lobbies where anyone can come and try out the FSL arena. We still have uh, some German players that show up at 1 a.m. and stay up until like 4 a.m. with us uh, on those streams, mainly uh, uh, Donner Kyle from Team Manitou and also the guys from Diakofler. Uh, Trelleborg have shown up one nice. time, I believe, and so... Yeah, and plus we're trying to grow it in the U.S. So the uh, SGA stream team guys, they're really getting into it. Um, I know I saw Billy Alpaca in here earlier. He's part of that, and he's been playing with them from U.K. at midnight to 3 a.m. So uh, I love nice. seeing the people get into the FSL and, and be dedicated to it no matter the time because, I mean, I, I'm up at 2.30 a.m. at the moment. It's almost 2.40 a.m. for me, local time. But here I am doing commentary. And we are well into our second match here. This, Crone have to win this. Uh, they are in trouble if they do not. But yeah, I used, to stream, going for both. I used to stream some Farming Simulator. I was an ambassador yeah. before I was hired. But now that I'm an employee, I can't stream it myself. But uh, I may or may not be streaming some Farming Simulator 22 right here on this channel here soon. Um, so be watching out for that. Ooh. I will <laughs> definitely be streaming some Farming Simulator 22 on my own <laughs> channel, uh, which is, of course, just a shameless plug right now. <laughs> you deserve it, though. I mean, if you, if you guys have been watching the FSL and you don't watch Virtual Farmer, then I don't know what you're doing. Oh, uh, thank you, thank you. Because, I mean, even before I knew you, I watched some of your stuff and uh, your YouTube videos as well. And always very helpful and welcoming. and. Just an awesome all-around guy. And I'm not just saying that because Giants paid me to. <laughs> <laughs> no, because I paid you to. <laughs> <laughs> First bail at 106 points. <laughs> no, I didn't. But that, I'm joking. I'm, I'm glad I that you cleared not. that up. <laughs> uh, First bail at 106 points. Bro. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh. oh god, I'm gonna get myself in trouble now. Uh, <laughs> uh. Uh, we can't take mm. anything really said during the FSL no. uh, in jest seriously. I mean, when oh, it comes god, to the gameplay, no. you can otherwise, take that seriously. Otherwise, what Lars said last month would just be, oh, I'm oh, still, no, yeah, god. Uh, I wasn't even here, and I was mortified by that comment. <laughs> so, uh, so. Uh. <laughs> I've completely lost it now. <laughs> Uh, uh, anyway, uh, 115 points to 106. Um, not quite as high on first fails for both teams. Um, uh, 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 yeah, not quite as high for uh, both teams uh, for their first fail this time. Not quite so quick. Um, both teams creating quite a nice amount of straw, though, as we come up to the 12-minute mark and the first drop. So have you uh, have you caught up on the latest like the latest patch changes? I don't know if it's made any difference. I haven't really been able to participate in any scrims or anything um, after last. Well, actually, I guess it was August twentieth. There was a patch um, that changed some things. Uh, the Anderson loader has been slowed down by just uh, just a fraction of a second. The fast track speed and the Vulture G145 speed have changed. The Corona Big Pack Baylor has uh, had minus three tons uh, to its mass. Uh, what else has happened? The vehicle pick points for the Fent favorite has gone down from three to two. The Vulture T234 has gone from four to three. The Massey 7726 has gone from four to three. Direct delivery lasts for 30 seconds and has a fixed factor of 1.5 now. Unstoppable has gone from 30% faster for your belt and 30% slower for your opponents to 40% for both. And then the big haul team uh, perk has gone. Uh, the, it is a 59,000 liter wagon that has an unload multiplier of 1.5 now. Um, so just a few minor changes, whether it'll have an impact on today is uh, I guess the jury's still out on that one. It's it's one of those things where I think the teams may not have had enough time to experiment with it. We may we may see some stuff happening with that next uh, during the finals. Crone uh, have stopped Bednar's belt again. But Billy says, I want to see Kermit, VF, and Lars do the scrims as a team. Well, considering it's really late for them, I'm not sure that'll yeah. happen. Uh, it, it, Lars it'd probably really would have been here with us. Were really late for... Yeah, right. Lars would have probably been here with us today, uh, but he is on holiday right now. So ah. uh, that's why he's not participating. Uh, Well-deserved time off for him. Uh, yep. and he'll be back after and, and uh, this next week, I believe. Probably the time to take the time off before next month gets mad. <laughs> right. Yeah. I just uh, last last week, um, I took my first uh, vacation. Although it was kind of like a working vacation, I had like a half day work today, and then had a day off. Went to Salt Lake City and visited some family, and just had a nice relaxing time. It's all about balance. There is a link for the giveaway. If you type in exclamation giveaway in chat, it will put it in there for you. Just like that. Oh, look at that. I heard you press that button as I was getting ready to press my stream deck button. And I was I, like, he beat me I, to it. I could hear I'm, it. I'm normally, I'm normally quite quiet with my keyboard on here or try and be quiet with my keyboard on here. I wasn't trying that. Ah, that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. Everyone knows how a uh, virtual farmer operates at this point. It should be no surprises. All right. So the belt is stopped right now for Bednar. And Krona have a three to one lead. I feel like we've seen this before. Uh, 115 to 106 is the score. So Bednar, eh, they didn't lead until the end of the game last time around, and it worked out for them. It is As it is equal on bales at the moment. Though. Piper coming in with some grain, so that multiplier is about to change. We're 20 seconds away from our eighth minute drops. Now, if grain boost comes up for this one then uh, Krona are in big trouble because they have already dumped their first trailer of grain. 
where it's Bednar are now set up, dump all of their grain at once. Crone needed to take advantage when they had this three times multiplier and have it. And the grain multiplier is up. This is horrible for Crone. <laughs> 100%. This, at this point, even if Crone gets the grain multiplier, they have half the grain to drop uh, compared to Bednar. That is awful for them. SDR is heading towards the barn with three bales now, so might be picking up a uh, drop. Yeah, fully expecting Crone to pick up the grain multiplier. <laughs> is he going to do it? He's, he's ignored it. Not He's still got 15 seconds. Now he's hopping out. Now and, he's hopping up to it. And it's going to be grain oh, multiplier. No, oh, Hyper has fallen into the... Yep, Hyper fell into... Oh, can he get there in time? Oh, three seconds, two seconds, he got Oh, it. well done. Oh, what a recovery. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. And look, there goes the grain. Immediate drop from Brednar, evening things up. Um, but they've stopped for a moment. They need to get that in before those extra points get scored. And there they go. Dropping Ooh, the grain it chain. Immediately. That is a and lot of grain with the multiplier. Goodness. Goodness me. My only thought is Crone are waiting until they get more harvester there. But that is that is going to cost them. Why are Crone not dropping their grain? That's a very good question. Unless they're just waiting to bring more. I, but why? Uh... Very interesting got just to 30 see. 30 seconds. Yeah, we we can't really and it looked like we were just looking there and Crone had two harvesters just sitting there. Like this is all the grain they have. They, it looked like maybe we they go. were they were waiting for Bednar to be done, I guess. But um, I don't think I don't Bednar know why. are done. I think Bednar still have grain I think Bednar have faked them out that they're done. Yeah. Yep, and now they're going back at it again. Uh before the Time expires on the drop. Were, I think they were trying to stop Bednar using dumping all their grain during the multiplier. But this, this is, is interesting. still horrible for. So yeah, Bednar have you know a two point three to one point seven lead now, and that's probably oh. going to stick the rest of the way as we're looking at LD for Krona now grabbing the Anderson loader. It's time to start getting these bales loaded up and into the barn. This. This would be an upset. This for the first match today. This would be an upset. This would be for huge Crone for, for Bednar, Bednar as well. Just like you know, every point, every bit of points counts at this point. Like right now, they're tenth, but with the thirty points, they've gone okay. level with LSA, who are ninth. And then if they manage to win this one, advance to the semifinal, they'll jump into ninth place. Which I mean, I don't think they can go higher than that, but. Uh, unless they go all the way, but I still don't think they can. But even then, just one place could make all the difference when it comes to next month. So any type of movement you can get in the uh, season standings, you know, may end up helping you out next month. When it also, all to play I mean, for. it also locks Crone though into sixth place. This there was if Crone had won this, there was a chance that they could have gone, or they would have gone ahead of my insanity. Um, right. No matter what my insanity uh, did today, pretty much. And, yeah, this this basically ensures that they can't. Yeah, still four minutes to go, and the super drop could switch things. They've got to hope, Krona, that it goes in their favor. And it looks like it's bail withering. Um, so Single bail for... I'm guessing uh, that's both for... Both teams. Oh, no, two, two bails, bails for Chrome by the looks of things. And they are going for it. They are trying to get rid of two bales. Yeah, they're going to get rid of two bales of Bednars. Hey, Donner Kyle in chat. How you doing today, buddy? Good to see you. Hey, Donner Kyle. Hey, Fluky hey, Fluky. Stu. Welcome along. How you doing, Fluky? Good to see everybody on YouTube and Twitch. Thanks for tuning in to the Farming Simulator League. This is the last... <laughs> tournament of the regular season next month will be the grand final so basically after today the standings will kind of 
determine your seating for next month, but then it's all to play for. Anyone can go on and win the whole thing. Fielded has just pointed out something very important. <laughs> I predicted a crone win. I believe I may have destroyed crone's chances today. <laughs> uh. <laughs> Hashtag blame <laughs> virtual farmer. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh. I thought I thought that was a fairly safe prediction, to be honest. <laughs> Half an hour oh, ago. <laughs> All right, uh, two and a half to go. Two seventy six to two twenty five. I mean, last time we were in an opposite situation and it was the team trailing that pulled it out at the end. But the problem yeah. is right now, Bednar is scoring six more points per bail oh. compared yeah. to Corona. So it's going to be hard to come from behind with that against you. Chrome, Chrome do have bails, but they are at such a massive... I mean, we've seen how uh, massive a disadvantage it is just being... Uh, just having it 2.1 to 1.9. 2.3 1 to 1.7 is really harsh, and especially when Krona making unforced errors like that. Yeah, Bednar just, they're pulling ahead now. 520, it's almost a 200, yeah, 202 point lead now. Uh, I just don't think, with, with, and with that uh, grain multiplier. By adding, another, by adding that bail on the top. And Bednar are just racking up the points at this point i'm doing well thanks donner are you uh in switzerland with uh team manitou i saw him in the crowd but i don't think i saw you there three cedars farm says currently farming on some mercer county i love that happens a lot i've noticed people play farming simulator and while they have the farming simulator league on it's yeah. pretty cool I think I think that's a, a it's kind of a standard thing for whether you whether you're watching the FSL or watching someone stream it, you uh, you tend are playing to, it a lot to of the find time, right? that a lot of people are playing pubs. Hell, even even when I'm watching streams, I tend to um, uh, I tend to play pubs <laughs> at the same time. I don't time. I don't think we could get away with that while doing commentary. Though. No, like, no, I'll, obviously um, not. Alex, that are you right there? Now. Oh, oh, sorry, I yeah, yeah. had sorry. some silage oh, to take care I've of. Sorry, I've got into uh. a hedge. <laughs> 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 uh, Kurt says, "Can we get Virtual Farmer to predict Trelleborg to win?" That, that's that's one that I'm not sure can the Virtual Farmer yeah. movie can affect, depending oh, on man. the opponent. Um, but yeah, it looks like Bednar is just gonna coast to this, and this is, you know, that is just that looking is at the standings. This is an upset. This is the tenth place, tenth place team easily. Uh, getting through over the sixth place team here, and yeah, Krona missing a big opportunity to move higher in the standings, and it's uh, yeah, the the ghosts of Bednar <laughs> have oh. come out victorious. They're playing remotely is... here today um, because they're not able to travel to Switzerland due to travel restrictions, so that's why they're not on stage. But yeah, Bednar, I mean, that was the first one was close. That one, they controlled the multiplier. They had way more grain, right. and that was that. And it was it was that grain multiplier. You know, halfway through seeing crone drop it without the grain multiplier and uh and 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 then seeing bednar drop all of their grain under that grain multiplier the moment that happened crone was sunk there was there was no coming back from that uh good morning mr gamer dragon how you doing my friend good morning gamer dragon good morning night Vale. thank you so much for tuning in on twitch and youtube uh, so Bednar takes the first one. They'll uh, move on into the semifinal. They'll play the winner of our next one uh, between Pertinger and Manitou. So we're going to have a break here momentarily, and then we'll be back with the second quarterfinal matchup of today. But so far, uh, a lot of fun and a lot more to come, yeah. Alex. Yep, and, uh, and a, a pretty big upset to kick things up. So uh, we'll be back in a couple of minutes, uh, and we will be ready with Podinger versus Manitou. See you then.
All right, we're back. Hello, everyone, and uh, welcome into Hero Fest. You're seeing Klaus Eilerman, who is uh, one of our event managers at Giant Software and kind of the man in charge of the Farming Simulator League alongside Steven the Red Cat, one of our German commentators. So, yeah, don't be alarmed. There is uh, no desync issues, I promise you. Um, so we had our first match, and Bednar, Coming up with the win over Chrono, we're going to see some highlights from that in a moment. But Alex, uh, definitely one that uh, you were surprised by. You predicted Chrono to come I, in. We won't I talk about uh, your predictions, but <laughs> what did you think? I mean, I was surprised too, to be honest. But Bednar played I, a really yeah, strong I, game. Uh, that second game, Bednar just outplayed Chrono. And we, we're going to have a look at a replay of some of the matches now. And yeah, we had... Uh, it was a pretty solid first game from both teams, to be honest. Um, really close, They played yeah. really well. In fact, this is the second game we're looking at at the moment, um, where that rain multiplier Welcome. got... Oh, wow. Those yeah, I mean, that was a big expected. moment, though, because, yeah, Bednar had fallen into the moat, and if he hadn't got out of that situation oh. and got there at the last second, uh, they wouldn't have flipped that multiplier in their favor, and it probably would have gone to the third of the best of three. Uh, yeah, it, it really would. It was a it was a gamble by Crone to dump their grain early. Um, they did not capitalize on it at all. You know, you've got a three times multiplier there, and we we say this every tournament. You're sitting there with a three times multiplier. If you're gonna dump your grain early, go and score some points with it. You've right, we see that happens so much. Go score yeah. the points. We and see they that didn't. so much. And and it went completely wrong for Crone because they didn't do that. Yeah. Uh, and that's that's completely unforced error. A massive unforced error, you know? So Hey KW, yeah. how you doing, buddy? Good to see you. Good to see everyone. Uh, we're about to have the teams walk out now. Here they come. You can see them coming out of the curtain. There's Team Pertinger. And we also have Manitou coming out here at some point. Oh, there's Manitou. There we go. And there's Manitou. Yeah, so no Donner Kyle uh, for Team Manitou this this month. He wasn't able to travel, I guess, or they've gone with someone else, but it's good to have him in chat, and he'll be cheering on his teammates. Now, uh, I, I guess say hey, uh, earlier, my prediction for this, um, I is this is too close to call for me. I, I have <laughs> no idea. And I'm not just saying that it's because not I destroyed Crone's chance. <laughs> it's not, last time it's not possible for neither team to win, but it might <laughs> happen for the first time ever with that kind of prediction. <laughs> oh, don't, 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 don't um, but yeah, this is I a big no one idea. though because uh, these teams are like back to back in the standings at the moment. Yeah. So Manitou are joint twelfth um, on sixty circuit points. Pertinger are fifteenth on thirty circuit points. That's coming into today. That's going to change. Uh, both teams have secured thirty points just by making it to this, um, and can get yeah. even more. So if Pertinger were to win this, they could potentially jump Manitou in the standings. Um, so a lot of stake here. Um, we're at towards the uh, bottom end of the table, but with the, the grand finals, the championships of season three taking place next month with the top 16 teams seeding counts. And it could mean yeah. the difference between making it further or not. And hello to uh, this... Oddwalla Gaming. Tourney's going well so far. You've only missed one matchup. Bednar knocking off uh, Krona. Now we've got Pertinger versus Manitou. Um, this is, either way, this is actually bad news for Kawana Gaming and DJK uh, Enf uh, Enfield. Um, yeah. Because they are now dropped, they've definitely dropped down to 13th. Did you see that guy from um, Pertinger? He had like the snood on. He looked like a footballer warming up before the match with that thing around his neck. <laughs> I love it. Um, he must be cold when he plays the Farming Simulator League. <laughs> Uh, or maybe it's just I'm maybe sending a message that I'm cold as ice. You can't shake me. Maybe that's what I, it is. I also love that Manitou have a, a Manitou telehandler mascot on top of their monitors. It's just absolutely brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you started your right, new job on Friday, the, Donner. Well, oh, congrats. God, a perfectly tied game. <laughs> 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 Don't oh. know. First time ever. To have a perfectly tied game would be impossible. 
<laughs> wow. <laughs> ah, congratulations on your new job, Donna Kyle. Yeah, congrats. Congrats on that. I hope that you are uh, happy with it. Feel free to DM me and let me know all about it. I'd be curious to know. All right, we're uh, through the band phase. The ideal was a band there by Team Manitou. Ooh. That's, yeah, that's that. That's a power move, banning that, because that costs quite a bit to do that. It co- Yeah, what well, it costs a point for a Harvester or Baylor when you ban it. Um, well, look at this. Both teams going with herbicides. So last time around, both teams went with Transport Company. Uh, very exact same setup there between these two teams. We haven't seen uh, either of these teams actually in the final for a while. So it's the nice thing about getting teams that don't often make it through to the to these tournament finals coming through is we do get different strategies. Well, Manitou from was there teams. two months ago. The last tournament I yeah. did, they, they made it to the quarterfinals yeah. and they were the only team two months back to not use transport company they used herbicide yeah. then as well so yeah this is going to be interesting to see and i'm all for seeing teams use more strategies um because it just the more variety you can get in the gameplay the better off the competition is at, uh, at a whole you know because as a whole because uh we just we've seen transport company so much that it's nice to see something different It'd be nice to see something come through and disrupt Transport Company. Only one team per, or player perk for Manitou. They've gone with Under Pressure on Prodax. Uh, Mike for Perdinger have Archimedes. Please. So, yeah, this, this could be interesting. That would, Let's see how I it plays out. I think that's the result of banning that Harvester. Yeah, and well, and they also went with uh, that bigger tractor, too, mm. there at the end, um, which cost three points. So... Definitely part of the strategy. All right, here we go. Second quarterfinal matchup of the day. Pertinger versus Manitou. Who's uh, everyone's Ooh. favorite in chat? Feel free to let oh. us know. Ooh, that was close. Wow, I did not think that Mike was going to get that. That was so close. <laughs> that was ridiculously close. So Maxinator is setting off on the near side near the barn. And Stottle is uh, following up with the bailer. So they're going to go for a quick first bail here. See what they can get. Yeah, we don't see many teams doing the first bail this way anymore. So, uh, yeah, it's interesting to see them going for it. Um, yeah, most teams do it this way now. They'll go to the end. Right. They'll reserve a bailer. And they will grab a, uh, a piece of kit that does... Uh, that can go through the uh, right. go through the crop. Looks like this is going to be a good one if he can do close. the drive by. He's not gonna though. He's now uh, uh, still going to be pretty. Oh, oh he's that's missed. Starting oh, one thirty actually was able to get it in. So pretty fail. decent. Well, so that's uh, an eye. I couldn't tell. So Stouty. Okay, Stouty with one twenty five. Pretty close. Good start for both uh, teams. Yeah, a pair of decent first bales there. There is a giveaway for Farming <laughs> Simulator 22. You may have heard of it. It's just some game coming out November 22nd. November uh, 22nd, <laughs> you say? That's yeah. really close. It's like seven weeks <laughs> from seven tomorrow. Weeks and, seven uh, weeks and two days. Not, not that, that we're counting, counting or anything. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, click the link in chat now. Go enter the giveaway for a chance to win Farming Simulator 22. Because it's on Gleam, you'll have to enter your email. You can enter a bunch of different ways. Um, if you can't stick around for the entire stream, don't worry. You don't have to be here to qualify to win. You'll be contacted via email if you win. All right. So we're still early on in this one. We're 40 seconds away from the 12th minute drop. Freeing up the harvester. I'm seeing an awful lot of teams now emptying as they go along. It used to be something that you did static all the time. So we have but a question in chat. Have, have, have oh, sorry, cottoned on to this idea now yeah, but... that you need to keep these harvesters going. So there aren't weeds in the crop this round because both teams have picked herbicide. The question in chat was, why are there weeds in the crop? 
So if you don't pick the herbicide team perk, then you have to avoid the weeds. If you drive over them uh, without herbicide, they'll be on the field. If you drive over them, it slows you down significantly and it affects how much of the swath you're creating as well. Um, so it's just one of the strategies that comes into play with the game. There's also a uh, drop that can occur for herbicide that lasts for a short amount of time that basically ignores the weeds. But since both of these teams picked herbicide, there are no weeds. Having a look at Stouty and Prodex at the moment. Speed limit and speed up. Oh. Well, those just kind of cancel each other out. We'll, we'll I just see hate. if anyone goes for Ooh. it. Homer's going to get speed up. Homer's gone for it, which means that uh, Stouty has to go for it as well. That actually is a little bit disruptive because, uh, because Manitou picked that up as he was passing. It made... Uh, it made uh, Prodinger have to move out of the position they were doing and go and collect the other one. So I actually quite like that as a, as a, as a disruptive play to get the other team to do stuff uh, and move out of position. It worked really well. Yeah, and I mean, even the minor, like the smallest interruption on the final days especially can make the difference because often teams are just so evenly matched when they come up against each other, that it can come down to the slimmest margins, the right moment of, you know, this happening or that happening uh, can make all the difference. So you never know how, something you do early in a round could come out to uh, make the difference at the end of the round. As we're having a look at Prodex for Manitou bringing some grain in and gonna go ahead and started to deliver it and then stopped. We had a look at the players there for Manitou. I think he's just positioning himself so that they can dump it all at once at that eight-minute eight, uh, eight minute mark. Ah, uh, yeah. So Prodex has left the grain cart there yes. now. Now, the trouble both these teams have at the moment is that they, I, they've not got any bails. So the two, the two players now who have been round and been collecting all that grain, they now have to bail like mad and get these bales back to the barn. And this is this is where having herbicide falls down over having transport company, because you cannot create as much bales during this period. Right. But now I would say that probably both teams are going to take their harvesters over for like a grain chain type thing and they can run two balers both teams reserved a baler i'm sure they've yeah. grabbed another one as well at some point so they'll go from two players harvesting right. to two players bailing would be my guess yep it'd be interesting to see uh, with herbicide if you could get a, a, a third harvester even slightly filled with grain because it would give you one hell of an advantage if you did. Yeah, it would. Ooh, man. Nice bit of driving through there to not get stuck by Mike. He is to put what that header do down is... and also not drive like I do. <laughs> it's easy to say just put the header down on the ground, but <laughs> I tried it. It didn't come off as well for me. <laughs> So why is Mike taking the tractor off that? It's 13 seconds left. You need that tractor up there. It's a good question. Uh, and we're, we're not having a look at it now. So there was Prodax bringing in Here some we go. bales. Bale yeah. multiplier and bridges raised. So drop the grain, both teams, because there is no grain advantage. And grab that bale multiplier, because, man, do you need it. So here we go. Steinchen uh, is now unloading some grain for Pertinger, 2.3 to 1.7. Hopping in the New Holland now and emptying some more out. It looks like uh, we can see the silhouette of Manitou there. They're about to do the same. You can see their multiplier going up. Nice. If you're new to the FSL, if you're wondering, like, what the heck are they talking about multiplier? Look underneath the scoreboard. You see that white uh, bar on the right-hand side going up at the moment for Manitou. Underneath that is the current multiplier state. That determines how many points you're going to score for bales put into the upper part of the barn. 
but it's going to end up being pretty close here. It's going back from back and forth. The right when once he gets 2.1, it multiplier. goes back. Back and forth, back and forth. Now that you have the bail multiplier, you need to score some bails, though. And Prodax isn't going to be able to score bales with this tractor on the front. Nope. Um, but here comes Homer. Homer coming in, though, with the John Deere with that nice manure fork. You can get, you can stack the bales pretty nicely with these if you're strong at this. It was a very put in a lot of practice. earlier in the season seeing uh, this tractor and the, um, uh, the, the little one that uh, Potinger have. Uh, just completely being ignored with these on the front. Right. Um, and now you Everyone teams uses just them. use them all the time. Right. That's um, a Lindner, right, as well. Um, it's that, have, that, so. was, that was the word I was looking for. Or yeah, the brand so I was looking for. Those, yeah. Are, those are definitely uh, used a lot now. You're, you're right as well. Ooh, a little bit of uh, a shaky drive across the uh, static bridge there by Stouty. Um, um, but yeah. Given... Given the amount of, um, given the fact that they both have weights on the back of these tractors, I am I am surprised that teams don't use the teller handlers more. Right. They oftentimes because... do get banned, um, but when they're available, oh. sometimes they get ignored. It seems like teams yeah. either like to use them or don't. And um, I, I think I think that's sort of the the next meta for this is going to be the teller handlers. When, I think when that the was, teams work out. I don't know about you, but I think that uh, that combo of the teams delivering the grain and also the bail multiplier, I think Manitou took a little bit more of an advantage of it. It was pretty close, but oh yeah, uh, it's given Manitou, you know, roughly a forty-point lead. Although Pertinger is scoring now, it's getting closer. They, and they've got they've got that two point one to one point nine, and we're expecting it to stay there now at that. Ooh, so, nice, uh, Dennis, oh. Samir time. 45 seconds away from the super drop, and it's a one-point lead now for Manitou. This is going to be potentially like our first uh, match between Bednar and uh, Corona in the last uh, quarterfinal, where it came down to the last seven seconds or so. This could go down to the wire again. It's going to... Every Depend on the super drop too. What it what it is that could really change things. Every uh, every two bales that get delivered though, putting a score two extra. Uh, sorry, four extra points. Manitou really really needs to get. Oh, they Ooh. need. Some, but Pertinger's dropping them off the belt of as well. So. Uh, and it's bail, oh, it's bail withering. withering. Well, Manitou could use this. Um, there, theirs is two bales compared to one. Um, I mean, two bales could make the difference in the end, especially when it comes to, like you said, they are at a uh, four-point disadvantage for each two bales that it's going in. So I think, I think Manitou are ignoring it though. They don't seem to be going for the super drop. Well, the I super mean, drop would so make it. Big difference. For it could them. make a difference, but if you if you're out bailing, just bail yeah. two more bales and get them in, and it's the same thing, right? But um, it's definitely sometimes about where it drops as well, whether it's worth taking the time to get over there for it. Um, Pertinger, this is are this is what's going to cost now. Pertinger though. Uh, if if they lose this, is the fact that they. Seem to be having trouble getting these bales on the conveyor and making them stay on the conveyor. Four seventy one to three ninety nine, two fifty to go. I think what's killing it for Manitou at the moment though is is this multiplier. This multiplier is not helping Manitou at all. They've got the bales to win this, but Every bale that they're getting on there is uh, two points less than yeah. the bale. I guess, though, that, if, like, if, if Pertinger keep dropping bales off of the belt, that could allow Manitou oh. a lifeline. And, they, and Manitou does have slightly more bales at the moment. But they're going to need to get every single one in. 
just over two minutes to go, 555 to 475. And a lot more it's gonna bales be interesting sitting here to for Manitou. see what the bale delivery or the, the number of bales created between these two teams are. Right now, Might... Manitou has about double the amount of bales outstanding. Yeah. It kind of suggests, with the points difference, and with how many Manitou have out, it kind of suggests to me that Manitou have been more successful at creating bales. Well, that was a nice little correction there by Pertinger, making sure that one doesn't drop off. Ooh. This is like very split screen close action. I like it. Oh, yeah, Pertinger, though, just Maxinator is having... A hard time uh, with these bales falling off. Nice correction again, though. Yeah, this is, I mean, there's a minute 15 to go, and looking at the score right now, you'd think, okay, Pertinger have this, but oh, Manitou have double the bales. If they can get all yeah. 12 of them in, they win this. And Manitou is closing this gap. They're constantly been closing this gap over the last minute or so. Uh, they Look are... at the concentration. But look at all those bales Manitou have scattered near the bottom door. They are making as many unforced errors at the moment as Prodinger are. It's it's really close. I'm not sure what Maxinator's waiting on here. Um, I think unless it's trying just to get a trying combo. to get a counter, but not really much kicking around, especially with the number. Again, Manitou have four bales that have dropped off the side. Yeah, this is going to be interesting. They might just have to... They're going to have to push some of these in. There's not enough time to get them all in. Uh, I, and yeah, that's, that's going to cost think... Manitou, I think. They, Manitou really needed yeah. them all to go into the top, and they've just run out of time to get them all. 784, 794. There is uh, not enough time for Manitou to make up that gap. It goes to wow. Schrodinger. Yeah, if wow. Manitou would, would, could have managed to get all of those into the top, they would have won that. But it just came down to, you know, running out of time. Bales falling off for both teams and um, that that multiplier being against them throughout the end of that round. Um, so, yeah, I, I, good job, though, I mean, uh, in the meantime by Pertinger. So they take the first of the best of three. That game really does show, though, the, the advantage of just having two points per bail. I mean, it was 33 yeah, bales bail, to 32 yeah, delivered. Difference. And and Protega actually put fewer bales in the top. Right. And, and won it by a good 50-odd 50, 50 points. Um, you know, or 40-odd points, actually. It's 42, I think, in total. Yeah, they needed, um, Manitou needed those three bales delivery. Even if, like, two had gone to the top and one end of the bottom, I think that would have been enough. But, but they just Man ran out Manitou, of time. Manitou did deliver more bales. And that's and that's No, it was 33 to 32 came. by... Uh, it was against them. They had two outstanding, too. Yeah. Yeah, so they, they had two outstanding. They did deliver almost as many bales. <laughs> yeah. I mean... The points, the multiplier does make a difference unless you're yeah. just doing the um, the dump the grain and push them all in to get combo points strategy. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that was that was a nice round. It's It's been nice to see the opening match so far uh, of both quarterfinals be this close. It just shows, you know, how closely matched these teams are. Um, we'll see, though, if Manitou, unlike uh, Krona, can bounce back and force the best of three. Because in the last quarterfinal, Bednar just absolutely controlled that uh, that second matchup. Let's look at the telehandler there on it top is. of the monitor, yes. monitor by Manitou. <laughs> I love it, it. I love it. I want one of those. Donner Kyle, can you hook me up? I don't. I can say I don't have one of those on my on my uh, array of small pieces of farming equipment that are on my uh, windowsill. <laughs> I've got Man, lots of John Deere actually. For, for I a can't New wait Holland to, fan, uh, I've got an awful lot of John Deere on my. There's on Lindner. My uh, speaking of yeah. the, the the Lindner load up the, strategy that they broke out a couple of months back that completely changed uh, the course of That's this it. season of the Farming Simulator League. I saw Jenny in the background of the crowd there, too, uh, part of the FSL That's team it. and one of our event managers at Giant Software. 
Yeah, Massey Ferguson does not sponsor a team in the Farming Simulator no. League, which is kind of surprising. Uh, yeah, no, no Massey Ferguson, no, no New Holland. Um, I'm trying to think if there's another uh, big manufacturer we got who, who currently aren't sponsoring a team. Class, no class. Um, class, uh, case. We don't have a case. Yeah, team no either. case team. Um, um, yeah. So, uh, yeah. But yeah, my my New Holland for the win emote would would probably come out a lot. <laughs> the New Holland team, but there isn't. Unfortunately, uh, I got to get. I was I was inside of a uh, case harvester a couple of days ago for the first time ever. Oh, that was fun. All right, here we go. All right, so uh, Manny, you have to win this one, or uh, they're going out in the quarterfinals here today. Let's see uh, if they come out with the same strategy or not. Last time, both teams went with Herbicide and the New Holland Harvester and the Case Baylor, I believe. Um, and oh, Manitou also banned... Oh, banning off the track by Manitou this time. There you go. Last time, Man it was it Manitou that banned the Ideal um, and then ended up you know, losing that point. Yes. What's what is uh poaching you gonna ban? Oh the New Holland. No. <laughs> Poor Alex. <laughs> wah, wah. <laughs> uh, my T6. Uh, no Z Tour team either, yeah, that's true. John Deere gone. Alright, so oh, both wow. of the uh so Mirror Fork is... tractors out of here. Okay. There's a definitely some disruption going on here now. Hello, Peter Turner over on YouTube. I'm trying to, I'm watching both chats, which is a little bit more active, but thank you uh, for tuning in on either place. There's also a German language broadcast going on with the guys that are in person at the event over on uh, twitch.tv slash giant software DE. So if you speak German and you'd prefer to watch over there, our feelings won't be hurt. We'd like you to stay here with us though. Alex and I, I love, I love interacting with chat uh, during these because yeah. I love seeing how much uh, people get into the FSL. Okay, yeah, so same exact setup as oh. far as team perks and equipment reserved this time. Uh, but Manitou do have an extra point to spend now because they didn't ban a baler or a harvester. Um, so wonder if they go with two player perks this time. How do you have gone with the uh, with the Manitou? So yeah, in in light of the uh, two smaller ones, which can carry three bales, being uh, being banned, it looks like uh, they're going to go with that Tala Handler, which is really interesting. Mm. Okay, uh, no care wheel tractor yet for Perdinger. There, there it is. is. And the so Vulture under S pressure on three seventy four. Um, but yeah, because they picked a big tractor again, um, they're just out of points yet again. But it's interesting that both teams have a fairly similar setup there. Uh, yeah, the only difference that. is Archimedes. But you know, yeah. Archimedes not having Archimedes didn't hurt them last time. It wasn't the speed that they unload the grain, unloaded the grain. No. It was just that they didn't have enough. Lars is on holiday. Yeah. He's having a, a well-deserved break. All right, here we go. So, Manitou have to win this, or Pertinger are advancing to face off against Bednar in the semifinal. Bednar knocking off Krona in our first quarterfinal, awaiting the winner of this one. And, ooh, Podiga have a good pair of harvesters. They've, they've got that ideal. They, we saw them grab the ideal off the podium. And, uh, yeah, it's left uh, Manitou with the case and the John Deere. Rodex on his way to deliver the first bale. This is fast. How do I explain to my girlfriend that I'm attracted to Farming Simulator Pro Esports <laughs> players? <laughs> oh. 
Not the I casters, though. I don't know. Natural feeling. <laughs> oh, 130 for Ooh. Manitou. Not bad. That's, uh, that's actually fantastic, considering it wasn't a drive-by as well. 130 is really good. And a 124. Morning, Richard. Hey, Richard. All right. Well, there's the first bail. That's out of the way now for both teams. Pretty close. Nicely done by Manitou, though. And yeah, two bailers up and ready to go for Manitou. Vertex is going to go grab the grain cart now. And we're expecting both teams to basically do the same thing they did last time. Get themselves in a position where they have uh, their grain cart ready to uh, empty at the eight minute mark with the possibility of the grain multiplier appearing at that point. Um, they'll also actually have them in position just in case it appears at the 12 minute mark, which it does do occasionally, uh, just to really mix things up for everybody. Good morning. Red Viking. Good morning, JK. Thanks, everyone, for joining us. How are we all today? I hope you're all having a good day. Well, you must be because you're here doing, watching the FSL, which is quite frankly yeah, awesome. I mean, you know, <laughs> what is it? It's 3.30 a.m. for me, and I'm, I'm already having a good day. It's hard to have a bad day when you've got the Farming Simulator League, in my opinion. Absolutely. All right, five seconds away from the 12th minute drops. Having a look at Homer and Prodax unloading the harvester at the moment. Herbicide <laughs> and grain multiplier. There we go, grain multiplier at the 12th minute. Herbicide mark. is yes. pointless, so both teams definitely everybody. want grain multiplier. Neither team is in position, but they have got 45 seconds left to collect it. I know. But it is going to mess up both teams, this. Yeah, it's kind of on the far end. I'm not sure that either team is close enough to even bother. I think... Uh, here goes... I'm uh, putting her in the wrong end of the field to get that. If one team gets it... Oh, there okay, you go. Here we go. Prodex Manitou is... heading straight past it. They will grab it. There is only 10 seconds left. I think this is going to be bad for Potinger. It yeah, is this... bad for Potinger. There is no way they can get that drop. And and Prodex um, was on the way. I don't think that grain cart was full, but if you get the grain multiplier, why not yeah. just go ahead and it take it over? It doesn't matter. It's, gonna, it's better than <laughs> having it full without the multiplier. FSL is always a good day, even if it's 5.30 in the morning. Absolutely. 5.30? Man, I can only dream of those times at the moment <laughs> always love having feld in here and everyone else too whether you're uh, oh, must, you've been watching the fsl say, for a long time or you're brand new to it we're glad you're here he's he's got to be east coast i'm guessing because um yeah, yeah 5 30 in the morning he's one of us now behind. he's from the uk originally but yeah we've uh, we've corrupted him <laughs> <laughs> well i was just going 5.30 in the morning. Doesn't that put him in the mid-Atlantic somewhere? No. <laughs> that's, that. <laughs> no that's East Coast, BF. That's East Coast. There you go. <laughs> I want to know what kind of gum Manitou are chewing. Uh, they're all <laughs> chewing that gum ferociously during these matches. Oh. Are, are they all Are they sharing a pack? Same flavor? Or <laughs> are we switching it up? I'd be curious to know. <laughs> Donner Kyle, are you still in chat? I want the inside scoop on T Menu to scum. Zingar T P C that is no. Just no. <laughs> is the bail shed in FSL also available as a building placeable in the single player game? Not that I'm aware of, M1. No, not not that I know uh, of either. Um But having yeah, said that, if it exists in it, if without. it exists in this, there is like an asset somewhere for it, so you never know. Um, but it's one of those things where to do it at the moment, you'd, you'd have to do something that is not legal, um, which is why I'm not going to mention what you'd have to do. Um... Yeah, you don't want to do that. 
Um, yeah, there would definitely won't do not encourage do that. that um, as far as I know, it's not legally available. <laughs> Both of you are correct. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I'm correct. Oh, hang on, hang on. I'm right about something. That's that's not right. Oh no! Watch <laughs> out. <laughs> All right, we're uh, coming up 30 seconds away from the eight-minute drops. The teams are starting to bring bales in now. That uh, multiplier is definitely nicely in the favor of Manitou. Uh, Pertinger have to be hoping that. Grain multiplier drops during the eighth minute drops too. Well, it, 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 the trouble is it can't because it already has. <laughs> yes, oh, I'm on the good point. New radio Caroline offshore radio boat. Well, the they need, need the something ocean. else that helps them. Then I guess. Um, well, uh, that doesn't really. Which is and speed up. Neither of those are going to help them. No. Uh, what they um, what they'll need is uh, they'll need a really good drop at the four minute mark. Or maybe I mean they have they do have grain here. Not to, not to say that Manitou doesn't also have some grain that's still out there, but they have uh, closed the gap a bit. They still had more grain sitting there in another harvester, so that should be input soon. Uh, Manitou went for speed up, and Pertinger went with bridges raised. So now Manitou are going to have to go all the way around to the static bridge to get across. Uh, Maxinator now for Pertinger bringing nice. more grain in. So yeah, now look at this. Now Pertinger have flipped it in their favor, and that whole time Manitou had three to one. They didn't score a single bail. Oh. And now they've lost the advantage. It will I, be it will be interesting to see if Manitou are able. Look, to... they've got plenty of grain though, so they're gonna get it back. Yeah. But still, the fact remains they didn't score any bales then. But now they are, they're gonna be able to get control of it, and now they will score nice. some. Back into Manitou's favor, that grain multiplier goes. And it's probably... Although, oh, looks no, like Pertinger Pertinger now, something This is actually going to be... This is going to be pretty even, I think, by the end of all of this grain being delivered, so... I do think Manitou, Manitou has more. Manitou trying to score points. But they it was oh. too late. Don't want to be doing it now. Yeah, it's too it's late. This, this can't sit here, surely. With Manitou having got the grain multiplier and poting or not, surely this is not going to sit at... No, there we go. Manitou yeah, now they still have more. grain. Which is good, but they also miss a great opportunity to score 30 points per bale of what wow. they already had. Um, so they've done the no, same no. thing. They've done the same thing that Pertinger did to them last time now, though. They have a 2.1 to 1.9, so for every bale, it's two extra points. Every two... Uh, you get four extra points, so Manitou in a pretty good spot. Better off than they were last time. Um, yeah. And they have a nice 105 point lead. In already. Interesting thing is, it wouldn't Here comes, take. Oh, I thought he was going to do the Trelleborg toss for a second. It, it wouldn't take much grain being delivered for Potinger to even that up. Ooh, little bump of the bridge there by Stouty. Just over five Ooh. minutes to go. Ooh, Prodex getting stuck, but oh, yeah. backing down off of the bridge nicely. I'm bringing some bales across the bridge as it comes nicely down. And yeah, this is very much in Manitou's favor right now. Maxinator for Pertinger loading some bales on. Uh, they've they're at a disadvantage, like you said. Each bale they score, they're at a disadvantage. So they need to hope they get more bales delivered overall. That's what did Manitou in last time, and it's a similar situation, just reversed for these two teams now. And you can see Manitou just pulling away with every bale that they get on there. It's a much smaller difference, though, than it was last time. And there are no bales there for Manitou at the moment. A couple were coming in right as and, uh, uh, the camera right switched. As I said that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, uh, so Trelleborg set a new first bail record yesterday by tossing it into the top of the barn with the telehandler. 140 oh, points in the bottom boost super drop that's for Manitou. The, that's the end of it for Podinger. That is a bottom boost. Yep, so now and they're going to score the same amount Manitou of points in the bottom for the next 40 everything, seconds. Everything yeah. down the bottom. With their 2.1 multiplier and everything going down the bottom, that's just not good for, for Podinger. 397 to 352. Yeah, that's, that definitely is a tough one. Very brutal. Um, and Homer still has time to get these into the bottom now. So the bottom boost super drop, it's, it's one of the best ones in my opinion. Um, because it'll give you the same amount of points in the bottom of the barn as you would be getting into the top. And for Manitou, controlling the multiplier, I mean, that's doubly good. Not only can you put them in the bottom and get two extra points per bale compared to Perdinger, but you also don't have to worry about getting them on the belt and risking them falling off. Bednar beat Krona in the first uh, matchup, first quarterfinal, and then uh, Perdinger won the first game of the best of three here in this matchup. If you're ever wondering while you're watching it live if uh, a team has won uh, what you know what round of the best of three we're in, if you look underneath the team name, there's two rectangles. You can see Pertinger on the left. It's uh, colored in. Uh, they have a white rectangle which signals that they won the first one. You have to win two of the best of three to advance. So it looks highly likely with two 10 left that we're going to have a third matchup of the best of three between these two. Homer getting two more on for Manitou. 481 to 466. And uh, Pertinger just don't have the bales. Uh, right now, no. they just don't oh. have the bales to, to get it. Pertinger went into the lead. For a moment, then. But it looks like, yeah, Manitou have come back and evened that up straight away. Um, we've got oh, Pertinger in the lead again. Manitou, oh, Manitou in the lead. <laughs> <laughs> oh, and <laughs> well, he, was, he extended it out and then he had to, like, uh, readjust it. Ah, I see what he's trying to do. I think he's trying to build up for a combo in the meantime. Getting ready to uh, counter it if it happens. But nope. Minute left on the clock. Five, whoa, 561 to 565. This is Ooh, closer one just than fell it off has for Manitou. any right to be. One just fell off for Manitou as well. Um... 565, 561. Oh, man. This is going to be close. 40 seconds to go. 599, 607. Uh, yeah. Managed to have the bales, but they've got to get them on. 617 to 599. We've not seen any bale combos scored today. We saw like no. a counterpoints against Bed so. with Bednar and Krona. That one's going to fall off. Oh, that that's yeah. going off. That one fell off for Manitou. Six, 69 to 6. I, yeah, I, think... I don't think the bales are there. 666. Six, six. No, Ooh, they're not there. Manitou, Manitou have... take it. You can see like the relief by Manitou there because they've kept themselves alive. and that, That's an important that one because... was too close. These teams are neck Manitou, and neck in the standings. Manitou... There's a lot at stake here. Manitou, you can see are happy with that, but they are, that is not good. They are, uh, they had a higher bail multiplier almost the whole way through that game. And they won it by less than 15 points. That is, that is not good. And in, in fact, right now, Pot uh, Potinger are looking to be the stronger team. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, that was, phew. I mean, a lot is at stake because Pertinger are 15th, Manitou are joint 12th and right above them in the standings. Uh, and 
both of these teams could really climb up right. and get like into 12th place depending yeah. on what they do today. So there really is a lot at stake between these two. In I fact, mean, Man Manitou could get themselves uh, as high as 11th, I think it is. I say um, like they, these, they... these matchups at the bottom of the standings today are almost more important than what Charleborg and Vulture do at the top of the standings, right? They're pretty much uh, secured in first and second place. Nice. Um, so these playing for positions uh, could make all the difference when it comes to the finals next month and how you place and who you have to come up against. Oh man, that was, that was closer than it had any right to be. I think Manitou needs a fresh uh, piece of gum because <laughs> they have to have shoot that's, all the that's... flavor out of it at this point. <laughs> oh, oh man, what a what a game that was! It, it, it did get a lot closer at the end than I thought it was going to be as well. I, I, I feel it. Uh, if if this got too close to call, then that's me predicting correctly. <laughs> <laughs> uh... We haven't had. We haven't had. Any of these matches so far have not been complete runaways, you know. Yeah, the, the the only one that really kind of was. Oh, okay. We're uh, um, we've got a slight delay here. One eight. player is having to restart for Manitou. Eight. Yeah, we are live so, on uh, Twitch, Giant Software Channel. Obviously, you're here watching us there. Yeah, uh, apparently that said Facebook, but I think that's YouTube that uh, we're live on and then also uh, the german channel has the german broadcast so you can see the guys that are there in person if you want to go check that out i man these in-person events are just so much better even though we can't be there personally just seeing the players we can't hear them but you just see them before a game they're strategizing you look at his reaction as well the <laughs> relief uh, the stretching of the hands, a uh, lot at stake for these teams. So this one means a lot. I think we're going to get started here shortly now. Man, it's shaping up to be a good day, Alex. Uh, we still have Vulture versus right. Herman and right. My Insanity versus Trelleborg in the quarterfinals to come after this. Um, yeah, Look, Trelleborg these, these... and Valtra, one of them is not making it to the final today, uh, at the very least, no matter what happens in the quarterfinal, because if they both were to win the quarterfinal, they'd face each other in the semifinal. Here we go, Perdinger versus Manitou. Uh, this is to move on to the semifinal and to uh, move up in the standings as well. So this is a huge match. For these two teams, I would argue that this is the biggest stakes they've ever had in a match this season. Um, against each other, it's going to come down to this. Hello, Bauer Matza. How you doing, Matza? Good to see you. Because uh, the, the thing about this is, it's uh, there's a, a the because they're going up against Bednar as well in the semifinals. There's a there's a really good chance you could tin to the final today and score a lot of points. Yeah, you're right. Bednar did look strong against Krona, uh, which. I think we were surprised by. Absolutely. Um, yeah. But especially because Bednar but it's, are not it's there not... in person. <laughs> no. But it's but it's also not like you're you're facing Vulture or Trelleborg to get into that that final. Right. You're correct. You know, you're yeah, facing I mean... a team of a, a much similar level to yourself uh going through. So it's yeah, it's it's the team that gets through this have a good chance of getting into the final. You know, at least as good a chance getting into the final as Bednar have. Right. And as a result, it's it's really important to to sort of take advantage of of this uh, this good route that they have today um, as much as they can. All right, here we go. Similar, uh, exact same. Oh, we've we've team had picks again. And we've had some similar bands. The thing that's banned here that's interesting is the John Deere. Uh, the the ideal little John Deere well. uh, 6M has been banned, uh, which we know Manitou like to use. And yes, the ideal has been Ma banned. Well, so Manitou banned the ideal in the first round, which they lost. And then they didn't ban it last time. And now they've banned it in this one. It's like, I'm not sure you want to do that if you're and superstitious. And Manitou have taken the New Holland. Ooh, that'll make you happy, Alex. He'll see six on the field. Good to see that. 
And so it's going to be a big tractor picked by Dennis here for Manitou because they only have three points. There it is, the Valtra. Um, and then I expect under pressure. And yep, there it is uh, from Stoudy for Perdinger. So pretty uh, similar to what two, we've seen. Yes, they are named um, after manufacturers because they are sponsored by those manufacturers. There's a couple like My Insanity who will play, uh, yeah. still has to play in the quarterfinal. They're an esports team. They play multiple yeah. uh, esports games. There's LSA esports who aren't here today. Kawana Gaming who uh, lost to Bednar yesterday. So there are some exceptions as far as teams in the standings. DJK, Aenfeld as well. But the rest of the teams, other than Thanks. those I mentioned, are all sponsored by manufacturers. And um, we are away. Who is? Oh, is Mike? Yep, yeah, Mike has managed to get the second case harvester. That is really nice. good for them. New Holland harvester uh, for Manitou. It looked like. And the big Chrome Baylor going to. Uh, I think that was Manitou, wasn't it? I believe really you are correct. Really useful Baylor that will uh, will take uh, three bales. All right. A lot at stake here. I mean, this is this is some high pressure stuff. Like, let's see which team handles it better. I'm sure they're aware of what is at stake. I think that's why Manitou was so relieved that they were able to force this third of the best of three and didn't get knocked out. And two, and another nice first bail, 130 points. It could make the difference in the end, the smallest of margins. As Ooh, and then Stouty hits the barn. So that's going to affect the amount of points they get even more. That could make all the difference. Now got to have to get it in here. So 114, without hitting the barn there, you could have gotten another five-ish points or so. So that could be the difference. Remember that at the end. Yeah, 114 is the lowest first bail we've seen uh, between these two teams. They've been consistently high uh, or consistently uh, good scores for first bails from these two so far. Oh, uh, so ignore what Streamlabs just put in chat because you can't play today. But if you do want to play in the scrimmages of the Farming Simulator League, <laughs> then join me this Friday, uh, although it's at a completely different time than you're watching now. It'll be at 7 p.m. Eastern time until 10 p.m. Eastern time. I host a Friday night open lobbies for the Farming Simulator League, and we, since I was hired by Giants, I took them over from Chalky, and we switched it to a uh, later start time so that we can help grow the FSL in North America. Because every team you're seeing playing in the Farming Simulator League yes. this season is based in Europe. Uh, we got teams in Germany, Switzerland, Czech Republic. I believe there's a Dutch team as well. Uh, sorry if I'm forgetting any other countries. And we got Bail Drop and Grain Multiplier makes the appearance. Hotinger need this grain multiplier. They cannot miss out on it in the same way as they did last time. Uh, it sunk them. They would have they would have won it fairly easily had they not had that uh, deficit in the multiplier. And are they going the right direction for it? Where is it dropped? It's dropped. Not too far. In fact, yeah, there goes Prodax making sure that Manitou get it. Dowdy is... Oh, they need to... They're trying to get as much in there as possible. Eight seconds left. Are Pony going to miss out on it again? That tractor is going way too oh, slow. No. Oh no! Oh, that is no. bad news. The bad second news. game in a row. 
Poting a miss out on the grain multiplier. That is not good. No, not good at all. Um, so, Adwala Gaming asked in chat, are there any more tournaments this year? This is the last one of the regular season. Next month, the 12th, the 13th, and the 14th of November from the studio in Erlangen will be the grand finals of season three. So, basically, after today, the standings will be set and the seeding will be set. Teams 1 through 16 and the yeah. standings will make it to the finals, and then there's everything to play for. You've got the grand prize, uh, the big ears trophy, the prize money at stake. Uh, it is going to be, you know, everything to play for. You definitely probably want to try to avoid being the 16th place team because you'll come up against Trelleborg. Uh, but I like said then, that uh, anything could happen. You still never know. Oh. It, Absolutely. Pretty much, and then uh, yeah, the standings grand, are wiped out. Grand and only finals. Seeding. Other than that, grand it doesn't finals matter. next month are the twelfth, thirteenth, and fourteenth of yep. November. Three days of FSL, which is going to be awesome. Cannot wait for that. Yeah, I mean, there's over a hundred thousand euros at stake at the season final next month. So, like each tournament, like the tournament you're watching now, there's fifteen thousand total prize money. Uh, at stake for teams that finish from first to eighth place it varies but for the final even just making it there being the team in 16th you're getting 12,400 euros um well that's total sorry it's 1,550 per team um but still just making it there gets you some prize money so yeah. um and then who knows you could be 16th and you could pull off an upset it's unlikely to happen, but we've seen crazy things happen in the Farming Simulator League. So getting there is the most important thing. And then, you know, bring your A game and who knows what could happen. I doubt Hurting it, Kurt. Teams. I don't really know if we'll be there in person or not. Um, no. Probably not, though. It, it would be cool, but I, th I think at the moment there are, certainly from, from me, there are probably too many travel restrictions in the way. Right. I think ours have loosened up between Europe and uh, the U.S., but at the same time, do I want to have a mask on a plane ride that long? I don't know. <laughs> Well, for, for me, it's for me, it's not just the um, uh, it's not just the uh, yeah the quarantine medical restrictions. You? We've got we've got a whole other set of hoops to to jump right. through that uh, that have appeared in the last year. So uh, yeah, so it's a good question who the sixteenth place te team is because we were talking about this earlier. Like if you look at are. the standings, AB Schmidt are on there, but I've never seen them in a tournament. And they have no points. So right now, there's not a team in 16th. Um, no. So and and they are, yeah, they are a zero-point team. As, as we were saying earlier, there are lots of other teams that have made in the play-ins that haven't made it through to the finals and, uh, and scored points. Yeah. So how it's decided who that 16th team is, uh, we, will, uh, we will find out. But uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there's no team in the finals today who would take up that 16th slot. Yeah, it's going to be interesting. Very interesting. Hello, one mouse, by the way. Oh, I see Taz in chat. What's going on, Taz? Hey, Taz. Welcome along. Uh, will FSL be in uh, FS22? Um, watch this space is probably the best thing to say. Um, we a, don't yeah, know it's yet. unknown at this time. Um, I mean... Yeah. We'll know more after uh, um, next month, hopefully. But yeah. I think I personally think that it, it might come too soon. But again, we don't really know. Uh, as, two months as, ago, when as... we had Lars with us, Lars speculated that probably it'll be 19. But we still don't know exactly at this point. But as as you can imagine, uh, as a giant software employee like myself and my colleagues, sole focus right now is Farming Simulator 22's main release. And then anything that comes after that is going to not be thought about until after 22 is out and, and we're ready to go. Um, and then also the work doesn't stop on 22 when it releases, too, because we've got the season pass content. Uh, the first one will come out in the winter of 2022. So you're talking about January, February or early March. Um, so there's going to be work that has to be done on that as well as the rest of the packs that come out through the rest of the year. So. 
Uh, there's just a lot of variables. Uh, it's too early to tell at this time. So Alex said it best, just watch this space. If you follow us on social media, join our Discord. We'll uh, have announcements there when we know something. I will I will be shouting about it fairly loud when, when things do come out as well. Because <laughs> I get very excited by the FSL. So, well, these uh, teams yep. have definitely used the same exact tactic, but it's, I, it's been yeah. a different tactic than most of the rest of the teams use. Most teams now are using Transport Company. That's really like the main meta. Um, but these two teams are using Herbicide, and they've used I, it well. So, I am very surprised that Manitou are not sitting on a three times multiplier at the moment. Hello, Pebbles. That's that's very weird. Which would hey. suggest that they did not take advantage of that grain multiplier they had. Hello, Down Under Farmer. All right. Well, How are we doing today? Uh, any predictions, Alex? <laughs> The dangerous thing to ask. Oh um, god, I but... have no predictions for this. Everything is way <laughs> too. Easy. Actually, no, 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 no. I'm not going to. Four point lead for Pertinger at the moment. That one's going to fall but... off. Oh. Uh, that is that is falling off. I'm going to keep it to myself. I think <laughs> I, I think I know. I think I know who has the advantage. No, I actually I know who has the advantage at the moment based on the previous two games. Potinger have the advantage at the moment. They took uh, they took Manitou to a much closer game than it should have been when Manitou had the lead in the multiplayer last game. Or the multiplier last game. Here comes the Manitou super drop. Def definitely out there looking for the advantage Ooh, on the super Homer's drop. Ooh, Homer's close. And crazy, crazy tool. tool. 2.4 times. Don't think that's going to be a massive advantage to Manitou because they've got to, if they're crazy tooling it, they've still got to get these bales back. Well, that I mean, it allowed Prodex, I guess, a chance to get that one faster there, um, but he's already got a head back because he didn't want to drop them on the ground. So, yeah, <laughs> yeah, not, so not the biggest you know, advantage. It's, it's got them maybe an extra bale, but they are they are nearly a hundred points behind at this point. And there we go. Crazy Tool is over. And they, yeah, they they filled the balers up quickly and came back. That was it. Crazy Tool is great if you've got the transport company. Because you can just run a baler and create a massive amount of bales very quickly. If you're having to transport them back on the baler like these guys are, it creates maybe one or two extra bales at most. Uh, or it creates one or two bales quicker at most. Yeah, I wouldn't necessarily say they were extra bales. You said it earlier, but Pertinger definitely have dodged a bullet with uh, not getting the multiplier this time. It's even, and they've got a lead, so they have to be liking their chances with two and a half to go. Definitely in a better position than they were in the last game. Although when Manitou uh, does have a like double the bales at the moment because Pertinger have scored theirs already. But the trouble is that the reason Pertinger don't have the bales is because they've already delivered them. Right. But it still will make up this difference. Oh, yeah. If Manitou can get them all in if, here. If Manitou can get them in, but it's the, that 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 deficit or that difference between the two teams, between the point scoring is going up, not down. You know, Consistently, Podinger are getting bales on that uh, on that conveyor and scoring points. Having said that, Manitou are really bringing the bales in. Yeah, they are. It's gonna come down to like the smallest of margins here. Remember that Manitou had what was it like a sixteen point first bale advantage too, so that could come into play depending on if both teams get all their bales in or not. <laughs> Richard in chat. No, uh, that, there is no. Again, I will. I will repeat myself. Um, <laughs> there is no truth to that swimming pool story at <sighs> all. Yeah, best of three, Tommy. So both teams have won a, a round so far. So it comes down to this: who advances to the semifinal and who goes goes out in the quarterfinal here. So close. 
45 seconds to go. And, and look at that again. There's just a mass of bales hanging around at the bottom of that uh, conveyor on Manitou's side. There's, and Dennis is going to try to like back every, this in. Every single one of those is an unforced error on Manitou's part. And they need to get those in. That's what happened to them in the first round. They had the bales, but they had them scattered around and couldn't get them all in via the top. And I think that that's going to do them in again here. It looks like Perdinger are going to move on unless something miraculous happens. I just don't see it, though. No. It's... And he's missed that bale. And... Oh, actually, both have gone in. There we in. go. 630. Oh, he, got... no, he missed that one. missing the bottom door. You can't do it that wouldn't have in been, the last five It wouldn't seconds. have been enough anyways. It would have been 650 to whatever, 670-something. Yeah. So... Uh, wow. we're, get, we're getting a raid from Nagy and Norbert. Thanks for stopping in. And uh, congrats welcome, to Pertinger. Welcome, welcome, Raiders. Hope you so, had a good stream, uh, Nagy Norbert. So with that, Pertinger are going to jump Manitou in the Sandings. Um, that is... To, regardless yeah. of if they make it, if they beat Bednar and go to the final That's or not. They had they were thirty points behind Manitou. Each team got thirty for making the quarterfinal, okay. but now Pertinger will get a further thirty for advancing. So actually, they're even. They're even on but... points. Um, but if Pertinger make it to the final, they'll jump them. Um, and uh, also, they'll also they also jump have a silver them because medal. they've at yeah. least got a silver medal. Yeah, you're right. So they will jump them. They'll be even on points, but right. because they've made it to a semifinal and Manitou have not. They will uh, jump them in the standings, but that also well, so. that's that's also not good news for Koana Gaming and uh, DJK uh, Airfield. They are down to fourteenth, uh, equal fourteenth place. Those two. Wow. Um. So yeah. yeah, that's not great for them at all. Good showing. Uh, though. That was a great even that matchup. Was, I, and Pertinger actually proving to be a really strong team there against Manitou. They they yeah. were outplaying them in all three games. They were unlucky that second game. Um, right. I can't wait to see them against Bednar, a... too. Two it's going to be a good one. Now. Um, we will see you in uh, in a couple.
Welcome back, everybody. Here we are for the 10th uh, tournament of FSL's third season. And, uh, yeah, the last one before the grand finals. Yeah. Uh, we... <laughs> I need some coffee. Not And, and you know, the uh, the games have kept me going so far. It's It's been oh, great. You can just that's... see, like, in that last one especially, there was so much at stake, and you can see the pressure on the teams because, I mean, there was places... For next month's yeah. finals at stake there. And depending on what happens in our next couple of uh, quarterfinals, uh, there could be some more movement, uh, at least not in the top two. Vulture is second, Trelleborg's first. Best. That we know for sure heading into next yeah. month. Um, but prize money at stake, and for Herman and my insanity especially, uh, a chance for them to try to climb higher into the standings. And depending on what both of those teams do, they could potentially jump Cortiva, who are in third, um, who are not participating this weekend. So um, lots at stake in, against the two top teams, Trelleborg and Valtra. Uh, we're going to have a look now at some replays from Pertinger that, versus Manitou. That was the first game. And yeah, my, I did not expect Mike to get that. That was just so close. And then this is yeah, this is the dropping of the bell, and only just getting he could have had a higher score point uh, point score on that if he'd not quite missed the uh, the door. Plenty Ooh. of air got <laughs> good bail control. Yeah, plenty. Oof. Everybody was was sort of making you know. Did you see that mass jumps. of bails there at the end? Like the Manitou's bail uh, delivery just kind of was all over the place, and it. It cost them really in the first and the third round there of this matchup. They they just seem to not be able to get the bales onto that conveyor. Right, because they were just we so scattered around, they weren't game. easy to grab and stack, you know. Yeah. And that was that was the second game there where where they won it, but they should have won it by more. Uh, it was like a fourteen point difference, I think it was in the end of that, and it was just. That is when you got a one point two multi uh one point two a uh, one point sorry a two point one to one point nine multiplier you sh you should win more by more than fourteen points <laughs> right yeah um and then they they did it again they had a grain multiplier in the third round when Pertinger didn't get it but they didn't end up with any sort of okay. advantage in points it was even at two to two um so yeah Pertinger. Coming out on top, they'll face Bednar in the first semifinal, but we've got two more quarterfinal matchups to get through before that. So yeah, that's uh, that was that was an interesting game. I I, th I think Bednar versus uh, Prodinger is gonna be uh, a really interesting match later. They are uh, they've both shown themselves to be surprisingly strong teams today, and yeah. uh, and 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 that is brilliant. To, to it's see. the first time I think. Let me look real quick. Yeah, so it'll be the first time that either team has made a semifinal, and one of them is going to make the final today. Oh, no. So that's and, huge. Yeah, and that is huge for both of them. Really is. Yeah, they get to rest Very a well. little bit and watch these other teams uh, participate. Uh, we've got two quarterfinal matchups to get through before they go to the semifinal. Um, but we see some fans starting the Hero Fest. I think people yeah. starting to show up now. More people in the crowd starting to fill out those seats. Everyone mm -hmm. giving us a wave from Switzerland at Thank Hero you. Fest. Uh, as we see Absolutely some uh, of the fantastic. other players. There's Lindner, um, Trelleborg in the house. Yeah, Tommy times two. Bales, Bales in to the upper part of the barn via the conveyors are scored 10 points multiplied by the multiplier. If you put them into the bottom part of the barn, it's just 10 points all the time. If you put them into the top uh, part of the barn, you get the multiplied points. So if it's a two times multiplier, you're getting 20 points. If it's a three times multiplier, you're getting 30 points per bale. So you definitely want to try to get them into the barn via the conveyor belt into the top, especially if you have the, the uh, multiplier in your favor. Here comes Valtra, who... Uh, uh, Trelleborg have been pretty consistent throughout the entire season, but the last five months or so, uh, really both of these teams have started to really improve and and be serious competitors. And Vultra have really climbed up that table over the past several months. And, and Herman, too. Herman making a couple of finals and uh, really showing that they're a team to be reckoned with as well. 
And if Herman can manage to win this one, they are going to uh, jump over Cortiva in the standings yeah. in the third place. Right now, they're even on points, and Cortiva has the tiebreaker because they have uh, had two tournament wins and two tournament runners up. They've also have one bronze medal. Cortiva do. Meanwhile, Herman's best finish is uh, runners up. They've had two silver medals and one bronze, and then they've had uh, five placement medals, basically making it to the quarterfinals. So, um, I mean, really, Vultra, Vultra has pride to play for. They have prize money to play for. Um, Herman has, a, you know, place in the standings, really, to play for. Um, and, you know, being third means that you get a slightly better matchup, arguably, uh, at least as far as seedings go. Just really depends on who you end up drawing from the rest of the teams. Uh, I think that... I think it's four teams... Is it four teams of four uh, in the finals? I think uh, that's how it's going to work. Yeah, right. something... Yeah. So it's basically like one through four gets... Uh, yes. 13, 14, so, 15, and 16. And then uh, the rest of the teams will be kind of like randomly drawn into the group. So you could get yeah. really lucky or get a really bad draw, depending on how it goes. I mean, Herman are in a great uh, position because they are not going to face <laughs> Trelleborg <laughs> or, or Vultra or Cortiva in yeah. the grand finals. You know, yeah. getting that fourth place at the moment, that, that's a huge win for them straight off that. Yeah, I guess maybe like more so than worrying about jumping Cortiva and third, Herman has to be, yeah. you know, my insanity do have to play Trelleborg after this, but you never know what could happen. If my insanity were to win that and then uh, even go on to the final, then their fourth place position could be threatened. And that fourth versus fifth is, is bigger than fourth versus third. Third. So, yeah, lots at stake for Herman, for sure. Uh, so, yeah, Wolf Gamer says, ooh, there's a farming league? Nice. Yes, yes. this is season three. Uh, check out the website at that link. You can also watch a YouTube tutorial video that kind of gives you a rundown of how it works. And then uh, we do scrimmages. If you speak German, Wednesdays, uh, I believe around 9 to 10 a.m. Central European time, uh, it's recently it's been either Noah or Jenny, my colleagues at the uh, studio in Erlangen, Germany. They host the German language scrimmages for the Farming Simulator League. And then Friday nights, myself at uh, 7 p.m. Eastern time hosts uh, open lobbies for more so for the North American audience, although we do have Diaker Fleur and uh, Donner Kyle from Manitou's there every week. So uh, we get some uh, players from Europe showing up, too. Just, just trying to work out what my insanity would have to do to get past Horman at third place, uh, to get into fourth place. Uh, Horman uh, would have to lose this round, uh, this set of matches. Yeah. Um, and my insanity would have to make the final, so they would not only have to beat right. Trelleborg, <laughs> they'd have they to would beat... have to beat Valtra as well. Valtra, yeah. I, if I, Herman don't advance, uh, okay. right? I, I, again, prediction. I think that is highly unlikely. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. You should just get... Have you seen Rocky Three, Alex? You should just go with um, the quote from that movie. Like, you got predictions for the fight? Prediction? I tell... Pain. I, that's I tell like, you that's what, a virtual farmer if that prediction happens, right there. If that happens, that would be a fantastic <laughs> FSL today. Uh, that would be the most amazing uh, end to this tournament. But for my insanity to beat uh, both Ultra and Trelleborg would be insane. Yeah, it would. Well, we're back to seeing Transport Company again by both teams. We had a nice little brief moment there where we had two teams using something other than Transport Company. Birdinger and Manitou in the last quarterfinal both used Herbicide in all three rounds. Uh, but yeah, Vulture and Herman, pretty. Uh, not, I'm not surprised at all that they've gone with Transport Company here. As we're watching Martin and Hightower for Valtra. Um, going for this first bail. So Martin, until yesterday, held the uh, record for first bail at 139. Trelleborg have broken that now at 140 points, which is the most you can get on a first bail. 
Um, so the best you could do is match that record now at this point. Uh, and Horman in there with a 127. Vultra Ooh. actually a little bit being slow. slow. The, yeah, a little bit slow off the uh, draw here. And Martin's one of the best at the uh, drive-by bailing. This is a little bit of a dream start for uh, for Herman, actually. That's that's a good difference in first bail. We need to. Uh, we definitely need to. You know, we need to send Alex like a case of Monster or maybe uh, just some coffee or something, and get him to come to a Friday night scrimmage with I, us I, one time. Do you know what? I, I'm gonna. Oh God, I can't. I, <laughs> I, he's like, I, he's like, let I, me not I promise have, anything. I here, have cause... my advance GG. Um, there you go, your advance GG. There you go. Whatever it takes. GG, who very nicely decided to partner with me this week. So. Oh yeah, congrats, awesome man. Thank you very much. Well deserved. So uh, yeah, they've, they've already perked me up this morning. So, I'm a uh... huge coffee drinker, so that's that's my energy of choice. I just made myself a double during that last break, so nice 16 ounce cup of coffee and my to go <laughs> mug here. I'm good to go for the next little bit. So 127 to 114. It doesn't matter, Tommy. First bail is the only one you really, it doesn't matter if you put it in the top or the bottom. Uh, first bail is based off the uh, speed of how quick you can get it there. That's how the uh, calculation is done on that. So the faster you can get it in, the better. So usually teams opt for the bottom, although the record was set yesterday by Trelleborg using a telehandler and chucking it straight into the top. They do this little thing that they perfected where they go full speed and brake right as they're about to hit the conveyor belt and it tosses the bale off yeah. of the fork of the telehandler into the top. But from now on, you do want to focus on getting points into the top of the barn unless you happen to get the bottom boost super drop at minute four or if you end up with a one-time multiplier which you don't really want but that's basically wipes out the point of putting it into the top and also your bail will or your uh, belt will be broken so you won't be able to anyways Vultra first to the drop off and are they actually drop they are actually dropping yeah i'm which it looks like Herman are coming over now too. I I don't understand. Uh, like a lot of teams will do this. And listen, I probably shouldn't be questioning Vulture who are second in the standings. They're a lot better at actually playing it than I am. My strength is commentary, but we... I definitely don't understand why so many teams will deliver grain and have this three-time multiplier, but th they don't have any bales yet, so they can't really take that advantage is... of it. Perfect drop off there from Harman. Now, unless Vultra are going to score points with this, this is a mistake. It's just a, a, a massive mistake on Vultra's part because we've not had the grain multiplier turn up. It could appear at eight minutes. That puts them at immediate disadvantage. Yes, Richard, crop destruction is a thing in the FSL unless you have care wheels on yep. your tractor. Then you can drive through the grain without affecting it. Um, and it will slow you down as well if you uh, drive through it without yep. care wheels on. Slows you down, destroys the crop. So yeah, the grain delivered to the silo, Tommy, that's how you get your multiplier up. And then bales delivered to the barn score the points. All the information, uh, if you're new to the FSL, all the information you need is on the screen. Feel free to go to the website as yeah. well. Check out the stat it sheet. I've just put those links in chat. Also, like top top of the screen shows you the players, what equipment they're in, what their player perks are. Below yeah. the captain is the team perk. You can see the scores. Um, the top like green squares are the status of the bridges. So green means that they're down. Red means that they're raised. The multiplier is the, with the yellow behind it. So right now it's three to one in Vulture's favor. The red X uh, means that Herman's belt is shut down. Once you get a three to one, you shut your opponent's belt down as well. Um, and then bottom left, you got the mini map. You can see how much grain each team has, how many bales they have, what their current bale delivery 
combo is. If you get 10 or more, 10, 15, 20, or 25 in a row, you get a lot of bonus points. We've yet to see anyone do that today. Um, yeah, so most of the information you need is there on the screen. Underneath the team name, uh, you'll also see if like a team wins a round, it'll be uh, lit up in white. Right now, this is the first of the best of three here, so neither team has one of those rectangles filled in below their name. Coming up to eight and a half minutes, and Voltra have not scored a single point while they have a three times multiplier. Yeah, I mean, just, do they even have, you know, they're doing transport company, right? So they've probably not even got the Anderson loader yet. And uh, here comes Herman. They're going to do the grain chain. So this is not going to last. And Herman very long. Are, are also now in a position to unload grain. And they're, they've got a, a person out there who's is doing stuff. Here we go with the drop. Bridges raised and speed up. So it's not as big a problem for Valtra as it could have been. But Herman now are Herman there. Delivering they're grain now. Dropping the grain. And Vultra's uh, multiplier some more is already dropping. Yeah, but Hightower bringing a grain cart full of grain in. So this is pretty much probably going to end up being a wash here, I would imagine. Right now it looks like it's in... Yeah, because Vulture are delivering it at the same time, so... But I think Herman still has more sitting there and another harvester... There we go. Voltra are out. Yeah, and meanwhile, and both harvesters are actually of still emptying. Yeah. Them. I don't know. They might. Urban might end up I with think, a slight advantage. I think advantage. it's going to even up. I think it's going to be 2.0 to 2.0. 1.8. So I have 8,000 grain in there. 1.9. And it's not enough. Oh no! Oh, oh yeah, it is. There we go. <laughs> even. Absolutely even. <laughs> For once, man, oh. a prediction spot on by Virtual Farmer, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Round of applause. <laughs> um, Voltra, I, I, uh, Voltra, I think scored one bale, maybe two bales in that time while they had a multiplier. So it's interesting that they the latest patch has slowed down the uh, collection speed of this Anderson loader, but it doesn't seem to have that much of an effect. It, it's gone from four seconds to 4.25, so it's really just fractions of a second, but still it, it has been slowed down a bit because people have just been using transport company left and right, um, but it still seems to be a very viable strategy. I and Voltra coming in with their second set of bales, but this is so far. Horman have been outplaying Voltra. I think Voltra got very lucky at the eight-minute mark. Uh, that that could have gone so horribly, horribly wrong for them. I like the fog machine there. Uh, I just noticed that <laughs> behind the players. Yeah, Palm Falls, I agree. It's been great so far. Mm. Some pretty good games. A lot at stake in the final regular season tournament uh, next month. I think the play-ins will be the 12th, I guess, is how I... It said 12th, 13th, uh, yeah, and 14th, but then in chat earlier... Uh, I'm guessing it was either Jenny or Klaus said 13th and 14th. Um, but it's somewhere. We, it's definitely the 13th and 14th for sure. Maybe the 12th as well. I would, I would guess the studio we'll have the planes over. I think we'll have the planes over two days. And then we'll probably on the Sunday will be the uh, quarters, semis, and the grand final. Right. It's actually like, I guess, group stage. Um, that will be the yeah. first day now instead of play-ins, really, because the format's going to be a little bit different. Um, but nonetheless, three days of FSL. Can't well, complain about that. It will be from nope. the studio, Giant Software Studio uh, in Erlangen, Germany. So looking forward to seeing that one.
We're going to see a replay here. Ooh. Look at that jump. <laughs> My goodness. Wow. That, that could have been bad. That could have been like a complete flip. Our super drop is out. Uh, it's crazy tool. tool. Um, I don't expect either team to go for this. Although it would work well with the transport company, it's away from either of them. Yeah, I'm not sure it's worth the time to get over there. Both, uh, both teams have so many bales to get on now and they can't really split the player. Yeah, no one's no one's making a move towards it, so I think this one's just gonna come and go without being used. Yeah, lots of bales out skills. there still to be gathered, so you can't waste time to go get a uh, crazy tool to press more when you've got to worry about getting the ones you have pressed in and delivered. Three minutes to go, and this one's too close to call, really. And uh, Herman are going into the lead. Yep, it's going to go back into Vulture's favor here in a second, though, because they had four bales to their two. Yep, there we go. There it is. The Horman have more on the bay, uh, on the uh, thing. This is going to come down to an unforced error at this point. If bales fall off this conveyor, it's going to cost whichever team it is that they fall off. So both stackers have to be absolutely spot on at the moment. 515, 487 in Vulture's favor. Uh, four more bales outstanding for Herman, but the problem is they're trailing. Comes a bunch in on the Anderson loader there. And 805 bringing them in. Low, more stacking bales them up. sitting there for, for Herman at the moment. Yeah, Vulture's got to get some of theirs in and quick. Look that at that, that bale trailer sitting there, that is not good for Vultra. That is not good at hey, all. Hey, Danish Dan. How you doing? Good to see you. But here come more bales in for Vultra. A minute and 47 mm. seconds. Hightower bringing in a stack of 10 bales. Got to get them in, though. But, I mean... Scotty, one of the best. Oh, unforced is. error coming in there for Armand. They don't need that. They need to get these 12 in. 12 point and lead. This is going to be close, Alex. Lead. This is going to be oh. really close. Herman's lead is extending a bit. Vultra. You, you can, see, you can see the stress on Vultra team's Look face. Look at Scotty, though, picking up four. 707, 635, oh. Neo Prince taking a little bit of uh, wobbly one minute, one exit minute off the bridge. One minute left on the clock. 70 point lead for Horrorman at the moment. Are we heading for an upset? 747, 675, 715, 747, 787, oh. 715. Vulture, I think, just are not going to end up having oh. being able to get enough of the bales in. 40 seconds left on the clock. Four bales sitting there for uh, Horman. Vultra go back into the lead, but they have one bale to Horman's yeah, three, Herman's and Horman back are in back in the lead. I think Herman's 23 got this. seconds left on the clock. Herman's about to put two at least on, if not three. Oh, if they can get this last bale on, that is going to do it for them. There's no that's way that. Vultra can respond to that. Yeah, that's that. As long as they get in, and in it goes. there it is. Six. Eight sixty six. <gasps> is it? Oh, there it goes. just in time. Horman have done it. Horman have had an upset. Wow, eight ninety seven to eight seventy five, and Herman. So, but let's remember, what was it? Two or three months ago, this was the final, and Herman yeah. won the first game, and they went into the second game and should have won that as well. And they shot themselves in the foot. Unforced errors cost them. And Vultra ended up winning the last two of the best of three to win that final. So uh, don't count Vultra out yet, but Amazingly, still a huge, huge Vultra, win for Herman there. Vultra delivered more bales that game. They delivered one more bale. But I think but but they, the they put one thing. into the bottom at the end. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, they put one or two into the bottom, so you definitely you gotta try to get them to the top. And again, like Vulture had that three to one multiplier, didn't you know deliver a single bail with Vultra, it? So. Ultra not taking advantage of of the advantages they had at all. Yeah. And you can't do that. You you really cannot 
let the other team in like that. If you have that three times three times multiplier, deliver bales. <laughs> the nerves. Look at oh, him. Man. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> this well, is just so much better to see them game. in person. They win this game. They're in third. They are in third overall. Which is crazy. Yeah. It is. Um I, and not only that, but they would make sure that you know, no matter what my insanity does, they'll finish in that top four, which is very important because then you won't get yeah. matched up against anyone else from the top four my, in the group stage. My prediction earlier actually doesn't matter if Horman get through or not. For my insanity to make third, they need to make uh, to make fourth. Sorry, they need to make the final. If they make the final, they either knock. Uh, Cortiva or Horman down to fifth. Yeah. Look at the look at I mean, Hero they Fest still in the need background. To beat Trelleborg, let's, <laughs> which is which is huge. But my Not... sanity still have a route to the top four. Yeah, and that even would if be... Horman win this, that would be impressive. There's uh, Noah in the background with running the camera, Oops. aka Helper B. If you watch FarmCon coverage. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Shout out to Noah. And yeah, not only is FSL going on, but you can see uh, monitors in the background, people at HeroFest able to get their hands on a uh, build of Farming Simulator 22 and, and play it a bit as well. And seven weeks from tomorrow, Farming Simulator 22 will be out. And there's a giveaway going on right now, actually, for Farming Simulator 22. So click that link in chat, go enter. And uh, you'll, if you win, you'll be contacted via email. And then when the game releases on November 22nd, You'll have yourself a copy of uh, Farming Simulator 22 unlocked. There's Hightower giving a little wink at the camera. Yes. A little waggle of the eyebrows. It wasn't a wink, but yeah, Voltra need to bounce back here That's, and force a third, yeah. or they're out in the quarterfinals. That is uh awesome set of pictures from Horowin, as we said earlier. Yeah, just... I mean... A lot Brilliant. of teams like Vulture goes for like the arms cross, stoic cross. face, but Herman yeah. mix it up. Every player does something different, right. and I like that. <laughs> Absolutely brilliant. Uh, so what's getting banned first? It is the Case Puma, which is a, a favorite of teams at the moment. So, um, yeah, interesting choice there from Herman. Yeah, I wouldn't really, uh, you know, don't sleep on that favorite because it's been um patched recently oh actually that's not that's not the care wheel one never mind that's the no. fence 724 but, but the vault uh, but the cost has, has been updated up. recently yeah yeah well the fence favorites point cost has been reduced okay. but i just got it mixed up uh -huh. with the uh the wow care wheels. both teams banning care wheel it, stuff yeah all of them get out of here <laughs> um that's not a bad i mean it just basically means that the first bail points aren't going to be as <laughs> high i guess um we'll see what happens hello to everyone watching on twitch and youtube by the way we're glad you're here with us terminator myself and virtual farmer aka alex yes. with me we've been having a good time we still have we have at least one more uh, round in this matchup, and then we have another quarterfinal Trelleborg against My Insanity coming up. Bednar versus Pertinger in the semifinals already. Daddy! <laughs> Daddy! <laughs> There's Virgil Farmer's kids making an appearance on the stream. All right, the new Holland is in. He'll be happy with that. Neo Prince and Martin for each team going with under pressure in the My Deutsch Far. <laughs> My apologies, I couldn't get to the mute button fast enough. <laughs> oh, no worries. I mean, that's is real life, you know. <sighs> that's what happens when you uh, cast from home. You never know what can happen. Um, yeah. One time, I was I was on a call with our PR partners, and uh, one of the guys from that that company, Reverb, his kid came into the <laughs> the room, and he like was like, "Oh God, oh God." Because his kid came in without like any clothes on. Just oh like, no! And he was like, "Oh dear!" He's like running him out of the room. Oh, uh, so yeah, anything can happen on a call from home. That's just what the pandemic has uh, created.
Uh, you never know what could happen. It was it was one of those things. I was hearing 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 her outside the door, and I'm kind of going, "Don't come in! Don't come in! Don't go!" Oh God! <laughs> oh well, it uh, happens. It Ooh, does. Neoprint's getting rejected there, and an 805 with the John Oof. Deere harvester, and to flow grabbing the ideal. I got I got told by uh, by list that that it's it's Nitos. Oh yeah, um, that's right. We've we've been told this which, before. Which we've been told, I think. But I don't <laughs> I don't get that because, well, I guess is that how you say eight in German? I think that's right. Because I would be saying Natos, and that's why I was like, oh, that doesn't yeah. make sense. I to I, me. I, th I, th I think that's that that's basically um, leet speak. Nitos. Okay. Nitos. Fair. Uh, Martin coming in for first kill at three minutes and 53. He's going to do a drive by and. Ooh, not fails. this. Ooh, Ooh that's not, not good. Uncharacteristic by Martin. The only saving grace is that Neo Prince is a little bit slow on the draw. So, but that could have been. That probably would have been closer to 130. Ultra, not. A Ultra are not up to their their normal gameplay today. It's yeah, one twenty to one thirteen. I have actually locked my door now. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's all right. No one, uh, you know, the way that British kids say "daddy" is just so much better than how like an American kid would say it. So. <laughs> Everything sounds better with the accent. I, I, I love that when we traveled over to London a couple of years ago, just hearing the kids. Um, Daddy. 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 <laughs> All right. 120 to 113. Martin. This is... First bail points I mean, only so far. Still mark. early. Ultra looking to be a little bit late unloading uh, their first grain. Normally they're, they're at this point earlier than uh, than this point. In fact, Horman fairly late on it as well. Oh, and going through the crop with that new Holland. Mm -hmm. That is going to slow that down. Hey, and first 12 minute drop drops. coming in. Herbicide and bridges raised. I'm not expecting either team to go for that. Well, bad, unfortunately, now the record is 140 and you can't break that. So that's what Big Daddy has to go up against yeah. as he's trying to perfect the first bail right. points. <laughs> it's going to be. You can't break the record now. Trelleborg have uh, no. set it as high well, as you can get. You can only match max. Them. Hightower and Martin here working together. And same thing for Herman. We got Neo Prince running the grain cart. Not sure who's in the harvester. Bring back Big Pig. I'm surprised it's taken us this long into the broadcast today to get our first call for Big Pig. <laughs> I, I keep meaning to make a Big Pig emote. Oh, I yeah, really you should. keep meaning to do it. You really should. I went to I went to Mies Farm, which is a, a an open farm in um, a, a, or a farm park here in the UK a few weeks ago. Uh, they have a giant pig uh, <laughs> near the exit, and I actually got my picture taken with it, and I haven't posted it yet, and I need to. <laughs> it's basically me That's and awesome. big pig. <laughs> <laughs> At least a big pig. Not big the pig, big yeah. pig, maybe. Not the big pig. <laughs> yeah. Now I have other plans. I didn't really see them, but I was around like 1,500 uh, hogs a couple of days ago. I did see the oh. uh, flies that were a side effect of that oh, many God. hogs. Um, but yeah, didn't really... Uh, biosecurity and all that comes into play when it comes to 
uh, pig farming, so uh, didn't even risk it. An English, uh, an English accent in America. Everybody either thinks you're wonderful or a villain. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it, in Star Wars, all the all the villains <laughs> almost. Had oh, a that's 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 the big accent. film all over here, and all the extras, uh, and all, uh, yeah. the, uh, the smaller all the smaller actors, all the Empire, British. just about. Uh, they all have a British accent. Oh. Well, we need to, SGA should have tried to participate in a tournament, like an official one, even though they're in the US. Mm. They could have played remotely and dealt with the pain. Oh, this... Who knows? They could have they could have finished in the that sixteenth place. We still don't know who's gonna take that. This would have been the year to actually to if you were if you were having to play remote, this would have been the year to do it. Right. And like we've seen teams like DJK Anfeld, LSA that just because they've been able to get to like one or two quarterfinals, they're going to be in the grand finals mm. next month. That's all it's taken for them. Because towards the bottom of the standings, there's just, you know, we've seen the same teams pretty much dominate. Early in the season, it was Trelleborg and Cortiva going back and forth. Lately, we've seen the rise of the likes of these two teams, Herman and Vulture. Um, so at the top of the standings, it's been pretty consistent. Uh, but John Deere have kind of fallen off. Um, my insanity has risen up the table. And then the bottom of the table, they're still like, yeah, who, are they going to have to, like, you know, have a play in for the 16th place? Uh, winner gets a chance to take on the Trelleborg in the grand finals. Uh, we'll see. Well, so uh, Tux said, if you're not aware, Saturday's play-ins doesn't have an official English broadcast, and um, anyone can also take the clean feed from the clean feed channel and can restream it on Saturdays. So Giants, twitch.tv slash Giants software clean feed. Uh, I, I don't know if they'll do that next month during the grand finals, but anyone could take that clean feed on Saturday and rebroadcast it on your channel in whatever language you want as well. Um, but as far as like an official finish broadcast, uh, I don't have the answer for that. I guess you would have to uh, contact either Klaus or, or Jenny to see, um, you know, there'd have to be enough interest as well, but maybe you could figure something out. I know, like, we're trying to grow it in North America now. I've taken over the Friday scrimmage streams. We do it at, like, U.S. evening time hours. There's a group of guys in Brazil that do their own, like, standalone matches of the Farming Simulator League, usually about once a week in Brazilian Portuguese. So there's definitely some uh, other opportunities for people to try to grow it in different languages in different parts of the world. And as we were saying earlier, you know, there are about half on a normal uh, normal season, about half the games, I think, are, or, or a third of the games are uh, online ones. So if you are a team who is based in the US or Brazil or, or, or somewhere where you can't get to the in-person ones to do it, you can enter those uh, those ones, and as we've, as we've seen this year, you could be in the top sixteen just by making a final. At right. The yeah. Um, and then the only one you'd have to travel for, over for would be the final itself. Right. You know. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see. Like you know, obviously me being hired, I my main job is community coordinator. But before I was hired, I was already doing the commentary with you and Silver News. It was at the beginning. Uh, shout out to Joe, by the way. Been doing some real life farming this summer and fall, so uh, hope he's doing well with the farming. I've been following along with it on his YouTube channel quite a bit. Seems to be having a good time. Um, but you know, I want to see it grow in more places. Um, the, really, the FSL is still really young. Um, it's a really enjoyable esport, but it just doesn't have the same amount of exposure. Um, it requires a, a special, you know type of interest as well i feel like 
compared to like shooter games. If you watch a shooter esport, really? you probably watch multiple shooter esports. Whereas there's nothing really to compare the FSL to. Um, so, but it's only season three, so it's still really young in the grand scheme of things. So it'll be interesting to see with the new game coming out to what the future of the FSL will look like. Um, yeah, anyone can join the uh, scrims. Uh, Billy Alpaca? Not all the teams are German. Um, some are from Switzerland. There's Czech Republic team that's actually Bednar playing today. They're into the semifinal already. Uh, I think someone said that they, there's a French team as well. I think there's a Dutch team. I think LSA maybe is the Dutch team. I remember right. Um, so, and then we've got... We do have interest from other teams too. They just don't really participate in these tournaments. Just the time is really bad for one thing for people in North America that aren't crazy like me and don't want to get up at 1 a.m. or <laughs> <laughs> whatever it may be, depending on time. So, ooh, bottom boost. Hightower is going for it. Uh, Vulture might be getting to this. Uh, is anyone else going for it for the other team? It doesn't look like it. I think Vulture yeah. are going to get this. And oh, the... that's that could be a big problem for Harman. But the problem here comes yes. Martin now. Does he have enough time? Forty-five seconds, and he has to get these in and get them unloaded into the yes. bottom. And look at that, <laughs> Harman already. Yeah, they're going to try to counter, I guess, with that. I don't know actually. I don't... He's moved away from it. I'm not sure he knows that Martin is Oof. ready to come in with this. Is there enough time? 20 seconds. Yeah, he's got plenty of time to get all of those in there. Oh, the counter is coming. Is Martin's in position? He is unloading them. In goes the point, he's backing it in. And they're nice. in, but nothing happened. Yeah, I think because I think um, the Herman had too one. Early. Herman had one on the belt and it went in like at like four or five. So yeah, it went in a bit too early. So a bullet dodged there from Herman, but they now have a lot of fails to get in in a very short period of time. And they need yeah. to get them back. Yeah, there, there's people like you too, Spencer, and Felden as well, who's on the East Coast to stay up late and watch the FSL. But you guys are dedicated. You guys are the real MVPs. Hey, on that. Yeah. 560 to 403. So yeah. So the I'm, bottom I'm boost actually... super drop for those that maybe don't know, it basically gives you the chance to get the same amount of points as you would get for the multiplied bales into the upper part of the barn via the bottom of the barn. So that was a good moment for Vulture because Martin had a, a full or nearly full Anderson loader ready to bring in and scored those points as if they were going into the top of the barn, but they didn't have to take all that time to put them, you know, one at a time or two at a time onto the belt. I agree. I'm, I'm actually um, kind of surprised that there aren't any British teams. Yeah. Um, Granted, with the, the travel restrictions, I don't think they would still be able to go to the in-person events. But, I mean, Bednar is playing remotely today, and they're into the semifinals. So, you know, um, exceptions are being made right now just due to the, the state of the pandemic and the like. But, hey, I'm really surprised by that because the time zone matches up decently well. It's only an hour difference. So I'm quite surprised by it. I'm actually, I'm also, I'm, I'm, I'm... I'm, I'm slightly surprised here on Twitch, actually, uh, that there's not more English viewers in general. Right. Um, it's a, it, it's one of those weird things that I was I was pointing out last night in that you get a you get an English farm sim streamer here on on Twitch, and the the top ones will get between sort of eighty and one hundred and twenty. You look at the German. Twitch streamers, they get near the the five hundred uh, right. viewers, the top German ones, and it's it's really interesting. I'm surprised that um that there aren't more, you know, 
Oh, uh, Nitos was stuck on the... Was here on, on we're going to have a, a third round here between these two as Vulture takes the second of the best of three to force it. Got to research the competition for next year. Uh, Spencer, are you going <laughs> to... Yosho said he'd be there this uh, Friday scrim stream. Are you going to be able to make it? I'm very, I'm very interested actually in maybe once a month so, doing a, a, a FSL stream. That'd so be quite good. Herman had five undelivered bales there, um, and that would have been enough, I think, to to bring them level. But you got to get them in. They don't count if you don't get them delivered. So nice uh, response by Vulture there to force this third one. A lot more at stake for Herman now to see if they can, you know, kind of break Her this this uh, duck they have against Vulture where they've, they've – it's kind of like a repeat of history here. They won the first round um, and then lost the second one. Vulture in the past has, has been able to overcome and come from behind against Herman and respond well. And I think, like – Alex, you said it earlier, the best teams know how to disrupt the other teams and they know how to respond to what the other teams are doing too. Yeah. Um, that, that really sets teams like Vulture and Trelleborg apart from the rest. I, don't, I, I didn't see any particular big mistakes from uh, Herman there at all. I think it's a case of... I, yeah. I think they just got outplayed. Uh, Vultra seemed to come back, seemed to be back on well, the game Well, that bottom boost, too, if we're honest. And like, that, yeah, yeah, five undelivered for Herman, so maybe without that nice. bottom boost, Vultra leaves some on the board, too. Um, but it, but it, yeah, wasn't it didn't even look like Herman was interested in going for the bottom boost, but maybe they just no. didn't have the bales ready. I don't know. But it's it's also the, the, th the thing with the bottom boost is that it wasn't, that big an advantage for Vultra. And yes, it meant that Herman had to suddenly get a lot of bales in. Right. But there was no big bonus from it. You know, they they didn't they didn't get any kind of a uh, boost from getting lots of uh lots of bales in at once. They uh yeah. <laughs> it's um there's Trelleborg, uh JK and crew on camera as we're having a look around and well that uh some teams have already changed out of their <laughs> team uniforms <laughs> yeah we've not i've been traveling all over the place this month so there's not been a friday uh open lobby stream i think maybe only one this month but we're back this friday unless something crazy happens plan to have it happen 7 p.m eastern right here on this channel hosted by myself um, oftentimes, Donner Kyle from Team Manitou, uh, who is from the U.S. but lives nice. in Germany now and is uh, can speak both German and English, he joins me in in uh, voice chat and helps do uh, translations and stuff like that. Um, always a huge help to have Donner Kyle out to the Friday night scrim streams. Uh, so, Master Yoda, that, the. I Friday scrim streams are open to anyone. You don't really need a team. Yeah. So if you want to try out the FSL, show up to one. Um, it's midnight UK time, which isn't great. But, uh, yeah, if you want to stay up late on a Friday, come join. We'll put you in a team. I, lots of people saying in the chat that, that if there was a uh, uh, UK team, you uh, join one. Head over to the um, the Farm Sim Discord. There is a uh, there is a, an FSL uh, area in there. Go ask, go see if there's people you can play the FSL with, um, and uh, and do that. And yeah, uh, you will possibly find other people who want to play the FSL to team up with. Uh, and then yeah, join the scrims and uh, and when it opens to uh, to welcome teams again, apply. See if you can uh, see if you can join in, and see if you can play. There and who knows, go. we get enough UK teams, we might get an FSL tournament over here in the UK, which would be awesome. Hosted at Virtual Farmer's House. <laughs> <laughs> um, 
Uh, He's going to have to clean out his office because we're, we're my, doing my it in biggest, there. I've been cleaning out my office. Uh, my biggest <laughs> problem with that would be the internet connection. If you're expecting to run an FSL from here, that's not going to work. Very the winner well will be posted on Gleam, but the winner will also be contacted via email. Um, so whenever the giveaway is done, which it's still got a long way to go, it'll, uh, it'll show via the link who won it. Um, but that person will also be contacted via email. All right, pretty similar setup here. The only difference is the Voltra S34 uh, for Voltra and then the New Holland for Herman. So here we go. Everything to play for. One of these teams will advance to the semifinal, and one of these teams will go out in the quarterfinals here. 15 minutes to decide it. Who's it going to be? Let us know in chat. Who do you think it'll be? A Voltra or Herman? Uh, don't let Virtual Farmer predict it. Um, but... You can get your predictions in. I can't predict it at the moment. That's probably a good lots, thing. Lots yeah, of thanks, surprises Danish here Dan. at the moment. There is, um, there's, it's kind of confusing. Uh, and I, I wish we could clean this up. We've got the Farming Simulator Discord, which is the main one for our company. And then we've got the Farming Simulator League Discord for like these actual tournaments for the teams that participate in the official ones. And then we have a Farming Simulator League scrimmage Discord server, which is specifically for the <laughs> German and English language scrimmages. Um, so thank you, Danish Dan, for sharing the link to the scrim Discord. So if you do want to participate in the scrimmages, whether it be the Wednesday ones in German or the Friday ones in English, uh, you need to go join that Discord server, and then wow. when the stream is live, once you have uh, downloaded the client, you've got your account set up, um, join the open lobbies during the stream, and we'll get you in based on order of people joining and the like. Can I, can I host an, uh, an IRL tournament? That is a lot of setup. <laughs> Which is probably beyond me, because my schedule is so <laughs> busy. Love to. Oh, look at that. I, wasn't there. I completely missed a completely even first bail. 127 to 127. Oh, wow. Yeah, that is impressive for both. So much, much more even uh, starts up here. And where is he running to? Where is Neo Prince running oh, there to? It is. He's going to go the and new get home. the best tractor <laughs> in the FSL. Kirka right. is predicting a win for Horriman here. Okay. Herman needs this more than Vulture, really. Like, yeah, there's prize money at stake, but as far as standings go, Vulture's second, no matter what happens today. Herman could climb up the standings if they can advance here. They need to make sure they don't do what they did last time when it came to uh, Vulture in a best of three, where they won the first round, and then they just started making errors that cost them. They need to make sure to not have any errors here. Which, you know what? Uh, I'm probably going to jinx the teams now, Alex. But we have not had an oops yet today, and I'll think from either team. The closest thing we, we had to a near error was uh, when Bednar ended up in the moat trying to jump up for that uh, grain multiplier. But they got there with like a second <laughs> to spare. So we've not seen anything too massive go wrong yet. Something I don't quite understand. Uh, what we got? We got bale multiplier and herbicide. Uh, I don't think either of those are ones that the teams will run over to get. Um, Something that I don't quite understand is why the teams would rather not harvest any grain at all than harvest grain with wheat, uh, the weeds in it. Right. That makes no sense to me. If they were going round it to get other grain that, that was weed free, I could understand it. You see them picking up and going out and... Or, or picking up and going out completely makes sense because that makes them go faster uh, to get round it. But we've seen them where they get half a header full of wheat rather than get a full header of wheat with a bit of uh, with a bit of grain in it. Uh, yeah, with a bit a of point. wheat in it, which is weird. So uh, kind of standard from Vulture, they're getting the control of the multiplier early, but they only <laughs> have two bales pressed and they're not ready to deliver any yet. So it's about to be three to one. And 
Martin now. Belt is stopped. Gonna head Voltra out. Ultra have a three times multi advantage. They need to take advantage of it. Said this before. Because if they've dropped that now and uh, grain multiplier turns up at eight minutes, that'll scupper them. Because yeah, we and know are gonna leave it. and don't yeah. deliver at this point. Yeah, they're going to do the grain chain. That's pretty standard for them. So they're going to leave that grain cart there. They're going to fill these two harvesters up and then take them over and empty that all out at the same time. This is... I th again, I think Vultra have messed up. I think this could come... If, if grain multiplier comes up at eight minutes, this is going to bite them in the butt. Let's see. Nine minutes and 45 seconds will tell. One of these teams moves on, the other doesn't. It's as simple as that. Everything to play for in this third of the best of three. I misunderstood what Kurt Kurt was asking for earlier. He wants an in real life tournament. So this, oh, but okay. with actual combined harvesters and actual failures. And, oh I'm not sure God, no. uh, anyone would release their equipment to actually jump over a raising drawbridge or not. Um, <laughs> some <laughs> the some uh, liability waivers would have to be signed oh, in the like. Uh, that is not a wise idea. <laughs> Uh, maybe maybe uh, real life bail stacking challenge again like we had during FarmCon that Lars and I did was, the commentary for. That was pretty cool. Uh, which Trelleborg won as well. <laughs> like, yeah. Come on, Trelleborg. Oh, they just and dominate. Here we go. Real life or now virtual. delivering the first of their harvesters. Oh no, he's what's he doing? Why has he left the harvester? Oh, is he going into a position to grab the the drop? I think he's left that there because now Nitos is going to ah. come over and he'll move both into position. And he'll move both into position. Maybe grabbing That's a baler. That's a really good thing to do. Yeah, probably going to just go grab saves. a baler and get to bailing because they definitely need to do that. Because now the other team, they, uh, they've got two people on harvesters emptying the harvesters. Uh, Homan have two people free to bail and create extra bales right. and things. Yeah. Yeah, good move probably there by Herman. I assume Hi, that's got to be what Neo Prince is doing. Right, got to be what somewhere out there. Bridges oh, well. lowers and bridges raise. It's gone in Voltra's favor. Yeah, it has. I think Voltra are exceedingly lucky. Definitely. Because um, that could have gone horribly, horribly wrong. Here, now uh, Nitos grabbing the New Holland. Um, this is probably going to end up being about even again, though, as far as the multiplier goes. And do, but do you know what? Horrorman are in control at the moment. Yeah, and they have uh, to be no... out there. Like, Let's see. The, so Vulture have 17 oh, bales have right now. I'd be bail. curious to see. Oh, actually, they have more. Vulture have more bales than Herman, so um, it's kind of surprising, really. And here we go, switching back. And both Voltra teams went with bridges raised. Start unloading. Interesting. Hello, Liam. I'm glad you love the FSL. I'm glad to see you. Hello, everyone on Twitch and YouTube. And it looks like. Horman actually unloading faster than uh, Vultra were there. Things are evening up. Vultra this is going to be taken enough. No advantage again. I don't know. Is there enough grain there, though, for Herman? I think there is. They just need to even this up before this first bail goes on. Vultra finally trying to take some advantage. I don't think they, they have gonna... anymore. They have, they can't be added. No, they. Oh, do. there it is. Now it's gone. There it is. Yeah, they've got fifteen thousand. Uh, Vultra so. scoring points though now with the multiplier, not as much as they could have, but there yeah. is still an advantage. 
Oh, slightly short. There must be a little there bit is. more gray. No, you... There it is. Yeah, not enough to get a 2.1 to 2.0, but at least they've evened it back up. But like you said, Vulture did manage to score some at more than 20 points per bail. Vulture almost with a full Anderson loader. Actually, both teams we're seeing now. Um, the difference is, is that they've got the John Deere for Herman, so he's got three more on the front. That could help with a uh, combo, depending on timing. We've not seen a bail uh, delivery combo yet today. Just these teams, every matchup so far has just felt really evenly matched, and both teams have, and every matchup has been ready to uh, make sure that they counter anything their opponents are doing. We've had some really close ones today, Alex. Oh, massively close ones today. Ones ones that actually have no right to be as close as they were. Yeah, that too. You're right. We're 44 seconds away from the super drop. Herman and uh, Vulture both were bringing a full Anderson loader in. Here comes to flow now with three on the front. And then they're going to switch and put the new Holland on the Anderson loader. Nitos is going to grab that and unload it, which is smart because Deflo has the uh, John Deere with the nice manure fork. He can grab uh, two stacks of two at a time. Okay. So, Scotty waiting for Martin to come in. Definitely, like, there's 25 bales outstanding. Uh, for Vulture at the moment. And there comes Hightower now with the full Anderson loader. I was wondering where that was. Lord Baylor for two bales. Um, Is that going to be enough? For, well, actually, that oh, would Vulture's be great going for, for a Horrorman at the moment. And Vulture heading out there. I don't get why teams go out there for this. Vulture. Oh, they were going for it, but they just were too late. That. Yeah. Herman would look like they were trying to bring like an Anderson loader in and thought about going for it, but it was just too late by that point. They must have been on like the opposite side of the field. 347 to 333, Herman in the lead. Now it's actually Vulture, as I said that. 3, 413 to 347. Four about ben to go on for Herman. match this. It's going to come Herman down to maybe some bales falling off, but I mean, well, Ooh, that one's that one's going to go off. Of which, Scotty, Scotty can't, can't save, save it either. It. That one's probably going to fall. That, that one's definitely going to fall, right? Mm. Yeah, there's there's no way that's going in, surely. And just little mistakes like that are going to cost them. In it goes. 513 to 467. Vulture seem to be pulling away a little bit Ooh. on this at the moment. Oh, <laughs> nice bit of recovery Yeah, there. nice bit of recovery. I think that one's going to go in. Nope. Oof. That thing just oh, slid right off that there. That was so unlucky. Two 593 to 507. Clock. Herman bringing some more bales in, but you got to think that Vulture are about to do the same. They, yep, here comes Hightower working Vulture, his way now, back. Now Vulture are outplaying Herman. They are absolutely outplaying Herman at this point. Because you don't, you don't do that, you don't pull away like that without doing that. Yeah. And it's it's been the case again of Vulture just, they lost that first one. But they've adjusted, they've reacted, and they've made sure not to make any mistakes. And it looks like they're going to be uh, headed to the semifinals here, unless something crazy happens. One minute 18 left. There is over a... Well, nope, there's now less than 100 points difference between these two teams. That's not the that, bails though. there, though. The bails coming in for... Vultra, and as long as they get some of those on, they're going to be A-OK. -okay. Yeah. 
Herman closes. Oh, oh no! and that's not. That's the last thing that Herman needed. That, that is. An that's all she wrote. There's our first. Uh, that's our first. Mis it's it's not technically an oops, in the case of the no, game, but it is. But it's definitely it is a massive unforced error that yeah. is just going to delay their final bales coming in. Yeah, you won't be able to get those in the top to now at all. Oh, he's unloading oh, it. Don't do that! Don't do that! He's unloading them. What's he doing? Oh, and that man. bridge is going straight back up. And he's stuck, and he too, because he's got the off it. loader up. Yeah, that's that. He is... That's the match. That's it. I mean, that that's only three bales. It wouldn't have been error. enough anyways, but definitely didn't help. So, Valtra are moving on to the semifinal, and they will play the winner of the next quarterfinal, My Insanity versus Trelleborg. You can see they're excited by that one. Uh, and unfortunately for Herman, they've uh, dropped an opportunity to move into third and also secure top four. Uh, if my insanity now can can manage to go on to the final, they gotta beat Trelleborg first in this next corner final. Then they also have to beat Valtra <laughs> if they make it past Trelleborg. So it's not an easy uh, task, but yeah, they've left the door open at least for my insanity. So my insanity's yeah. got even more to play for coming up. So there we go. 39 to 31, so many more bales delivered. Even if they had delivered Vultra. those five undelivered, they would have been three short of what Vulture did. Yeah. So GG's to Vulture. Um, congrats Fantastic to them on play. moving in. They've been, you know, Trelleborg's Trelleborg, but Vulture have been the hottest team really in the FSL for the past four or five months. They've just really started to climb the standings and they've secured second place and going into the grand finals and they've got a chance uh to win another tournament here and we'll we'll see what happens now we'll see how well um it can be pulled out of the bag for uh my insanity whether they can beat trelleborg uh, if they can beat trelleborg that is going to put them on a road to taking fourth place from horriman um which would be um which would be pretty huge to be honest Right, uh, but they've got to beat Valtra as well, which yeah, based on how well I mean, Valtra played that last first. game, they've got to beat Trelleborg be first. And I mean, I think like Trelleborg has three tournament wins, three runners up, three third or one third place finish. So I mean, it's a tough ask just to get past Trelleborg, but anything can happen. And yeah. uh, we'll be right back with that one after this.
Welcome back. Three matches down. Three, uh, one match to go in the quarterfinal of this tournament. Uh, I'm here with uh, Kerminator Live, who's uh, who'll be back in a minute. I think I'm here. There I'm he here. is. You're here. You're here. <laughs> um, <laughs> I said that and then went. Oh, his mic's still muted. That's that's <laughs> not good. Um, but yeah, so uh, three cracking matches so far. We're going to go to Trelleborg. Uh, versus my insanity in a minute. Um, first, we've got some replays coming from the last game, um, which was interesting. It kind of started off with uh, Horman being on top and then slowly went to Vultra, uh, taking it uh, overall. Uh, so we start off with the first game, and yeah, not not a great start there from I, th I think that was um uh Horman hitting the, the first bit and then just Ooh. some serious <laughs> air. <laughs> oh man. Oof. And then bumping into that. Oh, it yeah, there was definitely a few uh moments where it seemed like the nerves were starting to get to Herman. Uh, bumping into the bridges, getting stuck on the bridge. Oh, yeah, you got to yeah, be careful. It's just sort of, yeah. Repeatedly sort of, and, and there, there were a few unforced errors through the whole thing. And that was ridiculously close. That first round was close. great. Yeah, that first round was great. Really close. Herman came out on top, but then they just didn't have what it takes uh, in the next two. And even though Vault, uh, Martin made a mistake here, which isn't, Something he does a lot with first bail. Uh, I didn't. I do. Really affect I do him. think that uh, Herman were a little bit unlucky the second and third game. If if it had come that there was a uh, the grain multiplier drop, that would have sunk Voltra both games. Yeah, you're right. And they I were mean... just unlucky that didn't happen. Oh, that was a bad crash for Voltra. Didn't cost them though, and uh, Vulture ended the semifinal. They'll face nice. the winner of the next one. As we've now got uh, two members of Team Manitou, we've got Homer Manitou. and Prodax doing the commentary. So uh, they may have been knocked out of the quarter in the quarterfinals here today, but uh, they get the joy of uh, doing some casting over on the German channel. Giant oh, Soccer sorry. DE, by the way, on Twitch. If you speak German and you'd like to go over there and watch it. Um, they are there in person. Sadly, myself and Alex are not. Uh, but hopefully one day soon we can make it happen. And look, it's starting to fill up. We got some cosplayers yeah. watching the FSL at the moment. Oh, you the, gotta the like cosplay that. at Hero Fest is fantastic. Um, yeah, really, really good. The, the two times I've been able to get to Hero Fest, it's been absolutely brilliant. But uh, yeah, good to see the filling up as my insanity come out onto the stage first so our fifth place team my insanity the home team by the way here in switzerland and uh and, trelleborg uh, of course top of the standings if you don't know trelleborg by now well you should uh they have consistently shown that uh, they are one of the best teams in the fsl if not the best um, and they will be first place no matter what happens today. They secured that two tournaments ago. They secured first place in the uh, grand finals next month. But my insanity has a lot to play for here. As we said, they would have to make it all the way to the final to get into the top four. But that is a massive prize. Arguably, that's a bigger prize, Alex, than the prize money today because... If you can get into the top four for the grand finals, you avoid playing the likes of Trelleborg, Vulture, and Cortiva. Um, so, oh. yeah, lots at stake. Absolutely. Um, I believe this actually is uh, my insanity's home game because... That's what I was saying. Yeah, they're, uh, they're, a, yeah. they're a Swiss team. They're the home team. But, I, but more than that, I believe that my insanity runs Hero Fest. Oh, well, if I then, if I remember correctly, really is a big one. I was just I was just trying to look up the uh, Hero Fest information to double check that, but I have <laughs> a feeling. But yeah, mine's mine's Hansi might run the Hero Fest, um, as in the esports um, company. So, oh, cool, very interesting.
That vulture guy should get a raise. <laughs> Great. All right, so we've got Lars, PB, and Yan for my insanity. We've got Wooler, JK, and Beatmaster for Trelleborg. One of these teams will advance to the semifinal. The other will not, as we've got the Massey 7726, the Deutsch 9340 band. Let's see what else my insanity is going to ban. The Fint 724 with the Care Wheels is gone. Really surprised that the my insanity didn't ban the John Deere uh, with the manure fork there because Trelleborg do quite like that one. I would imagine they're going to pick it now, but it's really hard to affect Trelleborg even if you ban something that they like to use. They'll just go with their second best choice and do it just as well most of the time. No surprise uh, from Trelleborg, especially Transport Company nope. and the Agco Ideal 9T. Both teams have gone with that. And neither team grabbing a bailer this time. So let's see here. Um, my guess is just JK is going for the John Deere. Yeah. Well, Wooler actually did. Oh, no, did. Wooler's going for John Deere. I didn't think, well, yeah, because it doesn't matter grabbing that uh, early. Oh, you know what? Yeah, JK usually runs that. the Baylor. I think I got him confused. I thought that JK was the stacker for Trelleborg, but I think it is Wooler. Yep. JK yeah. is gone with the Case Puma and with the Care Wheels and under pressure. Same for Yan. So, same exact setup so far for both teams. Well, let's see if they can make it three for three. Vultra and Archimedes. Yep. Okay, I will I will say this right now. If my insanity are going to play exactly the same game as Trelleborg, if they're gonna try and just beat them straight up, they are going to lose. Yeah, that's I mean your only hope if if you match them like for like is that they make some unforced errors, which is very yeah. rare, or all of the drops go in your favor. Um, trying to match them like for like is is probably not the best strategy. No. I've I don't I've never seen anybody beat Trelleborg playing like for like. You have to disrupt them. Maybe Vulture. To... Maybe Vulture once, but it is. I don't even it's even a then it's Vultra, a tough ask. I I'm fairly sure Vulture didn't do it playing like for like. They did it. They've done it by disrupting them by doing things that affect uh you know the the multiplier to a point where uh it gives ultra uh, an advantage in 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 points and things like that it's it a like for like play just delivering grain when they do bailing when they do uh you know doing all the same things without trying to actively disrupt them did that you see that there as well like the silhouette they're doing the same thing for the first bail as Trelleborg, but they were a good, like, 15 yards behind them. So, yeah, like, unless JK messes up on this uh, delivery, they're also, like, they're trying to match them like for, like, on the first bail and coming up short, depending on how this is and, and delivered yeah, in now. Yeah, JK, JK is massively ahead. Ooh, JK missed. But he missed it, though. Uh, that was a close one. He's still going to get there before. Look at that, though. Um, oh, but he got it in on the drive-by, my insanity. So they got okay. away with that. If JK had gotten that in at first attempt, that would have been a lot bigger of an advantage. Really interesting, though, is despite the fact that there was an unforced error from Trelleborg, they still got two extra points from that. Right, exactly. <laughs> And that, and now, that tells you how much you have to rely on them making unforced errors in right. order to beat them like in a like-for-like like game. Having a look you at know, Jan now uh, bailing with the uh, case bailer. If, if my insanity are going to well, play a like-for-like like game, this isn't theirs to win, this is Trelleborg's to lose. I mean, and look at the two ideals at the are moment. being run right now for Trelleborg, which is ideal for Trelleborg. That's what they always try to go for is double ideals. Um, Insanity has an ideal and a John Deere harvester. Even, even at the moment, Trelleborg have more grain than my Insanity do at the moment, which is just. 
How? How how are Trelleborg so efficient and so good? Yeah, <laughs> that's a good the, question. The same they are setup really good. Running at the, the same time, they can be this far ahead already. Right. Yeah, my insanity has to hope for some errors. They got to hope for drops to go their way. Our first drops are out now. Silo closed and speed up. Not really going to do much, and they're kind of out of the way. Neither team really will yeah. probably make a move to go towards the barn. Don't have you know in, one bale and against three bales ready at this point. Curtain yeah, and out. chat says Borgwen is imminent. I mean, that's probably a safe bet, depending on yeah. uh, if you if you if you go by history. Uh, um, it's even though it's a two point lead early on, it's just nothing against my insanity, but you're definitely uh, asking a lot of yourself trying to match Trelleborg like for like and pb actually looks like uh so speed up picked up by trailer yep. work so they did go for this one um so both teams are going to end up with speed up Don't get stuck in the mode. being actually fairly useless to both teams at the moment right um and now actually my insanity going to deliver some grain and as we said before, this is probably not a good move for my insanity here. They are absolutely banking and here comes JK. on a grain multiplier not hitting at eight minutes unless Trolleborg release at this point. Are Trolleborg going to do it? They definitely emptied some, but I don't... Yeah, he's going to do it. Yeah. I don't, I don't understand it. I, the advantage to having that eight minute drop of grain multiplier should really completely outweigh this. Nobody, no team I've seen has has scored points with bales at that eight, uh, at, between the 12 and the eight minute mark. Yeah, you, I would like to see teams maybe trying it more, but there's also the point of like, is it actually worth it? And it probably isn't. Uh, my insanity only had one bale there and you also would have to take the time out to stop bailing or stop harvesting to go deliver them um so it's probably not worth it in the end but we often see teams getting the control of the multiplier early and it doesn't really have that much of an effect Teams rarely take advantage of that multiplier. Even even putting two bales in on a three times multiplier, you know that is that is a huge amount of points you're leaving on the table if you if you don't do that. Right. Yeah. Oftentimes, when it comes to these closely matched teams, too, you have a very small window where you actually have any sort of advantage in the multiplier. It's often like two times the two times a lot of the time. When it comes to the teams yeah. of this quality, um, they know how to you know cancel each other out when it comes to delivering grain. And you'd only have to do it just before the eight-minute mark as well. You wouldn't you wouldn't have to you know immediately get the three times multiplier and then go and do bail because the trouble is teams that are doing that three times multiplier, they they don't actually have any bales on the field because they've not had a bailer yet. Yeah, they've like basically done first bail, then they go start gathering grain, the person that's supposed yeah. to be bailing most of the time. Um, and then, yeah, the, the chance is kind of gone at that point. But the trouble, I, I think the other reason why we probably see no points scored by teams that do that uh, is that they're having to do this. They're having to have two, har two people with two harvesters emptying in order to, to properly empty everything. The advantage you have getting the harvesters up there is you don't have that. And there's the grain multiplier. Yep. And right now, pretty even on grain. Trelleborg had a 2,000 advantage. Um, but if both teams can get to this, they have plenty of time to get over. Both teams need to make sure they get this because yep. especially my insanity needs to make sure they get it so that Trelleborg doesn't. But now PB is going to sit here and waste time. He could be out doing something else because he doesn't want to get it too early compared to Trelleborg. And he's grabbed it, and Wooler's grabbing the other one. 
And Wooler has actually saved more time there. He's got their wind yeah. rails on there, and Beatmaster is in place and ready to drop rain. See, that's that's that whole synchronicity between the uh, between the Trollable team, where they just save themselves moments right. from that point of view. Yeah, they didn't have they didn't sit there like PB did. Uh, they just made it no. part of the momentum, hopped out briefly, hopped back in, kept on driving. And, um, and, and, and now he's now having to back run around the bales. field to grab bales, yeah. while and Wool is we'll... already there scoring right. points. Yep. And now, like PB is coming in now, but he's later getting there than Trelleborg was. So we're just yeah. we've seen it. And it's it's they're that just light slightly light behind game. Trelleborg. Yeah, but they're had, just slightly had, behind. Uh, had. Uh, Trollable uh, had had uh, sorry my insanity not delivered that first set of grain, had got the harvesters down there in the same way as the other teams were, got the grain multiplier, they would have an advantage in their in the overall multiplier at the moment. They would have disrupted Trelleborg. Right. Don't do what Trelleborg are doing. It is that simple. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if my insanity were playing like this against just about any other team, you'd think my insanity are playing a good game so far, and they've got a good chance of this, and they still do have a chance of it. Let's give them some credit. Anything could happen, oh, yeah. but but it's just the fact that everything they've done to try to match Trelleborg has just been slightly less uh, impressive. Like they're just slightly behind them. And, and, everything and, they're doing. and you're, you're seeing it here where the points at the moment are equal. Trelleborg's points are going to go up first. Right. And it's and, and, and like for like, that will happen the whole game. And you can very easily then see my insanity losing by two points what or I've, more. What I'm finding interesting right now, Alex, is that both teams have transport company, but both teams are bringing in three on front of the John Deere every time. Like, it's almost like they're saving that Anderson loader for when they don't need to create any more straw or something, and then someone else is going to grab it and start bringing in the big load of bales. This is it's kind of different than what I've seen, really, before. Usually when a team's using transport company, they just try to get the Anderson loader full with three on the front. Um, so again, it, my insanity is matching Trelleborg like for yeah. like. And they, they are. You're, you're right. Why, uh, why is yeah, it now, an absolute like-for-like like match? Yeah. Yeah, they're both bringing the Anderson loader in at the same time. <laughs> same tractor. It's just like deja vu this this round, oh. I feel like. Uh, it could come down to, like, one bale falling off here. Um, and Wooler is such a good stacker. One of the best, if not the best, in the FSL. Um, so... You have to favor him at this bail point. Bale withering, one bale. This one bale for both teams. Is, I mean, is the if either team get this, that's an advantage. But I don't think either team will, because I think both teams are just now trying to stack bales. It's kind of far away, yeah. I mean, you could argue that um, you know the person harvesting could go get it, um, but then you lose a chance to have more straw laid down. Um, so. 30 seconds left, and it doesn't look like either That's... team is really making a move towards it yet, so I don't think no. anyone's going to go for it. It is it is a long way out of the way, that one. The Trelleborg in the lead, 464 to 382. This is just going to... This score is just going to change like crazy these next three minutes. So buckle up, everyone. Trelleborg are looking pretty good at the moment, but you never know. I'm not sure if all four of those are going to make it. Look at that. Same number of bales on the stacker, except that... Uh, Thanks, uh, the lunatic, for the are... suggestions on YouTube. Yeah. Sorry, Alex. Uh, sorry, yeah. No. Um, you know, they're, they're slightly behind... On, on getting bales in and immediately you can now see the difference the the ever yeah. so slight difference in speeds that my insanity has 
And the two teams are even on bales right now, which is bad news for my insanity because they trail. Both teams have 13 bales outstanding, now 14. So my insanity just isn't going to have the bales. Yeah, bale withering wouldn't no have even been enough. alterations to multipliers or number of bales or anything like that. Trelleborg are just faster and are just con continuously outplaying uh, my insanity at the moment. My insanity have played a rather clean game too. It's just you need something special to beat Trelleborg. You need to disrupt them. You need to throw them off their game a little bit, which is easier said than done. See, they're, they're now consistently 40 points behind. Yeah, and they just, and now they have, they have one less bail than Trelleborg. It just isn't, unless my insanity gets all of theirs in and Trelleborg doesn't, which is now a two point lead for Trelleborg. My insanity are actually going to take a lead here briefly when those two go in. But they, they are, they are now. For whatever reason, they find themselves too bailed short. And uh, PB's going to just push some in. They got a Bailtastic, oh. though. That could help. That could help. Nicely could... played by My Insanity. Oh. That gives you 50 bonus points. I mean, that evens up the difference, really. <laughs> this, this so, game okay, just it's just changed. got a whole lot in more interesting. It just got a whole lot this more did. interesting. I'm sitting up in my seat. 792 to 724. That is, that is, that makes a huge difference. I did not expect that. That's our first bail uh, delivery combo of the day. And what How, a time okay. to pull it now, out. Now my entire opinion changes. How did Trelleborg allow that? They were just too busy <laughs> stacking them on the belt instead of thinking about putting one in the bottom. I mean, that just flipped this game on its head. It's still close, though. That's it. And those two, I don't think those two are going to make it for my insanity. That's, that could be a problem. This is going to come oh. down. Trelleborg in the lead. Yeah, it fell off. Oh, they both fell off. Trelleborg oh, are going to win because of that. Gonna cost them. That would have that still wouldn't have been enough. It would have been eight eighty four no. to eight seventy two. Um, did did so, Trelleborg get a bail tastic earlier on? Is that why they were forty points ahead? That's why they were forty points ahead. They got a bail tastic earlier on. That's whew. why it wouldn't have been enough. Oh my goodness. Oh. Well, that ended up being yeah. a lot closer at the end than I expected. My Insanity had three undelivered. Those two fell off at the end. Right. That would have been 40 points. It still wouldn't have been enough. They would have needed to get those two into the top, and that other one uh, into the bottom yeah. wouldn't have been good enough. All three would have had to go into the top. It was, um, it, was, it, was it was a play-for-play. Play, but it was a play-for-play play setup right up to both of them getting bail tastics at different times. Yeah. Because that is the only reason I can think that Trelleborg were 40 points ahead at one point. With, with you know, no extra bales delivered. <laughs> so that's that's what it is. Both wow. teams got a bale-tastic and we happened to miss one of them. Wow. Well, <laughs> I mean, if you're my insanity and you want to give yourself a chance to make this semifinal today and, and have a chance at climbing the standings. You need to do something different, I think, to try to yeah. disrupt Trelleborg. Credit to them. They played a close game, but trying to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Trelleborg is just, it's not really That's, a good strategy. No. You're, you're betting on Trelleborg making a mistake or you're hoping that the drops and super drops go in your favor. Uh, that's asking a lot. So They've, they've got to they've got to play a disruptive game they're not doing it they're just straight up playing the game i'm not sure not, i mean not... it, it's hard to disrupt trelleborg as well but oh yeah you, you got to do something different right you see some you, my insanity you, you members in the crowd cheering on their teammates you can't play it move for move and they were they were absolutely playing for for move for move move for move so but oh, you yeah, see that I A.B. Got... Schmidt uh, tractor and mower sitting there on the stage? Nice. Oh, I like it's good. Uh... It was. The, that... It looked like it looked like the tractor from the Alpine uh, DLC from FS19. Kurt says he didn't see a Trelleborg fail tasting. I think it may have just. Yeah, it may have just been. I, I can't figure out how. 
Trelleborg were 40 points ahead. They scored, didn't they I, score like, or was that the last round? Was it Vulture that scored a couple with like a multiplier? Or was it this was, one? No, that was, that was Vulture that scored a couple with multiplier. I think there are some female uh, competitors in the FSL, Nakira, but I don't think any of them uh, have in the, made it to like no. the Sunday quarterfinals. I know there's, um, um, oh, why am I drawing a blank on her name right now that plays on Friday nights? Marbear uh, plays scrimmages with the SGA on Friday nights. And then the, I don't remember what team it is, but there's a team that we've seen in the play-ins as yeah. well. I um, we, can't remember we, the name had, of the team. We've had a team with a female player in the finals as well before, I'm pretty sure. Oh, yeah. Maybe not this season. Was that like last season, maybe? That might have been last season, last season but we definitely had. Right. Um, yeah. So there are there are female players in the league. The, the, the thing is, Farm Sim tends to skew yeah. fairly heavily Our male game anyway. is like 95 plus yeah. percent male that play it and i personally want to see it grow more uh with female and and uh be more inclusive across uh every race religion color creed and uh, uh sexual orientation and the like i would like to see it yeah. be more inclusive um, because it is so heavily dominated uh by one particular demographic um but yeah i don't know definitely a chance to get more <laughs> in there they're, they're OP, so they're not allowed. <laughs> if they would outplay all the male players. <laughs> Jan and Wooler have made their picks. They have. Um, I just I was just looking through the revealed brands for FS22. That would suggest uh with the, the brand that is on the stool this uh, uh Hero Fest, that's another brand we previously didn't know about in FS22. What's that? Um, uh, A.B. Schmidt are oh. not listed on the uh, uh, on the uh, Farming Simulator website. Well, but they were in 19, I think, in the Alpine DLC, right? Um, are they? Are they? Yeah, I think so. Okay. Pretty sure. Could be wrong. Yeah, I'm now checking that too. Um... <laughs> And yeah, we're yeah, it was the ABCC sixty six and the ABTT two eighty one were added in the Alpine uh, DLC because they're specifically uh, made for that sort of environment. Oh yeah, yeah. So yeah, there right, comes a. That may not be a reveal for. I'm guessing that's probably <laughs> Jenny in chat saying that one team has a female player. Someone from the FSL team under the Giant Software DE account in chat. Yeah. Thank you for that input. She's not in today, though. Hello, RJ Gaming on YouTube. Hello, everyone on YouTube and Twitch. This is our final quarterfinal matchup of the day. If Trelleborg wins this one, that's it. My insanity's out. My insanity has to win here to force a third round. Uh... They've pretty much tried to go like for like again, haven't they? Uh, they have. I again. I. I don't. My. This is. This tends to be my insanity's mo. To be honest. So, um, neither team has gone for the double ideals, though. It must have been like spawned in a hard to reach location. And this is why you don't go toe to toe, like for like. Ugh. Yeah. Well, that's not a good start. Again. Um, six points behind, and every point counts against Trelleborg. Hey, Nakira, you never know. I mean, we do have um, the Friday night scrimmage streams that I do kind of start to match up with, like, Saturday morning in uh, New Zealand and Australia, so we have yeah. viewers that show up. Yeah, the ping would probably be brutal. Um, but right now, like the North American players are playing on a European server. So, um, you know, you can give it a try during the scrimmages and see how it plays out. 
because there's nothing to lose really. And we would love to have as many more people as possible getting interested in the FSL. And, you know, my goal right now as the community coordinator based out of the office in Chicago is uh, to, to grow it here in North and South America, the Western hemisphere, but I want to see it grow everywhere. Just because I'm out of the office here doesn't mean, you know, I only care about this location. I care about it worldwide. Uh, so the more interest, the better. Yeah, so right now, Average Viking, it is PC only because it requires a dedicated server to run. And I don't have any official information on this, but dedicated servers are coming to console for the first time. Uh, you'll be able to connect to dedicated servers on there. So that does open up the possibility that for next season, it could potentially exist on consoles. I'd it just would be if that DLC comes uh, is made compatible or not. But um, it would also throw in all kinds of other wrinkles because then you've got controller against mouse and keyboard and the like. So um, I, I know of quite a few console players who are excited at the possibility of being able to play it myself yeah same i've had people say the same thing like Um, people have a lot of people have asked me does that mean it's like i don't know for sure yet but it does give you the possibility you know it wasn't possible before it is possible now even if it just means that fsl uh the console players can play fsl with their friends you know it's awesome yeah um but time Um, time will tell we'll we'll see um we'll see whether we uh get fsl in fs22 or whether it continues in fs19 um for the next season right um presumably yeah, there there's is a lot of unknowns season, of right now yeah. there's a lot of unknowns when it comes to the fsl just because the focus is solely on farming simulator 22 from a release standpoint obviously and understandably for myself and my colleagues at giants 22 is the main focus we're seven weeks tomorrow away from the release and so things are starting to having to be you know finalized and being prepared for that um so lots more news still to come as well on 22 but as far as news for the future of fsl that'll come at a later date probably uh, i would imagine after the game's release and after the holiday period We actually had My Insanity slightly quicker delivering their grain there. Hasn't given them any advantage overall, but they were slightly quicker. Uh, Both teams going for this 12-minute grain delivery again. I do not understand it. It it could be so disruptive uh, to see if that eight minute is going to be the grain. Yeah, and he's running for the Vulture right now. Reminder, everyone, there is a giveaway going on today during this uh, Farming Simulator League tournament. It's for a copy of Farming Simulator 22, which we were just talking about. Click on the link, go enter. You don't have to be here at the end of the stream to win. You will be contacted via email if you win. Um, You enter on Gleam, sign up. You can enter multiple ways. Go do it. Real creation going on here for JK. It's like 96% or somewhere around there, Kurt. At least like those are probably old statistics from 19 yeah. now, but it's somewhere around that. I was say, if my, if my viewer base is anything to go by, it's like 98%. Yeah, so uh, thanks for that, uh, Blue and also Felden. There's so many like... Um, like the players have said, yeah, controllers are allowed. And then Klaus, who is like event manager and like the lead of FSL, was like, no, they're not allowed. But in the rules, it does say that you can request it. It doesn't have to be approved. Yeah. Um, of course, if you're playing like Bednar or remotely, there's no way really to enforce it either. So maybe that's why they allowed controllers at this tournament, because there was a couple of teams playing remotely. And so it wouldn't have been fair to force everyone, because uh, there's no way to enforce it on My, those playing remotely. Um um but yeah my, my thing has always been I, d- I actually think it's a disadvantage to be on controller uh i i think the the way the controller setup is uh that you'd you'd actually find it harder to do this as fast as uh, as some of the players do on a controller speed up and direct delivery oh man could that be powerful 
So direct delivery allows you to increase your multiplier as you're harvesting grain. For those of you that don't know what that drop does. Um, Lars looks like he's going to go for speed up, though. Speed up? Why? Now, oh, my lord. But so is Beatmaster. Like, I mean, I guess if Lock. one team had gone for direct delivery, the other one would have, probably. Um, last, last and I were talking about this last time. Why teams don't use direct delivery, I don't understand. Well, and it's been changed recently with the patch, too. Um, so it's even different than it used to be. Like, it used to be that it was 90 seconds with, like, a random increased intake, and now it's fixed at 1.5. Um, but it also, I believe only lasts for 30 seconds now so but just, just think what that what difference that would make at this stage in the game you would increase your multiplier at a time when the other team can't respond yeah. to it but it only lasts it only lasts for 30 seconds instead of 90 but, uh, like it 30 used to seconds is a, so it, it to may be a... 30 seconds though if you're harvesting it maybe gives you 0.1 0 0.2 which still does give you an advantage but it's not really it's not even it's it's less worth getting that now than it used to be. I thought they had patched if, it to make it more viable to grab, but it's actually less viable. But if it, if it take even if it alters the uh, multiplier to the point where it's two point one versus one point nine, we know that's a huge advantage. Yeah, you're you're not wrong, but I also think that handicapping the uh, the drop and making it less uh, desirable. Hasn't certainly in, oh, enticed any teams yeah. to go for it more. No, Troy. I, yeah, I, I see what you're saying from that point of view. Right. But like it's, it, it's even less important than it used to be. 30 seconds, and you also have to be like harvesting. And it, like my insanity currently doesn't have anyone harvesting. Neither does Trelleborg. So, yeah. That's part but you'd of it. Only have to harvest, you'd only have to harvest for 30 seconds, and then you'd not be worrying about. Um, you know, having to deliver that grain. You'd be creating more straw at the same time. Right. So, therefore, more bales can be created. It just, yeah. I'm just not even sure, like, if you could, you could probably barely get it, because it goes really slowly. You can probably barely get it to 2.1 with 30 seconds. Um, so, it's tough. Yeah, oh, uh, absolutely. But you, if you get it to 2.1, that is disruptive. Right. And this, this is what I'm getting at, is the fact that both teams picking speed up uh, does not disrupt each other. No. Nope. At all. And therefore, it's not a winning strategy. I, and, yeah. To, to, to I, just, I, my, I guess my argument, disrupt. I guess, is that neither team was really wanting to harvest anymore at that point they're bringing bales in no. and scoring them so is it worth getting one extra point per bale when you can just start bringing them in probably not yes because every well it's it's two extra points and every tenth bale you've scored uh, an extra bales worth of points <laughs> which considering the number of bales they're bringing in at this point that's an extra two or three bales worth of points by the end of this. But you then don't have to bail those bales to win. Lord Baylor is the super drop. Both teams getting uh, possibly two extra bales. Yeah, how many bales we got on this? We've got uh, two, four, six, eight, ten. Yeah, so off off this trailer, a 2.1 would give you one and a half extra bales that you didn't have to bring back. Which is the same as the Lord Baylor. Oh, man. 384 to 340, 320 to go. Yeah, I'm not interested in going for Lord Baylor there. I think this is why, in the past, Vultra has won against Trelleborg. No, that Kurt, that's just from market research. That's how we determine this. Like, we had those surveys recently and ask people um, different, like, you know, stores can track that, like Steam and the like. 
as well. Uh, but yeah, we, we do our own market research when it comes to like our demographics and things like that, because of course, from a business standpoint, it's important for us to understand who our main audience is and also how we can improve in areas that maybe we aren't reaching as well. Two and a half to go, Trelleborg four point lead at the moment over My Insanity. My Insanity has to win this one or they're going out here in the quarterfinals and they won't be moving up in the standings into the top four. Do they have head height control? Lunatic asks on YouTube. They could impact harvester speed. No, it doesn't really affect that. Like obviously if you lift the header, you can drive faster to get yourself back in position. But um, other than that, nothing really affects it unless it's like a drop or a super drop. Lars about to unload eight bales off of the Anderson loader. PB bringing only just one in on the front of the John Deere, but he's going to get ready to start stacking the rest. My insanity in the lead by 16 points at the moment. Even on bales, and Trelleborg has gone back into the lead by four now. Um, so the problem now for my insanity is that they're basically matching Trelleborg one to one on bales. Mm -hmm. And that's not going to do it. Nope. Um, so, you know, Alex does have a point. If they would have gone for direct delivery, that may have given them a chance. Hello, Steve. How you doing, buddy? Hey, Steve. 744 to 700 that's, for Trelleborg. Uh... And 10 bales to nine eight to seven now seven. yeah it's just it's just this is just a case of the, the clock ticking down now unless a big mistake is made by trelleborg this is this is going their way yeah and just like that they good. just keep piling the points on and you know my sanity played really well they didn't really have any mistakes they played a pretty solid game but again Trying to match up with Trelleborg is just, it's a tough ask, and they're going to have to put uh, the and rest of these into the bottom the now. Bottom now. No, that's pretty much that's... just conceding defeat and trying to up your yeah. score as high as possible at that point. Well. Um, and that's going to do it. Trelleborg moving on to the semifinal, and My yeah. Insanity, great showing. Uh, and they're even clapping their uh, opponents there, yeah. so love to see the sportsmanship. I mean, Trelleborg or Trelleborg, right? Uh, they're they're a tough team to beat. Oh, yeah. My insanity gave it their best, but uh, yeah, trying to match them like for like didn't pay off. Um, my insanity, right. I think, will stay in fifth. Luckily, Chrono went out, so they can't really be jumped by anyone. Um, so my insanity will be fifth next month uh, in the uh, grand finals. So uh, they'll they'll potentially be drawn. They could be drawn with one of oh, these yes. top four teams. Um, so they could st they could have to face Trelleborg in the group stages, uh, which is probably not something that you want, but uh, anything can happen in the grand finals we next month. Good matchup with those two. And uh, that's our last quarterfinal if, of the day. If they're going to get anywhere in the grand finals, they are going to have to to change the way they play a bit, though, because they are... They cannot just like for like play against no, that. No, definitely it's, not. It is, it's not going to get them to the point they need to be. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. I love this about the Farming Simulator League, though. Is like, yeah, the teams get competitive. They oh. want to beat each other and they want to win. Sense. But after the games are over, the sportsmanship comes out. Uh, everyone's friendly and cordial. And it doesn't... I, Farming Simulator as a game in general doesn't lend to toxicity, but even this, when you no. bring competition into the fact, it seems like all the players, you know, genuinely like each other and like being around each other, and uh, it's it's just good to see. And then, they they scrim together, they practice together all the time. Right. You know, these yeah. these teams. Part of the reason why there are some very similar tact is because they play each other all the time. All right, so, so we've got a break coming up. We've got Bednar against Pertinger in the first semifinal, and we've got Valtra against Trelleborg. One of the top two teams will make the final today. One of them will not. 
Uh, and for Bednar and Pertinger, a really good opportunity. Yeah. One of them is making the final for the first time. Yeah. Uh, they've made the semifinal for the first time and now a chance for the final. And with that, we'll take a break. Alex and I will be right back in just a moment. Welcome back, everybody, to the fifth and uh, final FSL tournament of season three. We have the grand finals next month, and this today is going to decide where uh, the team's finally placed for that. I am here with Terminator Live. Hello. Hey, Kermit. Hello. Um, I'm over here having a <laughs> protein bar. <laughs> what is going on here? Like, oh, uh, no, uh, Noah, uh, a.k.a. Helper B, is trying to time. keep Vulture and Trelleborg from fighting, apparently. <laughs> from fighting each other. <laughs> how, how strong is Noah to keep Hightower back is what I want to know. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh, yeah, it's, oh, man. it's been a fun time. I mean, good quarterfinals. I feel like every single one. I think... Um, the the biggest surprise was all the way going back to the first quarter. Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh. <laughs> all right, I, I, well, I, 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 yeah, I love. Teams the, having a little yeah. fun there. <laughs> but Bednar beating Corona the in the first quarterfinal, like that was probably the biggest surprise of these uh, results. Vulture and Trelleborg advancing, no big surprise. Uh, Pertinger versus Manitou was kind of anyone's guess, um, but. Bednar knocking off Krona. Definitely a, uh, a surprise as Krona were six coming into this. Bednar 10th. Uh, Bednar had not made it to a semifinal before. And now they're in the semifinal and they have a chance to make a final. And it's, yeah, it's going to be... I, I cannot I cannot choose between these two teams at the moment. Both Bednar and, and, and Prodigan have, um, uh, have impressed me today. Um, but first, we're going to go and have a replay of the last match. And yeah, this is um, this is my insanity. <laughs> bail for Bale playing against Trelleborg. In the this is these game. two falling off too, I think, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And Neither of them making no. it. <laughs> Wouldn't and have made a difference. Yeah. But... Wouldn't have made a difference. Would have been 40 extra points, which would have still been, uh, well, would have been yeah. 10 points uh, shy. So, yeah. 
and uh, and then a little bit of a crash in the second game. But yeah, no real no real mistakes in in any of those games that cost them the game. And yeah, uh, that's the thing. It was going straight play for play against Trelleborg. You will lose every single time. You will lose because Trelleborg do not make mistakes. Not yeah, like I think that. the entire time I've been around the FSL, I saw Trelleborg make one mistake, and that was just uh, going airborne across the bridge, and the entire tractor and um, Baylor both flipped over. Um, they lost that round, but it was still yeah. close, and then they ended up winning the best of three anyways. Um, you- but, yeah, I mean, you got you to gotta do something different you gotta as hard as it sounds it's easier to say it but you gotta find a way to to get under trelleborg skin a little bit and disrupt them and and what they do i've seen teams do it i've seen teams beat trelleborg by effectively disrupting them the the trouble you have is that you've got to disrupt them a different way the next game and here we go Pony coming out on stage of course, Bednar. won the first round match against Manitou. Bednar not there in person because of travel restrictions. They're in, they're a team yeah. from the Czech Republic. So uh, we had a lot of their fans in here for the first round, but uh, they seem to have all disappeared since then. Bednar fans, <laughs> where'd you go? This is the biggest game that Bednar has ever been in. As you see, the chairs are say, empty because they not can't planning, be there in person. Not planning to make it. Uh, <laughs> Obviously not expecting them to make it through to the quarterfinals. But they were here to witness <laughs> it, just, and then they disappeared. Where'd they, they go? Went. They've gone. <laughs> uh, it's not, I mean, it's, you know, it's not like it's uh, 6 a.m. in the Czech Republic like it is for me right now, and they need to go to oh, bed man. or something. <laughs> hey, oh. man, how you doing? Good to see you. Good to see everyone else, too, both on uh, YouTube and Twitch. We're on uh, YouTube over at FSL Esports and right here on Giant Software. We also have the German language stream and the guys that are there in person on Giant Software DE channel on Twitch. Hello, YouTube people. Bednar versus Pertinger, a huge opportunity here, Alex, for one of these teams to make a final. And I mean, you don't like their chances against the likes of Trelleborg and Valtra. But getting to a final gives you a chance to win it. And it's also just a huge boost in points, especially if you're looking at um, Bednar. They now have 180 points. They've moved into ninth place. They've jumped over LSA. um, And that's about as far as they're going to be able to go, regardless of what they pull off. Um, Uh... And then Pertinger... 90 points. Well, they, they, need, they need another 40 points to get past John Deere. Right, but 90 is the most you can get, right? In uh, one, oh, one right. Tournament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, so it's yeah. not quite enough, I don't think. Not quite enough. But for Pertinger, they're like in 15th place. Well, they were coming into today, um, and now they've gotten themselves to 90 points. So there's sole possession of 12th. If they advance here they would jump Astragon and go into 11th. Um, so, I mean, it's just, it's, you're playing for places right now. And this is going to be nice to see because we're going to see our first game where teams have not picked the same oh, team, Perk. We have Bednar going with Transport oh, yeah. Company and Pertinger going with Herbicide. And that, that in itself is disruptive. Yeah, and it's going gonna, it's gonna to come <laughs> down to... I think we'll win this one? <laughs> yeah. I have no Oh, there's the Bednar fans back now. There they are. Three fifteen in Lithuania. Is that where you're from, Taz? I, I, I don't know why I thought I thought Taz was in the UK. I have no idea why I thought. I that. thought Taz was from South Africa. If I'm, to, uh. if I'm honest, but <laughs> I don't know where I got that from either. <laughs> So it's Weird. good to finally know for sure. We've put yeah. him all over the map. Uh. <laughs> FSL next year in Australia, that would be awesome. And so, all right, so uh, similar choices. Similar equipment, uh, one tractor equipment. different. 
big tractor, Vulture versus the Deutschvar. Archimedes and under pressure. Both Not really any other perks get picked. Yeah, I honestly, listen, I don't pick favorites as far as teams go, but it would be huge in my eyes for the Farming Simulator League if Herbicide can knock off Transport Company. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, that, that would be massive. Because Transport Company has just shown time and time again to be really the dominant team perk to go with. But we've seen uh, Pertinger played Manitou earlier in the quarterfinal. Both of them used Herbicide against each other, and now Pertinger is sticking with it. Uh, Taz, that is a um, Maze Plus requirement for uh, pigs and uh, requiring potatoes or sugar beet. All right, so Stouty here for Pertinger following Maxinator for the first bail. Vintel with the fence and the case Puma with the care wheels. Both and teams, I believe, should be on their way. Look pretty darn close. Like, look at that. Neck and neck oh, the wow. moment on the silhouette. Neck and neck. Bednar slightly in the lead. I'm reckoning uh, about a 124, maybe this a 120 off this. Is going to come down to the best delivery. Are they going to try the drive-by? No. no. Ooh, and uh, actually, oh. Herdinger have gotten stuck, but also Bednar have missed the bail. Oh, Pertinger are really stuck. A 108. Uh, 108 for Bednar. And Pertinger doing a... Not even have it unloaded. Um, I'll tell you what, for both 90, of these teams... Oh, no, 100. If you get your mistakes out now, and if you can somehow still beat this team and make it to the final, get your mistakes out now, because if you were to do that against Vulture or Trelleborg, you're likely going to start yourself off by being 20 points or more behind... And straight back in, picking up that initial <laughs> Taz, I don't know, man. Maybe I can get <laughs> you confused with someone else that's from South Africa, but... Hey, or someone said that at some point. On. Maybe I should have asked, actually asked you, you know? <laughs> yeah, that, that would be wise. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Uh, I played with Maze Plus too long, yeah. Twenty seconds away from the twelfth minute drops, which aren't usually that sought after or useful. I would like to see the the twelve. You know what? How to solve? You know a way we could solve the twelve minute drops not being, uh, um, you know, enticing enough. Why don't we do a twelve minute and a fourth minute super drop? <laughs> oh wow! Could, a that twelve would minute super drop. Yeah, let's make it interesting from the get go. It's just so. Like direct delivery and speed limit at this point of the game. I mean, the problem is is that if one team goes for direct delivery here, the other team probably does. Um, and then... Hyper and Ventil there, we see a shot of unloading the ideal into the grain cart. The 108 and 100 first bail, the two lowest first bails we've seen today, I think. I wish, Richard, but no, I don't think the, the uh, blimp or the airship has its own camera. That would be you it'd be hard to see anything though, I'd imagine. Yeah. It's it's fairly high up though. I like the Bednar emotes as well. In chat. Kinda of wondering what channel those are off. <laughs> oh, it's uh one of the players. Oh it's uh shows his sh yeah. I think it's Jose or something Jose. like that. Uh so definitely uh, Donner Kyle told me how to say it, but I can't remember now. Because there's also a player that goes by that. Um, or actually, maybe it is just from Team Bednar. They're also an ambassador. 
uh, their fellow ambassador, Virtual oh, Farmer. Fellow ambassador, yeah. I do try to get, I, I, yeah, I do try to interact with my fellow ambassadors as much as I can. <laughs> well, yeah, understandable though um, um, that he's a Czech-speaking ambassador, although he probably does speak yeah. some English. Yeah, kicking NZ. FS has <laughs> a tournament. Yeah, it is this awesome. Is, Welcome along. This is along. season three, and uh, we're what ten of eleven. <laughs> competitions in this is the last regular season tournament next month will be the grand finals for the top 16 teams in the circuit overall circuit standings um, and these two teams here could really use uh, advancing to the final and climbing up as many positions as possible if you're oh, new to the FSL you want to understand how it works a bit there's a tutorial video out there you can also get a lot of information on the website you can join us for the open lobby scrimmage streams Wednesdays on the German Giant Software DE channel on Twitch. Um, Fridays hosted by myself, Kerminator, on uh, this channel right here. Those are like at 7 p.m. Eastern time because it's more like a North American evening time. Mike doing something odd there, running around the uh, running around the field without M without harvesting is he taking that is he full and taking that up to the uh yep i think both are full and taking that from top interesting i guess just putting more straw down there for bale purposes because it definitely was full it wasn't gathering any more grain so kickin says i've only just gotten into farm sim on xbox been doing loads of contracts it's fun awesome yeah, yeah and tw 22 is going to be even better for him sim for consoles like 19 has been amazing but oh. now with cross-platform oh. that opens up so much I am, more i am so looking forward to having a cross-play server i bet i mean it seems like uh, the times i've spent in your channel there's quite a few people who uh have said i'd love to play with you vf but i'm on console oh. and the like and so you won't I mean, there's still going to be some yeah. challenges, right, that you have to sort out, like mod selection mainly. Um, oh, yeah. But, but at least I'd... the possibility is there now, right? And I've been trying Going to encourage people it, that you could do it. both still, you know, do a do a console compatible server, do a playthrough that, you know, is more like PC only mods if you want. It's not like you have to do one thing. And you're kind of the king True. of that, Alex. You do several things in like one week. You're on like <laughs> different maps, different I, challenges. I'm, 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 I'm quite happy just to run a, a cross-play server to be honest i you know i don't think there's anything the, one of the great things about fs22 i've seen so far is most of the stuff that previously i would have uh you know i would have hated to have that oh i hated to miss because they they were mods that were pc only are base game features in fs22 right, true which is awesome because well, they I also feel like are available to console players i also feel like um I know I've talked to some modders from the community and they're having to kind of rethink their strategies too now because it almost seems like it might be a good idea for modders to consider making their mods console and PC compatible so that uh, they're a little bit more uh, sought after, if that makes sense. Because mm. um, if you can make those mods that everyone can use then that's what a lot of people, people at least that want to do crossplay, they're going to have to be looking for those. So there's even more value on that now. And it was great to and see, I, like, 19 was huge for console mods. I mean, there's there's still more on PC, yeah, due to limitations on 19, but console mods made a huge leap forward uh, in the sheer amount of them that are available for 19. And I, and I think uh, what, I'd, what I'd love to see is... Um, more maps from uh more innovative ways of using base game stuff in maps like uh alien jim does for for his stuff you know where his stuff does stuff that that doesn't appear to be base game but because it uses base game features is available on console right yeah and, alien jim's uh, definitely a good modder i've used a lot of his stuff before but I, I, I think that uh, the production chains are going to open up a lot of that kind of thing oh, definitely. coming into FS22. Definitely. And I um, cannot wait to see what the what modders especially do. Especially being base game, like I know um, Dashnet, yeah. for example, 
who is the oh. leader of the SGA team. He does, you know, the PV Uncharted, PV County and the like. And he's having to rethink kind of how he does things. And he's excited to see production change in the base I, game. Because, I cannot wait to see what he does in, in Right, FS22. because it, it, it removes like a little bit of work for him and then he can focus on just taking that and expanding on it instead of having to do the whole thing from the ground up. So but for, he's like, for, his wheels are spinning. I'm loving seeing all the modders oh. like just their wheels are spinning now and they they don't know 100% what's going to be possible, but they have kind of a general idea. As we see, Maxinator is going to lose one off the belt there. Oh, that's not good. Uh, but because uh, one of the other nice things is that rocks are a, are a, are a base game fill type. So right. if you want to do, if you want to create a quarry map, you have rocks as a base game fill type, and you have productions. <laughs> that's yeah. that's a hell of a starting point. So uh, Steve says, I only do console mods. The love from console players is huge, and I thank them so much. And yeah, we've seen yeah. a conscious effort from people like you, Steve. Um, in 19, especially, like console mods are becoming more important. Um, you know, compared to PC, uh, if you combine PlayStation and Xbox, which I think you definitely have to do now with cross-platform, it's 51% console players mm -hmm. to 49 on PC for our game. So the console does have a slight majority. So there's a lot of farm sim players out there. Um, it does it does vary a little bit over the life of the game because I think earlier on it was more like 60, uh, like two thirds console to one third PC. And then at one point it sort of evened up to halfway again. And it's right. And I think with the recent um, coming of FS19 to um, uh, Xbox Game Pass, I think it is. Um, you know, it's now shifted back the other way a little bit, and yeah, so it does it does vary quite a bit. But I'm I'm excited to be able, I mean, my own stuff to be able to include console players more because I think I think it's it's one to me it's not console players versus PC players. No, it's one big farm sim community, and the I agree. more well, inclusive and... I can be in that, the better. Yeah, and that's smart from your perspective. As Bednar have scored their first points since the first bail points uh, in like the third minute, so uh, wow. they've got some making up to do here compared to Pertinger. This is this is interesting. This is Pottinger going nicely ahead with Herbicide, although they are uh, they have got a disadvantage on Multiplier. Four twenty four to three oh seven. Yeah, and they have uh twelve more bales outstanding, so they can make this difference up. They're already they closing oh. the gap a bit. Is it is it enough? I'm not sh oh, we've got two minutes left on the clock. There well is still and uh, time. thirteen uh extra points for each of the bales extra that they have outstanding. I think what's going to cost Pottinger is going to be that multiplier. And I am slightly surprised that they have this, this deficiency in the multiplier. 519, oh. 496. This is painful. This is, this, for Pottinger, this is painful because. 517 to 519. A minute and a half. This is the point at which it switches. 538 to 517. More but there's bales only, there's what, in. one bale? They, like, oh, Pertinger have two no. bales. Yeah, so even if they put those in the bottom, that's enough for Bednar. That's enough. There's, and they've got a minute they've to get They've got plenty of time to get them on the top, that's... though. Uh, and Steve, you're right. Yeah, there's no pressure, and and that's a good thing right no. now because it's getting harder to. I mean, it's hard to find a new gen console, yeah, but it's also hard to find um, graphics cards and the like, and it's getting more expensive right now to build a PC. And you know, the reason that consoles usually um, are more utilized by gamers compared to a PC is just the barrier of entry is a lot smaller, and a lot of people don't want to deal with the technical aspects of having a PC and would rather just have like a plug and play system to go. So you, there's definitely benefits to it. And with dedicated servers being able to be rented for uh, console players now, it just opens up a whole other world of possibilities because that was definitely one thing holding it back. And it's impressive, I think. Yeah, I'm a giant software employee, so 
call me biased if you want, but not a lot of games out there have cross-platform multiplayer. Um, oh, I'm... I, what, so one it's of the things quite I've, I've love about Farm Sim is the fact that it, it has always, um, especially more in recent years, catered for consoles more. Three, uh, sorry, 831. That wasn't to, even close uh, in the end. No, it wasn't. It wasn't I mean, that, that it looks close with three minutes to go. The slow march of Bednar there. At first, I questioned um, that Bednar had not scored any bails until like under three minutes to go. They started to bring them in, but it was because they just stayed out there and pressed a bunch. They just had a whole lot more bails yeah. than Perdinger at the end, and that made the difference. I mean, five extra bails plus they were getting uh, two extra points per bail that they were putting in there at the end. So add that in, and that makes up that huge gap. So Pertinger, you can see him now. They're trying to figure out what to do in this second round. They've got to react, um, or they're headed out in the semifinal here. As you see, the Bednar fans in chat again, cheering them on. Just, yeah. Glad to have you all here. Check flag. And there we go. Bednar, one game up. Can they take this to the second game? Or are Pertinger going to come back? And, yeah, and the uh, prize for the winner of this one is you get to play one of Trelleborg or Valtra in the <laughs> final. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, but making the final would be huge for both of these oh. teams. It means places. Yeah. It means prize money. It means momentum, it means really, chat. too, going into the... Going into the grand finals, too, you have that confidence of knowing, hey, we made the final last month. Uh, let's carry that momentum maybe into the grand finals and see what we can do. Um, but, yeah, so Pertinger have to react here, or it's going to be Bednar, um, who are playing from home. That's why those chairs on the far side are empty at the moment. They're not allowed to travel into Switzerland from the Trek from the Czech Republic, so they are playing remotely, the only team here uh, in the quarterfinals and beyond that uh, are playing remotely. Uh, lots, lots of support for Bednar in the chat. Uh, yeah, I like seeing, seeing it, you know, because... It's good. Yeah, it's, because it's usually, nice. usually you're seeing, um, like, Trelleborg or uh, Valtra fans in here. Um, but it's nice to see the Bednar fans coming out. Uh, and they're coming out in force. And that's probably uh, down to uh, the farm sim ambassador and uh, player yes. for the team, you know, just driving that interest. We're just about so, uh, ready to get back underway for the two of the best of three. So, are you going to need to win this one or they are out? Lots of arm crossing. <laughs> Definitely. That's kind I of kind a standard of pose. If we'll see it? next year more teams adopting the um the Herman approach. Uh, the Herman approach, yeah. <laughs> I'd like to see it. Oh, the Massey Ferguson has been uh, banned. Bye-bye, Massey. Um, what is putting it banning? Kurt, hopefully we'll have uh, more news on the AI helper thing that you've seen in screenshots in the past that's been teased oh. a little bit. You can't. There are, oh, probably there are because a we've gone like there's, to there's lurking. A few things, there's a few things in FS22 I'm eagerly awaiting news on. One, one is the helper. Um, another is a little bit more information on the, um, uh, on the placeable system and how it relates to buying and selling of land. I'm kind of hoping that you can sell land with placeables on it. Gotcha. Um, uh, and the third one is uh, how the animal husbandry work, because we haven't heard anything about the animals yet. Um, and I want, to, I want to learn more about how the animals work in FS20. So Pertinger yeah. have banned the ideal, but then didn't ban something that they could have banned for free. So they banned a one-pointer, but didn't ban anything the, else. It's interesting. Um, yeah. Herbicide against transport company again. Um, of course, Bednar proved that transport company reigns supreme in that first <laughs> round, at least. Let's see what happens this time around. Pertinger have uh, reserved a bailer, so that uh, maybe is factoring into their strategy. 
Yeah, send send that over to me, Richard. I will. Uh, I'll put it in the amb- I'll put it as a question in the ambassadors chat. In the ambassadors. A new brand announced in February, but no word on their equipment and farming simulator since. Interesting. So, someone did mention it in my um, in my chat last night, but couldn't tell me exactly what the brand was. So, uh, only one player perk for Perdinger. Under Ooh. pressure for I, I, Stouty. Why are they saving or attempting to save so many points? Well, they've spent a point on the ideal, on the harvest, so that's taken yeah. away the chance that they can get Archimedes. They've banned the ideal yeah. for whatever reason. Um, I don't know, but it's an interesting one for sure. <laughs> Everybody in chat going, animals, need more information on animals. <laughs> mm. Yeah, you notice I didn't respond to yeah, that. I was yeah, he, can't, that he can't say anything. I can speculate all I like. He can't say speculate anything. Speculate all you want. What's your speculation? Uh, I want to know your... Uh, what are you, you going to speculate? Yeah. Well, it's, I, I, I'm speculating. My, my speculation for animals in FS22 is that we might be getting something along the lines of seasons in 19. So, so while we still get cows and chickens and sheep and pigs, we'll get different breeds with different stats. Um, that is okay. what I'd like to see. I think that would be great. Well, I think there has been like some footage shown or some screenshots shown of um, cows that don't all look the same. Oh, yeah. So, yeah. Which, um, which is normal for farms. And we, we have cows right. that don't look the same at the moment. It's whether that actually mean something or whether it's just uh, <laughs> yeah uh kurt you, you can know. nag me all you want that's that's your choice <laughs> doesn't mean i'll respond <laughs> 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 but feel free to nag me all you want Ooh, nice 132 oh, by 132 Bednar. from bed is that the highest the we've seen deal. today i feel like we saw uh, 130 yeah, i don't think we've seen anything about the highest them. we've seen today yeah Oh, Steve can't farming. say my ideas here. Taz might pinch them. <laughs> 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 oh, I love it. Yeah, this is a massive advantage for Bednar as and Pertinger wow. is not starting the round off well when they need to win here. I am really impressed by Bednar today. I mean, I'm just, I'm kind of blown away. They came in to today in 10th place. I think they had only, what, they've had four quarterfinal finishes. They've made it to the quarterfinals four times. Today was their fifth time making it there. They've made the semifinal for the first time. They put themselves in a great position to make their first ever final as well. Um, but not only, like, they, they really surprised me against Krona. Um, and now against Pertinger, you would expect them to win more so than we did against Krona. But it'll be interesting to see if they can advance, Bednar, how they do against the likes of the top two, Prelleborg or Vulture, whoever wins the next uh, semifinal. That'll be their opponent. Wow. Okay. So, yeah, I found, uh, I found the information that, that Richard was talking about. Uh, PEI farm equipment were announced to be appearing in Farming Simulator way back as far as April last year. You say PEI? Three... PEI, yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'll I don't put, know I'll on put that the one, link but in I can the, ask um, around. In the ambassador's stuff later. Um, but it's all the screenshots are FS19, obviously, because <laughs> it's April last year. Oh, no, March last year, sorry. Uh, interesting. Kangaroos, says Nakira. Goats. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh... Oats would be cool. 
Uh, right, Hyper and Rental here, emptying and how full is... Oh yeah, we're at the 11 minute mark. What did we have as the drops? I uh, don't think either team got them, did they? No. No, I, I, I was too worried about uh, EEI equipment. <laughs> <laughs> giving stuff away that you shouldn't do. Uh, but no, I, I have no idea on that one. And uh, someone said, give us your best guess in chat, Nikira said. <laughs> nice try. Uh, I like... I like you guys, but I, I, I'd like to keep my job more than I like yeah, you guys. Yeah. So I, 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 I'm well aware that ask, uh, <laughs> straight up asking is not something I'm going to do in this, uh, in this stream because I know you can't give me an answer either way. <laughs> I've been a lot. I've been around here long enough. <laughs> well, I mean, so tomorrow is seven weeks away, right? We're we're pretty close yeah. to um, like certifying the game, so you guys don't have much longer to wait before you know. I won't say everything, but just about everything. There's still a few things that we need to announce, but here before too long, I'll be cleared to start streaming it as well, uh, right here on our Twitch channel. Um, and then, of course, people like Virtual Farmer, other ambassadors, partners, influencers are going to get some early access by a week or two that hasn't really been decided yet um but they'll be streaming it as well before release date so um you'll start to be able to have some of those kind of questions answered if you're still on the fence about whether you want to pre-order it or not um then you know there's going to be more information there'll be some streams coming uh youtube content as well um so yeah still more to come but we're only seven weeks from tomorrow away from release so uh yeah. it's getting down to the wire now Oh, so close. So near. All right. 132 to 103. Just the first bail points at this point. 50-ish seconds away from the eighth minute drops. It hurts um, my soul to see them destroying crops driving on them. Well, yep. But speed is key yeah. in the FSL, more than anything. Realism is not a thing in the FSL. <laughs> yeah. Well, except crop destruction is forced except, on. Except crop, so yeah, that's uh, about as realistic as it uh, gets, though. <laughs> yeah. As Stouty got stuck in the tree there not briefly. So much. <laughs> uh, Kurt, Kurt, that has not been... Uh, Denied or confirmed. <laughs> Otherwise, trust me, I'd have picked up on it by now. <laughs> uh, right. Grain Multiplier Ooh. makes an appearance at the eight minute mark. Bale Multiplier. Bednar have 10 bales pressed right now. Whether or not they're ready to deliver them is a different and story. Who is, are they going? Are they they're going for the great? They must be going for the great multiplier. Let's see. Wait, he's waiting on the other team. I guess this is valuable time yeah. wasted that you could be driving uh, over and emptying this out. Yeah. So Bednar not hanging up. Bednar, Bednar already grabbed it, and then he was still sitting there. Yeah, come on, Pertinger. <laughs> a chance to the to play in the finals at stake here. This is the wrong time to be making these errors. There we go, both teams juking it out now. Where is this going to end up? Bednar yeah. in the better position. Oh, Bednar in the so much better position right now. No, it unlocks it. Uh, so it depends on platform, but it unlocks basically a like midnight CEST on yeah, like... So most platforms, I, I, but it also it still depends on what platform you're getting it on too, because each gaming, store is different. Uh, gaming FFC, I've I uh, I'll, I'll hold my hands up. I've said that uh, specifically I in the past. You are. You're it getting unlocks, it a, Well, it unlocks can, at 11 p.m. on the 21st. Yeah, in so the technically, UK on the Giants website. Yeah. <laughs> so I guess technically you can get it on the 21st by like an hour. Yeah. <laughs> But it's it's an hour before midnight. Um, I could get it so on the twenty first with eight hours still it, left in the day, so I'm alright. If you're with on that. the UK and you want to be playing it at eleven PM on the twenty first, order it uh, directly from the Giants website. I like that I just acted like I didn't have it already. 
there or <laughs> that I was going to have to buy it. <laughs> yeah, I can't <laughs> wait for it to unlock for me at 4 p.m. Mountain time on the 21st. <laughs> oh. Oh. Yeah, so it just I depends on the platform, too. I trust the knee. Yeah, it's it's midnight Central European time. It unlocks. Yeah, and that's like the Giants eShop version. Like all the other yeah. platforms have their own like time frames that they release stuff at, yeah. and unlock it at. I have so. a, I have a feeling that FS19 might have also unlocked at at, at midnight uh, Central European time, possibly. But you're probably I, correct. I, I would have count to... on it. I do have to say, like, I know a lot of you on PC, myself in the past included, uh, prefer to get the game on Steam because of the auto-updates, but if you've missed it, the Giants eShop version this year has an auto-updater. Update. Um, yeah. So the, that whole issue of, like, having to go hunt down your uh, key and re-download the entire thing for an update is a, a thing of the past. You'll be able to download the updates as they come every time you go to uh, launch the game. If there's an update, it'll uh, open the auto updater first, and uh, you'll have the option to either um, start the game or download that update, and then you can be right back in it again with the, little uh, fuss. Yep. So it's a little bit more viable now to get the, the giant other thing that's really version. cool is if you get something like the collector's edition, that is a disc version. That code that comes with that disc version will work to download a copy from the giant's website as well. Right. So yeah, if you're like me and you're getting the collector's edition and you don't have a CD drive in your PC anymore, <laughs> or a DVD drive in your PC anymore, don't worry, you can download a copy from the website and still have your shining beacon in the background. <laughs> All right, super drops out there. What's it? What is it? Let's see it. Well, it's Lord, Lord Baylor. Baylor, two bales. Uh, I would guess it's two bales for Bednar and one bale for Podinger. Um, Podinga actually playing a blinder here. Uh, yeah, oh, I, mean, I can see why. I honestly They've missed got a them getting the grain. Three yeah. times multiplier. They have the grain Jeez. in their favor, and so that the first bail they kind of lacked on. They made a few other mistakes, but they're looking okay. That's, but last time, that... look at the difference in bales though: twenty-five to four. Even with that point difference, with that amount yeah. of bail difference. And that was the problem last game. Pertinger just didn't have enough bales to match Bednar. At least the the multipliers in their favor this time. This is this one will be interesting. I think this will be closer than last time. Three fifty three to four oh two with three minutes to go. Now, uh, Pertinger need need to be very careful here. There's a good chance a bail combo could come up while they only have a single bail kicking around. But looks like they're avoiding it. There we go. 448 to 421. 448 to 455. Bednar 455. into the lead now. Now this is where Bednar have the advantage with the transport company. They can just bring in a massive amount of bales at once. Right. Whereas um, Prodigat is having to have those two balers out there all the time, running bales back to try and keep up. And you're going to see a large number of bales in the last minute or so come back for Bednar. So they'll suddenly score a huge amount of points. And to me, that's not good for Prodigat. That really isn't. Yeah. Uh, and Richard, here it, it comes. It checks each time you load. Um, but if there's an update, then it'll launch the auto updater. If there's not an update, it just auto launches the game, basically. That's how it's working at, at this point with the version I have. So I assume that the final version will be the same. Uh, could end up changing, but I don't see why it would. But that's how it's working at the moment. If you launch it and there's not an update, it launches the game. If you launch it, there is an update. It tells you there's an update and asks you if you want to install it. You can also choose to just launch the game and not update if you just want to jump right in for whatever reason. Or you don't want to update to that version for a certain reason. 
All right, one minute to go. What do you think, Alex? Not that I want you to jinx either team, but let me look at this now, Bednar. Just I, at the Bednar bales. just the even with the multiplier Bednar difference. To bring bales in is just yeah. yeah. It's you this, can this Steve. Is, you can back the uh, Anderson loader up to the. Uh, oh, you said Baylor though. You can't back the yeah. Baylor up, but if you have easy stack, you, you can unload you the Anderson loader can? directly under the belt. But, well, you can, but you can't have a full set of bales in it. Oh, there's a counter by Perdinger, which helps, but it's not going to oh. be enough, I don't think. That's 30 bonus points for the counter. Um, but just the bale difference right now. They just right don't now. have the bales. Yeah, yeah they and just don't have the bales. And they've got to get them onto the belt, too. And meanwhile, oh, that one's falling. Up. That one's going to fall off, probably, from off. Bednar. 682. 80 seconds left. 20 oh, point this is difference. actually closer than it should be. It's going to come down to the first bail points, I think, more than anything. Um, because that was a massive gap in first bail points. And Pertinger have had two bails oh. fall off, so that doesn't oh. help. And it's, yeah, and no, it's gone Bednar into Bednar. the final. Wow. Yep, Continental Tires are in Farm Sim 22. Richard, you are correct. Yep. All right. Which is great. Wow, 39 to 24. Wow. I mean, yeah, Pertinger had a 2.3 to 1.7 multiplier advantage, but you got to have the bales, five too. five undelivered bales. Oof. Had they got those five undelivered bales in, they would have, um, they would have made it. They would have beaten them. I just, I'm That's afraid. That's 100 points. I'm afraid that that just... That might be the death keel for herbicide. Uh, yeah. <laughs> right there, especially with the grand finals next month. Um, that is pretty much just proof that in a like for like against evenly matched teams, as far as skill level goes, that yeah. herbicide just struggles to, to match up with transport company because it did come down to not the multiplier, but it came down to the yeah. ease of delivering a lot of bales at one time was, yeah. for Bednar. Because to, so. to lose it when you have a 2.3 multiplier like that, that has, that that's a problem with, with the, right. the tactic itself. Right. We've got Trelleborg versus Paltra in the oh. other semifinal coming up. They will, uh, the winner of that one will face off against Bednar in the final. Uh, Trelleborg, number one in the overall standings, Valtra, number two. And those teams are going to stay there for next month's uh, grand finals. So really it's just about... Uh, bragging rights and prize money and the like here between these two. Uh, but Alex, we've got a break coming up. So uh, we'll we be have? right back in a moment, everyone. See you soon.
Welcome back. We have the uh, Farming Simulator League tournament live from Hero Fest in Switzerland. Right now, you see Steven and Prodax on the screen, but I'm joined by Alex, aka Virtual Farmer, and uh, we're down to our last semifinal, and then we're on to the final. We got Vulture against Trelleborg coming up, but we just saw Bednar knock off Perdinger. What do you think about Bednar so far today, Alex? I, Bednar are playing a blinder today. They've been playing really, really well all day. I mean, I, I predicted them to lose to Crone at the beginning, and now they're in the final. They have been doing really well. Right. Um, we're going to have some replays in a moment uh, just to show you how well they've been playing about uh, against Prodinger. Um, as you were saying before the break, I, I think it, it really is a nail in the coffin to her the side. Uh, though yeah, I hate to match. say it, but I mean... I mean, Pertinger, uh, we were able to beat Manitou going herbicide against herbicide, but as soon as they went up against Transport Company there, it was oh, the it same is. sort of um, result as we saw actually Manitou in the same situation a couple of months ago um, as we see them getting stuck here. And uh, this really kind of cost... This is, a, this is actually the first round. It was worse the second round. Yeah. Um, that first bail gap uh, could have really helped Pertinger in the second match. Um, because it was a massive difference. Thanks. But Transport Company, this is why it reigns supreme. Look at the amount of bales just sitting there for Hyper to be able to grab and load onto the belt. Whereas Pertinger just were, what, 15 bales shy in that second Thanks. round of matching them because they just had to waste time to bring the baler in every single yeah, time. Just balers constantly out there, bailing three bales and then running in instead of you know, just out there pushing bales out all the time. Yeah, it, it I feel just... like the only way that it's going to, I mean, I want to see more than just two perks work too, right? Right now it's really yeah. transport company and occasionally herbicide. Um, but the only way really for herbicide to match transport company is if they added maybe more weeds to the fields if you don't use herbicide. Because yeah. teams are just easily able to avoid the weeds anyways, and it has no impact uh, as is. Um, and it's just so much easier to get bales in. It's no surprise that it's the most used tactic. It's, uh, I don't, it, there, there is a tactic there that would work with herbicide. I don't know what it is at the moment, and I, and I, and I'm, I'm still thinking it's very much linked to the other stuff. We got our teams coming out though now for the next match. This is a Trollerborg against this is, Ultra. This has been the final a lot this season. It has. Um, and it's the semifinal here today, which is which is good news for the likes of Bednar, because that means that they've made a final. They'll face the winner of this one. And uh, I'm interested to see, no matter who wins this one, how Bednar matches up against one of these teams, because Bednar has had a hot day. But uh, it's kind of a different story when you're talking about these two. Um, Trelleborg consistent throughout the entire season. Voltra really has uh, picked up their momentum over the last half season or so, I would say. Um, but there was there for a while where it was all about Trelleborg and Cortiva. They were the only ones to have won tournaments. And now Voltra has three wins, one runner up medal, one third place finish, and also uh, one trip to the quarterfinals without going any further. Um, so, I mean, Voltra have been climbing up this table and they're going to finish second. But that doesn't really matter. They're going to, being second, they're going to avoid Trelleborg until the bitter end. And Valtra very well is one of the highly favorited teams next month, I would say, in the grand finals. And I could easily see them winning it, despite there being, what, uh, a 230 point difference between themselves and uh, Trelleborg. Valtra are very good at playing a disruptive game. You, you look at their tactics. And especially the one, I'd, I've not seen a game so far where Vultra haven't gone to pick up that fourth minute super drop. Right. Which is yeah. which is just, can be a massively disruptive thing at the end of the game. Um, and, and that's the reason why they've been winning stuff. Because they go in, they disrupt the other team, and they score points at the other team's expense. And that is the way you beat Trelleborg. So I'm, I'm looking forward to this. This is a game I can't call because, again, yeah. these two teams so close together. Yeah. And it all I'm depends on how one. well that disruption works. 
I am excited for this one. This is this is always a great matchup. It uh, it's always usually pretty close, um, often coming down to the wire or maybe just a mistake by either team, which doesn't happen often for both of them. Um, but yeah, I'm interested to see. Trelleborg is going to ban a Valtra against Valtra, so maybe that is just a little bit of mind games it's right there. A statement to be intent <laughs> right there. Uh, you can't Trelleborg are like you can't ban tires <laughs> in the FSL yet. <laughs> Uh, they, they've banned both of the, the vultures. There's still one vulture out there. Both the vultures. Um, but yeah, there is a giveaway, guys, going on for Farming Simulator 22. Click the Gleam link in chat. Um, in fact, you know what? We've, this link isn't going out on YouTube, I don't think. So I'm about to post it in YouTube for those of you over there. Um, so Farming Simulator 22 is being given away. So click the Gleam link, go enter, and uh, you may win a copy of Farming Simulator 22. It you don't get it early. Uh, it'll unlock on the 22nd, um, or depending on your time zone, maybe it's technically the 21st. But um, <laughs> yeah, uh, it, you won't get it early. But you won't. You will get it. And if you can't stay around until the end of the stream, don't worry. Go enter anyways, because on Gleam you have to put in your email when you enter, and you'll be contacted via email, and that's how you receive your key. Um, the the age that some of the competitors appear, appear, appear to be is actually really misleading. <laughs> yeah, um, but also the minimum age limit is 14, I believe. Yeah. Um, with parents' permission, and then 18 without it, obviously, That's, and up. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so uh, you there are some younger players, but also de a bit of deception for some of them. Yeah. Um, but I, I mean, there I have go. some friends He's that 17 are... Already. Well, Virtual farmer here. His his looks are deceiving, of his age. Because uh, I I would have never pegged him for the age he is. I would have pegged him a lot younger. He's got that baby oh, face look going on over there. <laughs> I have a baby face, <laughs> especially especially when I get rid of the beard. Yeah, there's a giant software D in chat saying minimum age is 14, but Martin the red haired guy is 17 already. Yeah, and that's that's the thing. I mean, um, no, Steve, that uh, just gives you more entries. Um, you don't have to do all of them. That just gives you more entries. Right. So as long as you can do some of them, you're in. Oh, tractor flipping! Oh, oh. shaky by high tower. A little bit shaky out of the gate there for high tower and vulture. I'm not sure where he was headed with that, John Deere. I think he may have got rejected for a baler. And then had to adjust and then ended up a little bit wobbly. So there's Martin, who until yesterday held the first bail record until uh, the Trelleborg toss into the top, which they're not going to attempt against Valtra. Uh, that would just not make sense. But a nice first bail nonetheless that, by JK with the drive by bail. That is, 136. Yeah, 136. That's the highest today. And Martin is well behind here. This is going to be... Wow. If he gets a drive-by, it'll be more like in the 120 range. So, nice little advantage for Trelleborg. And then he bumps in and he oh, fails. Oh, no! He's done that twice today, Alex. And Martin is usually one of the best in the FSL at he, that. He's, he, held, he held the record up in this tournament. Oh, and, and he, he missed, missed it again! again! Oh, my lord! Oh, man. Whoa, that's horrible. A 34-point advantage on first Great. bail. No, there's that's... not any overage limit. <laughs> no. Oh. No, I can't believe BF is older than me. Uh, <laughs> my app, I'm only 42. <laughs> oh. Oh, you know what, though? My wife actually made the comment, like, I was like, uh, she made the comment about you, Alex, at one point. She was like, I bet he, that guy's older than he looks. <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, oh, I don't know man. why she came to that conclusion, but uh, it was like when I think I first got into the ambassador program before I started doing FSL and I was watching your content quite a bit. Um, yeah. And I was like, yeah, I mean, you, you, you've got 
a good head on your shoulders for one thing so that makes you seem older i guess than you look but <laughs> <laughs> um there's also like some uh, 60 I, year I olds that i know that. that haven't grown up yet so you know so in in my in my early days of content creating i i went on a, a team speak server with landy kid and uh and rainbow dave and chris the irish gamer and a couple of other creators actually i think silver was on there as well um they gotcha. all thought i was 17 by my voice well okay i would have thought i was low. some little kid dropping off but i think i was i would have said I like 30 ish or like you know well, I was early to I was 37 at the time. They thought I was 20 okay. years younger than I was. <laughs> Goodness. And that was just from my voice. It was brilliant. <laughs> yeah. uh, <sighs> oh, man. True, Incredible Mouse. When you're that good, you take more risks. And when that's... you miss, you miss hard. That is true. Yeah. Well, that's the whole thing with the drive-by bailing. It is a very high risk-reward type scenario. You're You're basically banking on a very small window of uh, skill and timing to get more points. That's why, you know, teams that aren't as comfortable with doing it will just uh, take the time to back up because they know they'll score more points by doing that than by taking the risk. But yeah, 136 to 102 is a massive disadvantage early on for Vultra. Ultra are first to drop their grain, though. And again... What, hey, what's up, Obi? I, why are both teams dropping their grain at the 12-minute mark? I feel like it's just... I don't know, but... These two teams, I feel like it's just to cancel each other out. I don't really know. But like you, you've pointed it out time and time again, if you wait until the 8th minute, you might get grain multiplier. And you might get to it, and your opponent can't get to it. Yeah, um, as, which would as be a huge it difference. A couple of times today. Yeah, you're right, um, and that can often make a really big difference. But and now we see Martin going up for. I guess he's going for that case harvester, or did he leave a tractor the, the up here? Worrying thing at the moment is that Vultra are playing a move for move game or a, a like for like game against right. Trelleborg. And and that is not going to work. Ultra are going to have Ultra to keep their streak of getting the super drops uh, yeah. alive here to have a chance really to come back in this one. So especially with this thirty point disadvantage, they they've got to they've got to do something to disrupt Teleborg and 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 sort out that that deficit because if they don't, that is going to do them in at the end. In space. What's up, Obi? How you doing, buddy? <laughs> yes, it is me. Thank you, Steve. <laughs> I think. <laughs> I think. <laughs> There's the giveaway link again for a copy of Farming Simulator 22. Click the Gleam link, go enter. You'll be contacted by email if you win, so you don't have to stick around to the end of the stream, although we want you to, but if you've got things to do, we understand. Beatmaster dropping off grain. And again, this is this is the disadvantage to this. He could have just taken this harvester straight up there and not worried about having to sit there doing this. Right. Hard to question Trelleborg, but that is our job. <laughs> it's a question. Oh, yeah. Well, it's, 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 it's watching this and going, how can how do we think they could improve things? Where do we think that they are missing opportunities? And the top t and this is this is what I mean by these top teams being beatable if you disrupt them. There is space here to disrupt both these teams at the moment. Right. Silo closed and herbicide. Herbicide. A silo closed at this point. What an opportunity that would be. Both teams minutes. have 30,000 liters of grain. Both have a full grain cart. Um, and they're both headed towards the silo right now. Um, so silo well, close could be huge depending on timing, but are either team even going to go for it? Is the question. Uh, yes. uh, there's Vuller going Trelleborg for it. Have got it. 
Um, and then Scotty's going to go for it, it as well. So they're both going to get it. Oh, um, oh they needed it. Oh, they got it just in time. Um, so pretty much cancel each other out. Yep. Yeah, Quack Brute, welcome. This is the Farming Simulator League Season 3. This is the final tournament of the regular season. The 10th tournament overall of the year. We have the Grand Finals next month right here on this channel on the 13th and 14th of November. The top 16 teams will be playing for the Grand Prize. Grand Finals will be uh, over 100,000 euros at stake across... The, all the places in the grand finals, so lots of prize money still to come, including today. We've we've got unforced error from Trollabog. They dropped a bale off their conveyor. That will cost. Silo's still closed for another 30 seconds and another 50 seconds. I think, Kurt, if I remember correctly, the mean age is around like 30, mid 30s. For farm sim players, it's higher than most games, that's for sure. Right. Yeah. But I don't know that exactly. I feel like I'm just guest guesstimating up the top of my head because I can't remember exactly what that statistic was. Here comes Scotty with three on the front of the John Deere. We're having a look at Beatmaster. Hooking yeah. up to the auger wagon now. I'm amazed Vulture have not taken advantage. Oh, they did take advantage. Sorry. 2.4. Beatmaster getting those bales on. Oh, I don't no, think he's going to score them, though, because now it's going up. He might get, like, one he or two extra one. points. It's speeding up. 1.9. No, nope. it's a 2.0. So did not take advantage. Nice, Fowler. Good luck, everyone that entered the giveaway. Ah, oh, it's, it's, there is a certain amount of disruption, but there's also a nice amount of countering going on. <laughs> right. This a bit green. So Five it's minutes not to go. just a like for like at the moment. Five minutes to go. 216 to 182. Trelleborg in the lead. It started off that with that nice still... first bail bonus lead. That is, yeah, that's still that, that first bail difference. Kicking around there. Trelleborg have for a six bail advantage right now, too. So that is bad news for Vultra. How have Trelleborg bailed six extra bales? Good question. Very good question. They're running dual ideals, which... Oh, no, that's Vultra. That's, uh, yeah. We're looking at now. I don't know if it was the same for Trelleborg or not, but... And I, Martin actually, also spent it... a lot of time with that first bail when he messed up on the drive-by. He spent a lot of time there that he could have been out pressing more bail. So that was definitely part of the difference. Super drop has spawned. Lord Baylor, three bails. That would be massively useful for Vultra. Are they going out there to get him? It's kind of far away oh, from Scotty. both teams. Scotty could have gone around, but it's choosing to wait i did not notice that actually you can tell from a distance what the the super drop is right you can see it from the other side of the map yeah you can but that's why we sometimes see teams not going for it because they can tell what it is before they get anywhere near it Hey, I understand, Fowler. Yeah, that collector's edition is definitely uh, highly sought after, but definitely comes with a little bit of an added price tag. I have I have three copies on the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, are you giving two away? I'm giving or? two of them away, yeah. I'm well, there you go. If you away. want a chance at a collector's edition, then uh, check out Virtual Farmer's content if you aren't already following his content, because for one... If you're a farm sim player, you could find it very helpful and it's a very welcoming, awesome community. Um, and for two, maybe you'll win. Maybe you'll win the collector's edition. You never know. 
All right. Well, Charlotte Borg are looking uh, like they're commanding this first round. Vulture had a very bad start that they're going to hope to uh, clean up in the second round, but I'm not sure they have much hope here. They just got to finish strong and carry that momentum. And yeah, for, uh, again, it's that 30 bail difference is really kicking Vulture hard right now. Or oh, that 30 point difference, sorry. Yeah, bail on the difference? first bail. 30 yeah. point difference. It's I mean, just, even that, yeah. it, even that, it's just, it is definitely the first bail difference, but also the, the time they spent so, on it and the, the actual yeah. bail count difference, too. I'm going to be interested to see what the uh, delivered bail totals are at the end of this one because I feel like Trelleborg's got to have uh, more than five. More it, is a, it is a massive unforced error. Oh, that very. That one almost fell went off. off. Uh, 572 to 656 so it's, it looks like they've closed the gap a bit but then it one more goes in for Trelleborg and Trelleborg's got some there that's the silhouette you're seeing we're looking at Vulture right now but we also see the ghost of Trelleborg as like the map is like a reversed mirrored uh, map for each team it's separated by a ravine that is uncrossable by uh, both teams so they have the same exact kind of feel that's just flipped like Trelleborg's barn is on this end of the field whereas the barn for Vulture is on the other end just to make it a little bit harder to see the team uh, and their bail streak because if you get 10 15 20 nice. or 25 in a row you get bonus points if you can counter that you get the bonus points instead points. It look this is this is just going away from Vulture at the moment. I said at the start they play they were playing a little bit too much of a like for like game at the start. They didn't do the disruption with the uh they didn't do the disruption with getting the uh four minute the super drop and uh the one bit of disruption they did do immediately got countered. And now you can see the effect that that has. Uh, I'm not sure if the collector's edition is available in Denmark, but if you go to that link in chat I just shared, uh, and you pick the region you're from, you can see all of the uh, options that we have on that shop. But the collector's edition is actually through third-party retailers, so you won't find it on say, that website. It is um, definitely, so it's definitely tough it's to definitely find. It's definitely available on the German Amazon website. And if you are in, uh, little known fact this, uh, if you are inside the EU, you can order from any uh, Amazon uh, country website and get it sent to you without any. Well, there you go. Virtual Farmer with the information you need, Dragon's Child. So if you can get, if the German Amazon website still has it, then uh, that's your way to get it. There you have it. Personally, for me in North America, I know it's available in uh, the U.S. and Canada now. U.S. had like a week or two that they had it over Canada. But it is available in Canada now. Um, but, yeah, it has been limited in some places. So because of the delay in chat, I think Dragon's Child is asking again, but you should be hearing the ah, answer here shortly. It is, it is currently unavailable on the uh, German Nah, Absolutely. bummer. It is, it is still available on the UK one, but I don't know how easy that would be to import these days. Right. So, yeah, well, it's a very limited collector's edition, too. And uh, with the, like, shortage of different electronics, uh, like, pieces and chips and everything like that, like, those beacons have made it even more of, like, a collector's item if you will because they're just yeah. not able to mass produce them very much yeah see look he he's got a little look at that little facial hair going on there see he's <laughs> martin's <laughs> yeah. older than than you think when you zoom in <laughs> uh oh, so God. dragon's child you may have said that a bit too early you guys are the best and then uh <laughs> alex checked and saw that it was unavailable on the german amazon but hopefully you can uh, find it somewhere it but... is it is still available. Yeah, it's still available on the uh, on Amazon UK. Uh, if you want to try that, if you can try to get it through that, yeah, yeah. Who knows? All right. Well, Trelleborg won the first of the best of three. Um, I mean, these two teams, top two teams in the season standings, they're gonna remain that way no matter what happens here. 
for the grand finals next month. But I mean, Vulture have beaten Trelleborg in the past, so they're capable. But they definitely need to make sure they don't start it off poorly with the first bail like last yeah. time. Yeah, a, a better first bail and a bit more of a disruptive game, and they uh, they might make it. They might beat them, but they can't play like for like. They wear the headphones so they can communicate uh, with each other. For one thing. Yeah, I think uh, the yeah. I think the headphones are team speaking. And then the, the earbuds, earbuds are probably. The you earbuds mean they're wearing game. both? It's because they need to be yeah. able to communicate with each other and with the tournament organizers from Giants. My colleagues like Klaus and Jenny and and yeah. Nils and Noah. I I remember wearing both when I was um, uh, when I was in person casting. Yeah, you have to you have to like be so able to monitor the... the director producer as well yeah. as hearing uh, the other a the actual game action going on. All right, so both vultures banned by Trelleborg again, or at least two of the three vultures. Um, Transport company both ideals, the okay. ideals. Yeah, same old, same old. About uh, bog standard choices there. Okay. I mean, we'll see more of the same here. I'd be surprised if we didn't. Okay. Case Puma and under pressure for Martin. John Deere 6120M for Wooler. JK's gone with the Case Puma and under pressure as well. Vultra S374 for Scotty. And then we're going to get Archimedes for Hightower and Beatmaster. John Deere 6120M and the Vultra S374. So pretty much the same. You're welcome, Canadian skittish. Always happy to answer questions in chat. Very similar setup again. Yeah, so I'm wondering if Martin even attempts the drive by bailing this time. We'll see. He, he, he kind of needs to. You kind of have to, yeah, exactly. Yeah, Trelleborg have been really good at it. So here we go. I mean, in that last one, they did the highest we've seen today. Of course, they set their record yesterday with 140, but they're not going to... Oh, that Vulture went flying. Vulture went and flying, still and he still got didn't beat to get it. the combine. Oh, goodness. Did that flip? Like, is it still on its side, or did it flip back over? I think, I think that ended up on its wheels. Scotty running for the John Deere. But Trelleborg with the upper hand. Slow start from Vultra here. Yeah, that's not good news. That's that's not good news. Yeah, and you can see you can see it on their faces. The concern. They're not happy with on their that faces. Start. Yeah, Martin's gonna have to do much better here with the first bail. So something you might notice here that uh, New Holland bailer. That doesn't cause crop destruction, and that that's because in the FSL, the uh, the New Holland Baylor has uh, care tires on it. Yeah, it's it, one it of acts the uh, as few if it does, at least. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's, it's they're not visible, but uh, look oh, at okay. that. Vulture with the one point A advantage this time. One despite the neck. bad start. Okay, much better uh, situation for Vulture to be in this time around. That's a, yeah, that's a much better start. All right, having a look at Martin now. Going back for the uh, case. Baylor now. And I think this one might have the care, uh, essentially the care wheel setting on it as well. Um, so Vulture yes, it with does. Two, yeah, the case and the new two Holland care wheeled um, uh, balers. That means they can move really fast all over the field. Uh, having a, a, a tractor with care wheels and the baler with care wheels makes a massive right. difference. And they won't destroy any crops. So that if they need to, they can just harvest it instead of destroying it. For doing it. How tall is High Tower? He's pretty Eight foot darn three. tall. Eight foot three. <laughs> 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 uh. All right. 
30 seconds away from the 12th minute drops. Are, are these team teams has... going to deliver grain this time like they did last time or no? I, I really I really want to see Valtra disrupt things and, and not deliver their grain immediately. I don't think they're going to do it. Both teams are a lot it's... like further behind it getting the grain into the grain cart this time. Um, but the drops are out there now. Bell dropped and Perfect. Bridges lowered. So, I mean, now... if you're near it, go for Bell oh, yeah. drop. Look at that. Saves you Trelleborg. one later. No. Oh, okay. Why would you drive past it? It's Why would you drive past points. it and not get it? Like, it would have taken half a second to hop out, hop back in, and you'd have it, and you'd get a bale already moved over there. I know you have transport company, but that's one less you have to move over later. I... I oh, do they have any bales, actually? Yeah, they, uh, one team had two, one had three, so both okay. of them, you know, could have gotten one move. I thought sure. I... Uh, is it, isn't bale, no, bale drop gives you an extra bale, doesn't it? No, it, it. I think it drops it one of your drops already pressed ones, like near the barn, right? Lord Baylor does like the two bales, like directly scored, but bale drop just moves one of yours to uh, like on the other side of the bridge, basically. Um, Dragon's Child, you found a website, but you're not sure if it's safe. What a, a farming simulator mod website! I'm presuming. I'm hoping. I, I like that Incredible Mouse says, I'm rooting for Valborg. Valborg. <laughs> Valborg, yeah. Well done. That's a safe bet. Bold strategy. Let's see how it plays out. <sighs> All right. Well, now Vulture... So Trelleborg delivered grain. Now Vulture are doing it. Um, and so again, we're going to just go ahead and deliver this grain and not wait to see if grain multiplier drops in the eighth minute. Very interesting. Here we go. And even. Almost exactly even. <sighs> no disruption at all. There's, there's, I, I, I maintain, I, I've said this all day. There is no point dropping your all brain day, at the all eight season, minute. all year. I mean, oh. yeah, I don't, I don't get it either. Um, but again, these, these guys maybe know better than we do. But at the same time, looking <laughs> at it, it just doesn't make sense. Oh, Especially, ooh, there was that uh, tractor that flipped early on. Martin able to get it back over, but that's valuable time that uh, Vulture are missing out on doing something else. He's having to get this and go over to the baler. So what's the difference? Teams. I think the bales are actually pretty close right now. So Trelleborg has five now. And I guess Vulture has around three, if I had to guess. Can't see at the moment uh, how many they have because we're spectating Trelleborg. Six to four. So slight bail advantage already again for Trelleborg. It's not good news for Vulture. Vulture need to get like the super drop this game, like they've been doing they consistently. Do. They. They need it, and they also need it to be worth it, right? Like, bottom yeah. boost could a help bo them. Bottom boost, bottom yeah. boost would be perfect for them. It would. That is the most massively disruptive one they can Right. Get. Or bail points, if it's a significant amount, too, could be obviously useful because it's just an instant amount of points. Yeah. But uh, bottom boost is definitely the strongest one, especially when you have transport company and you can bring 14 bales in on the Anderson loader and just dump them all into the bottom. You not only get uh, like the multiplied points in the bottom, but you give yourself a really good chance at getting combo points too. And again, th this is this is why I, I, I have the issue with um, dropping it at an eight minute mark as well. Two players here, you could have the second one already collecting up bales or already yeah. uh or, or adding more bales to your your numbers or also if you have it over there already and bail multiplier shows up which it hasn't this time silo close and speed limit yes. uh, but if you were to go ahead and have that cart over at the silo and fill in the yeah. filling the uh, harvesters directly into it and you get the uh multiplier grain multiplier then you're in really good shape but yeah wasn't the case this time around but Vulture, like, again, here they are. They're, they're behind them slightly again. Between, 
12 minutes and eight minutes has delivered a single bail. Yeah. And I, it, it seems to me the reason why teams don't hold off to the eight minute mark is because they're afraid of this thing of uh, uh, of the other team scoring points while it happens. But it just doesn't happen. No team's tactics do that. Will are spending some time to just kind of give themselves, I guess, a little bit of an advantage where it's going to last slightly uh, past what Vultures will. But, I mean, it's not going to make that much difference, I don't think, in the end. And Wooler just sat there and wasted a few seconds. He could have been out. I think what bales. will happen is, is Trolleborgs will open up earlier and it will give them an advantage on the multiplier for a very short period of time. What they need to do, though, is have bales there ready. Right. It uh, looks to me like uh, Voltra did pick up the bale drop. Uh, okay. Because they have a bale sitting just inside their, uh, the area, the other side of the bridges. Cool. Uh, Dragon's Child, to answer your question, um, as far as I know, it depends on uh, which country you're in, but as far as I know, uh, it's Best Buy in the States. Best Buy and uh, GameStop in the U.S., and, yeah, and, and Best GameStop Buy and, and EB in Canada, uh, Amazon and Amazon as well. in uh, in Europe, right. to the best of my knowledge. Yeah, I'm not really sure about, obviously, I, I live in the U.S., so really I know yeah. about the North American, like, um, brick-and-mortar retailers. I'm not sure who, if, if any, there are in uh, Europe and the U.K. as far as brick-and-mortar uh, stores go for getting the collector's edition yeah as, as as far as i know it's only available in uh north america and europe as well yeah yeah the collector's edition is tough to find especially like this late on um and depending on your country as well like, uh, Alex had that inside information that if you're in the EU, you could have gotten it off the German website, but it's all sold out. And that's not surprising yeah. at all to me, because it's probably, the collector's edition is probably sold more overall in Germany than anywhere it's, else, it's, if I had It's to an guess. interesting thing that it's not sold out on the Amazon UK website. Right. Um, I'm, I'm slightly surprised by that, because it's been up there for a little while. Yeah, I wonder, I'm actually going to look right now if it is um, here in the US. Yeah, currently unavailable in the U.S. as well. Howdy, Bumblebee Farmer 81. Welcome along. So it's sold out there as well. Hey, only place you get the Farm Sim Collector's Edition is in the U.K. <laughs> at least on Amazon. Maybe in the U.S. At you can still Amazon. get it at GameStop or, yeah. or Best Buy. But um, Best Buy, definitely, like, they were the first one in the U.S. to have it available. So um, uh, they got quite a few out, early on. Outside of that, it's probably somebody who's going to be importing it. Right. All right, both teams with the Anderson loader coming in. Bale withering for two bales. So it's not bales. bottom boost. It's very far away. Um, it would disrupt Trelleborg, but whether it's worth it for Valtra, I do not know. Valtra are marginally in the lead at the moment, but have fewer bales on the field. Right. Yeah, 27 to 20 right Ooh, now. Trelleborg Ooh, Trelleborg making some horrible unforced errors, though. Luckily, it's with three and a half minutes to go, and if Wooler gets back to his normal ways, he'll still get all of these in. Um, but definitely uncharacteristic there. Look, JK bringing look some at more how in. efficient Trelleborg are. I mean, Vulture need Wooler to make a whole lot more mistakes at sacking these, or this oh, is yeah. going to Trelleborg. Oh, absolutely. And it'll be Trelleborg versus Bednar in the final, first versus 10th. And that is the uh, super drop timing out. Uh, the I team has gone for that. I'm not sure about that sharpening guy because it's not like we send them out, you know, right before release. Uh, yeah. The physical editions are certified in advance, but you never know. Th COVID has changed a lot of things. Um, but I just got some stuff shipped <laughs> to me from my colleagues in Germany that went out in Germany on Friday last week and it got here 
all the way to Colorado uh, on Tuesday. So uh, there is still hope that uh, ex express shipping and the like works. And uh, we have our, we're publishing on our own for the first time as well. So that gives us a little bit more freedom and the like on uh, how to get these things delivered. Two minutes to go, 5.30 to 5.23. Trelleborg in the lead, and they have a two-bail advantage. It's now Valtra in the lead by 33 points, but this is two bails outstanding. Um, Hightower out there collecting some still. It's going to be interesting. I mean, whenever you order something that's being shipped, like a physical copy versus digital, you run the risk of getting it late. Um, but I know as far as like Amazon video game orders, they usually ship them out a few days in advance so that it times and shows up on the release oh. date. Um, but it's still, you'll still get it later than you would if you had a digital copy that unlocks at midnight. But you'll still have it. And, uh, and you'll have yeah. plenty of time in the future to get it, no matter if you get it uh, before midnight, depending on your time zone, on the 21st, or midnight if you're in uh, Germany or Central European time, or even if you get it a day or two late. You're not going to miss out on too much, I promise you. Seven thirty to seven oh three, Trelleborg back in the lead, and they have one extra bail right now. So, if they get all those in, both teams get all their bails in, it's it's going to Trelleborg. Seven point difference at the moment. Vulture back into the lead by thirteen. Ooh, Trelleborg just now bringing those in, but Wooler is really strong at sacking. But you never know; could fall off. That could make the difference. Oh. There goes yeah. two in for Trelleborg. So that's going to be 790 to 803. It's about to be 823 to 790. The... Oh, Vulture Vult just keeping ahead here. Yeah, Trelleborg ran out of bales. Oh. I think that Vulture were out there pressing and gathering them and bringing them in. Vulture are going to do this. Vulture. Oh, no, oh, they're not. No, no, Trelleborg are in the lead. Oh, Trelleborg, what? take it. They came take out of nowhere. Moment. They came out of nowhere and put those into the bottom and won. Holy cow, Trelleborg. Like, even with <gasps> two seconds left, I was like, Vulture forcing a third round. Yeah. And then that happened. Like, what the that heck is... just happened, Alex? What the hell? <laughs> they came out of nowhere. I just, I, I, I need to, I'm just trying to have a look on the stream as to how that happened. It was, uh, there's, <laughs> there's about, a, yeah, we got about a minute behind and it is just 38 seconds to go. And uh, Trelleborg, uh, uh, sorry, a uh, Vulture leading by 13 points. And wow. Oh my, oh my goodness. It's 50, it's 50 points with 25 seconds to go, which oh. is just nuts. And then it gets back up to just Gosh. 11 points oh. as Hightower's bringing in the last few bales. Oh my goodness. Uh... And then it just goes mad. It really does. I have no idea where those last bales came from. And it was like one bale difference. Um, oh. Vulture only had a one point advantage on the first bale. Uh, that was crazy. I, I mean, same drops. I can't. Up. I can't even see. I think they were. I think they were on the conveyor. I think they went in as it ended. I think they. I think they flew in and put one Which, into the bottom there. To be honest, I thought no, that's what that was, I saw. That was Vulture flying in to put one in the bottom. I think they had two on the conveyor belt, and it was touch oh, and wow, go okay. as to whether they were actually going to make it in. Wow, crazy! Oh man, Trelleborg just continued to impress this weekend. I mean, with that beating uh, their you know closest rivals, Vultra in two games, beating them in that fashion in that one setting the first bail record yesterday in the play-ins. And uh, I hope that that got the fans excited right. um, because we've got the, the seats are filling out a bit now and we've got a big final coming up. The last tournament of the regular season, it's going to be first place Trelleborg taking on 10th place Bednar. And for Bednar, places are at stake. They can climb the table with the grand finals coming up, Alex. I, they can, and it's it'll make a massive difference to them to to manage to do that. 
They can beat Vol uh, if they can beat Trollobog, it'll be huge. We'll be right back. See you then. everybody <laughs> what a game i, I had to go back i had to go back during that break and and on the youtube stream because you can rewind it a bit on the youtube stream i went and checked two bales went in for trelleborg with one second to go via the conveyor right by the yeah yeah so by, so, by so, the Valtra, so the difference really came down to the fact that Voltra was a bit too late and had to put him into the bottom, whereas yeah. Trelleborg timed it Trelleborg. just, <laughs> just, just in time. I'm, I'm hoping uh, we're going to get these in the replay in a minute, but it is literally the last second. And we've we seen get that before from these we two. Have. It's come down to the last second, and often it does when it comes down to teams this evenly matched. But, that man. Just... Insane. We're going to see the replays here shortly, just coming up in a moment. Audio is not desynced, by the way. You're seeing the guys doing the nope. German language broadcast live from Hero Fest in Switzerland. As uh, we're having a look now, first round. And uh, Hightower having some issues flipping tractors early in both rounds. Uh, there was the nice first bail by Trelleborg. And then Martin uh, getting 131 there as well. That was actually the third round, wasn't it? 131 to 130, I think. Um, tell me we're seeing this highlight with those bells going in at the last second here. As we see uh, someone getting stuck here. Well, just waiting. They didn't really get stuck. Uh, 270. Okay, so is this it? That's it. That, that's yep. it. And then Vulture was trying to run and it in was, the last second. It was second. three seconds. I do think it looked like they were. Were they also putting one into the bottom there? Because I saw the silhouette of Trelleborg, and he looked like he was up under there. But I think, maybe yeah, they... I think he was trying to put one. But it's it's definitely the uh, the 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 top two there. That's you know yeah, that's straight that's... up for uh, forty points. Yeah, Toast Farmer. Hello over on YouTube. Hello everyone on YouTube and Twitch. I think on Twitch right now, between uh, this channel and the German channel, we've got nearly 700 people watching the FSL finals today. 
Tournament number 10 hey, of the season. Hey, Big Daddy, zero, one, two, six, seven, eight. Hey, what's up, Big Daddy? How you doing, buddy? Good to see you. So, Bednar versus Trelleborg. Yeah. So, for Bednar, a lot more at stake. Obviously, not only the fact that it would be a feather in their cap to beat the likes of Trelleborg. <laughs> um, I'm going to make a prediction. <laughs> Trollerborg is going to stop all over Bender. Yeah, I have a feeling uh, that your your prediction uh, voodoo might be safe when it comes to that one. But you never know. Uh, you just you never know, really. But I mean, so Trollerborg are first place, right? Bednar are tenth. So you would think, okay, yeah. well, top ten, Bednar have a chance, but. This is the first time that Bednar has made it any further than the quarterfinals. They've made four. Yeah. Quarter, now five, five quarterfinals this season. They've made a semifinal now after today and a final. So they could get a silver medal. Um, they're, they're going home with at least a silver medal, which is huge yeah. for them. Um, and, but the, the main thing for Bednar is that they're definitely in ninth place now that they've made it here. Um, they are in ninth place going into next weekend. Um, and that's that's pretty good for them. They have to be pretty pleased with that. Um, they're jumping over LSA, but yeah, definitely a chance. I mean, just making the final, you've given yourself a chance. It's going to be a tough ask oh, yeah. to beat Trelleborg, um, especially when we saw them just handle Voltra like they did. Uh, it's going to be tough, but it looks like we've had a player switch here. For Trelleborg, which is interesting, um, and we have they, they they can bring a yeah um, you can bring alternates, but I don't think I've ever seen alternate. it, and you know I'm so used no. to seeing the same three for for Trelleborg, so I wonder if this is part of the strategy, or maybe this is just saying Trelleborg saying hey listen we've made another final we're number one for next month's uh, uh, world championships the grand finals, so. Let's give uh, some game time to one of our alternates so that if we need him next month, uh, he's already got that practice going in. So, yeah, we're so used to seeing Wooler and JK and Beatmaster. And this time, Wooler is out, and Wooler is their stacker. Um, so that's a very interesting thing. Uh, you know, if they, were, if they were playing Vulture in this final this wouldn't have happened. But the fact they're playing Bednar, no. I think, has given them the opportunity to uh, rotate a bit here. And let's see what uh, Biden can do. So, Massey Ferguson, Tullahadla has been banned by uh, Bednar. Uh, not something that tends to be used by Trelleborg. Um, two big tractors banned by Trelleborg, though. Hello, Yosho Hen. How you doing, buddy? Good to see you, man. It's going well. Uh, Myself and Virtual Farmer are having an absolute blast today, as we always do with the Farming Simulator League. And I'm uh, I'm glad to be back for this tournament. And uh, I should be able to make it next month, too. I don't have anything planned unless something for work comes up. Um, so I'm looking forward to the, to the finals next month, the grand final, the world championship, whatever you want to call it. Everything is at stake it's, next yeah. month. Um, but yeah, so really... For both of these teams now, it's just about prize money. Uh, circuit points aren't going to make a difference for either team now at this point. So it's really about the prize money. And for Trelleborg, it would be, you know, another first place finish. It would be their fifth uh, out of the season. So they would have, if they can win this final, which they're heavily favored to do, they will have won half of the tournaments this season with Voltra uh, having three wins and Cortiva having two, and no one else besides those three have won a tournament so far this season. Uh, Kaka, uh, I am predicting a Trelleborg win by stomping. <laughs> so two <laughs> games. <laughs> I think I'm fairly safe in this, but hey, we'll see. Yeah. Especially, um, and especially the problem, they're going like for like, like, like here, Bednar. Yeah, yeah, but now look like they're gonna play a like for like, and uh, I'm not sure about that. That's not how you beat them. Yeah, 
It's Str- well, Trelleborg, and then we'll and, see. And, like, Bednar have banned both of the telehandlers, but Trelleborg haven't even messed with that today. Right. But, I mean, I guess they're not gonna now either, but <laughs> yeah, they've I've, not really I've even cursed, been concerned I've cursed Trelleborg to win. <laughs> <laughs> Just to see if this curse holds true. <laughs> yeah, I... I don't know. We're going to see, but I'm not superstitious, but if, if Bednar pull this off, I might start to be a little bit as uh, Trelleborg beat them the, to the uh, John the Deere baby there. tractor on the front of that for a moment. It went, however is Trelleborg's tractor on fire? <laughs> Steve, <laughs> you have plans next month hand delivering my copy of Farm Sim 22. I'm not sure that's uh, part of the job description. <laughs> that's that's quite a long distance to, to come to deliver a... a, a is Steve in the UK as well? Uh, he is, yeah. Yeah. I wouldn't mind a trip to the UK. Uh, I, I was over there a couple years ago. I'm a big uh, football fan. I'll call it that for you so that I, I don't d- get accosted. Fielded does uh. point out that I thought I was fairly uh, safe with the uh, Crone. True, um, but that was Crone... <laughs> This is Trelleborg. That was Crone against... Yeah. No, that was... that was. Uh, oh, I forget that what it was earlier. It was Crone versus uh, Bednar. Yeah, that was the first... Right, Crone versus... Uh, yeah, Crone versus Bednar. There's... there's well, I suppose there's four places difference on the state table between them. 127 to 122. So Bednar... In, Bednar ended the lead. Early. <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, what are you laughing at? Really, now? Bednar? Really? <laughs> it's just the first bail oh. points. Trelleborg can make five points It is points just the first easy. bail, but no. Yeah. <laughs> That's better than Vultra did the last two games. <laughs> well, Vultra had a one-point lead last time, but so I guess it is still well, they better. Did, but but <laughs> yeah, it was 131 it's to 130. It's still better than Vultra did the last yeah. That's a five-point lead. <laughs> The Bednar fans, uh, they're starting to dwindle in numbers a bit in chat. You think it would get stronger as they've progressed here? Oh, you're in the Devon area. All right. Everything I know about Devon, I learned from that Peter Crouch podcast. That's all I know about Devon. Isn't that where, like, a lot of British people go on vacation? Uh, yep, it's uh, it's actually probably where I'm going to go on holiday next year. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, right, really. <laughs> uh. Uh. Yeah, see, thank you, that Peter Crouch podcast, for teaching me that. Yeah, most of my uh, geographical knowledge about the UK comes from my love of football. Over the past, like, I've uh. been a fan of the sport now for, like, half my life, actually over half my life, I think. No, not quite. Close. Um, so all of my knowledge comes from playing like football manager well, my, and FIFA and just watching the sport as well. You'll, you'll be happy to know that my, my entire personal experience of the USA is Las Vegas. <laughs> <laughs> That's a horrible uh, personal experience. To to. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I mean, it's a good. How long were you there? A uh, week. Oh, that's too long. Three days max. Two is better. <laughs> uh, <laughs> well, then, we've oh, not we got st- grain multiplier up at 12 minutes. Now, this is the oh. situation in which you dump all your grain immediately. And neither team is going Ooh, for what is What is that about? Oh, he's going for the drop. Destroying some crop in the meantime. Both both teams is bunny hopping around for the, yeah. the grain multiplier. There it is. Uh, oh, that didn't go well. It does look like Ventil has like yeah like um, actually both teams look like they're ready to take an auger wagon over. I'm not sure if Bednar's is full though. Tra- Trelleborg was definitely closer though. Okay, no, it is I'm not. Full, I'm so not towing a caravan. I will be staying in a caravan though. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure that as like the uh, community coordinator out of our US office that hand delivering copies to the UK would come down to me anyways if we're being honest <laughs> <laughs> but I'm glad you guys have volunteered me <laughs> uh, 
it's it's just a hypothetical as we all know but it is funny to joke about um okay 2.2 to 1.9 this is gonna end up even yep pretty much is... dead on even <laughs> ain't las vegas representative of the u.s <laughs> No. No, even I know that's not true. <laughs> that sounds like quite the trip. Devon East Midlands Kent. Oh, it's, 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 I can I can point to the way. Deep Mar yeah, Mars uh, bug. Oh, oh yeah, 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 laugh. That is a thing. Oh, I know. I've had like I've had deep fried all kinds of things, uh, yeah, but deep fried uh, bars bars. You guys don't have to come to the U.S. to get uh, a lot of deep fried food, though. Just go to Scotland and you'll be good. <laughs> the Scottish invented it. Well, see, we d we don't have Mars bars over here, really. So, like, we deep fry like Snickers and things like that. Um, deep fried Oreos How do you have and a Snickers, Nutter Buddy, but not a Mars bar. That that intrigues me. Well, our candy is is all different. Yeah, I don't know if I've ever really seen. It. Maybe Felden could correct me because he sought it out. But um, I think it's called something else, maybe in the U.S. for one thing. But I don't know. If we have it, oh, it was discontinued, relaunched, relaunched again in 2016. Uh, but it's it's an American recipe. It's not the same as well. Interesting. Yeah, I don't see it. I don't. I couldn't tell you the if I've ever seen it. So if you can find it in the U.S., it's different for one thing, and it's also not very common. But uh, traveling to the U.K. and having like British Cadbury has ruined me for American chocolate, anyways. At yeah, this point, I, I, I apologies to your country. American chocolate is horrible. <laughs> yeah. Well, so like our our mass produced chocolate definitely. Like, if you can find, like, smaller, like, local companies that, you know, do it in smaller batches with different methods, then we've got some pretty good stuff over here. But well, the mass-produced stuff, there was, yeah. There was uproar here a couple of years ago because Cadbury's changed the recipe for uh, cream eggs from the, the British chocolate to an American chocolate. Oh dear! <laughs> the, oh no, man! I can't eat those. They, they, well. they like burn my throat. Those like the U.S. Uh, cream eggs. Ugh! Can't do it. Um, but yeah, like when we were in the U.K. a few years ago, like the last night we were there, our dinner it was pretty much like Walker's crisps and Cadbury chocolates. <laughs> Bednar is wasting grain in the final. No, no, it's not bad now. It's Trelleborg. Trelleborg have dropped a whole load of grain on the floor. What's up, NBC? Hey, NBC. Hang on. A Mars bar in the States has almonds in it. That's a Snickers. Oh, no, that's peanut. Why, why does a yeah, Mars Yeah, it's called, it's called like, it's basically it. like Snickers with almonds, I think was the replacement at one point. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> well, we've got a final to watch. <laughs> We're talking about. Yeah, we that, have. Yeah. No, one twenty-seven to one twenty-seven. Because uh, Trollerborg are making mistakes, which doesn't happen normally. Right. We have and, seen the slight uh, rotate. Like one player's rotated in and oh, out. Um, it's, they've kind of maybe Trollerborg are testing out some new tactics. Hasn't made any difference though. Right. What's up, NBC uh, Master Dad, by the way? Good morning to you as well, my friend. Good to see you. NBC and Big Daddy and a lot of the SGA crew are behind. They're at the forefront of trying to grow the FSL interest in the U.S. They're always there. They're doing their own practices throughout the week. Um, they're doing the Friday night scrimmages. Whether or not I am there live on this channel or not, they're doing them. So uh, if you're looking to get into the FSL and you uh, are in the or you're in north america or the western hemisphere or it, maybe if you stay up late in the uk and europe and elsewhere uh definitely check those guys out and join us on a friday night 7 p.m eastern time 1 a.m central european time midnight in the uk we have friday night open lobbies for the farming simulator league arena and it's a great opportunity 
for people, if you haven't tried it out before, to come in and get uh, some game time with some experienced players and uh, learn how the FSL works. There we go. Oh, that's not well loaded on there. That's going to fall off. There it goes. Trouble, trouble. Definitely making mistakes now. One sixty seven to one sixty two. Fifty seconds away from the super drop. All the bales are going to start coming in now for both teams. Wow. And a Milky Way is the closest thing you're going to get to a Mars bar. That that really says what? something. Steve, <laughs> we went from traveling the country to Mars bars. What next, Coke Dream? Oh. oh. This man is spitting candy facts. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, it's, it's, I'm not surprised a Brit in the US is uh, is talking about candy facts. Oh, yeah. That, my, that doesn't surprise yeah, my friend me Johnny, who is from Manchester originally, <laughs> but uh, is an American uh, citizen by marriage now, uh, he says the same thing all the time. And the problem is you can't even, like, it's ve you can, but it's very hard to even import British Cadbury because Hershey's mm. in the U.S. owns the rights to Cad make Cadbury like exclusive rights. Um, so the only way you can do it is to like buy it from like a gift website. This is like a way to circumvent it, but it costs you extra money because you're basically buying like a gift pack of it. Yeah, we're trying to grow at Sharpening Guy. When I would. So I started doing commentary with Alex and Joe. I think it was like March or April was the first yeah, official I'd, tournament I'd I did. Round about then. Um, and that was before I got hired full time by Giants. I was just an ambassador um, and was streaming the game on Twitch. I used to be a mixer partner back in the day and streamed Farm Sim. That's basically how I got partnered there. Um, but then I became an ambassador, and then I was like, I do sports commentary mainly for uh, soccer in the U.S. Um, so I was like, hey, I love Farm Sim, guys. Uh, I like the Farm Sim League, and I do commentary. And they were like, well, here, do it on your own. Try it out. And then the next month, they asked me to do it officially. Then I applied for the U.S. Uh, office community coordinator position and got it. And so when I was hired full time, Chalky was doing the english language scrimmages and then there was also the german language ones but they were both done like german evening time so basically when i was hired jockey was like we're gonna have you take over on fridays and you can change the time to you know help grow the interests in north america more in the western hemisphere so that was kind of the goal and uh yeah i'm pretty pleased with it so far sadly i've uh, had a crazy month so um we've not done it in several weeks but we'll be back to it on this friday uh, sh should be going on anyways, unless something happens. I, I, I wish to point out the absurdity of this situation at this point. Uh, we are two minutes away from the end of this match, and Bednar are beating Trelleborg. Right, but <laughs> having said that, Trelleborg bringing a, a Anderson I need to say in. it then because it may not be true in another thirty seconds. Yeah, but. <laughs> <laughs> Steve, I'll swap a real Cadbury chocolate bar for a copy of Farm Sim 22. Uh, do you sell Maltesers and chocolate digesters? Oh, yeah, how could you live without chocolate digesters? Wait, they sell Maltesers here? Okay, well, that, oh, that might Maltesers be Maltesers are awesome. I love them. They're better than Whoppers also, is what we uh, have in those, the US. Those talking about kebab in chat, until you go onto the continent and have a kebab in Germany or Switzerland or anywhere like that, you've not had a kebab. Oh, it's, I love kebabs. And the ones, the ones out there that, that um, uh, Lissitan introduced me to are just amazing. And they eat kebabs out there without having to get drunk first. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Which is awesome. Yeah, uh, silly person. We definitely need way more FSL in the U.S. Yeah, we're working on it. Hopefully next uh, year, I think there's there's probably not, it's probably too soon to say like um, official tournaments for the FSL in the U.S., but there's already some uh, 
thoughts in the work to have some one-off tournaments. Uh, I know that like there's been there was a charity tournament that some streamers did a couple weeks ago. Um, just because it's not an official tournament as well, like doesn't mean that you know people can't organize their own individual thing and seeing it for charity is especially a good thing. They they raised um, a stupid amount of money. Did they? Yeah, I was I was out of town, uh, so I was, missed it. So I'm oh, glad to hear that. Oh, look was, at this. Oh, oh it's it's going to Bedna. Okay, okay. Bedna wow. have just okay. <laughs> Bednar have just beat Trelleborg. Uh, did you see? In I, the I love. I love that uh, when that match was <laughs> over, they went to like the empty chairs and the fog machine was like blowing right on it, and it yeah. just looked like you know they like did a disappearing act or something. <laughs> I, but Bednar are not cursed. there in person. If you're if you're just tuning in, they couldn't travel to Switzerland uh, from Czech Republic due no. to some travel restrictions, so they are playing remotely. Look at that same amount of bales. Uh, wow. One underdelivered bail wouldn't have made a difference. So, what was? It's, where did this got to be a multiplier at some point? Yeah. Oh, interesting. Man. We were we were so busy talking about uh, kebabs and Cadbury and Maltesers <laughs> and. <laughs> the, oh jeez. Uh, this time I'm going to pay more attention to the game. Um, so, oh. I mean. I don't know if what you can really put that down saying? to the rotation, taking Wooler out, which is Wooler, one of the best stackers in the FSL, because the bail, the bails were pretty close, right? They had one undelivered, which wouldn't have made a difference, wouldn't have scored enough points. Um, no. But it's just, it's, it's interesting that Trelleborg, I mean, they have the luxury of, of gambling a bit here, trying something new. And uh, also, they have the luxury of failing a little bit too. Yeah, yeah they also, finishing they also first have would give more them more prize money. They can use. Yeah, they don't need a noble chair. That's for sure. Maybe that's <laughs> maybe, <laughs> maybe that's why they're like we've got enough noble chairs. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> but I mean, credit to Bednar as well. They've had a heck of a day. They and, have had um, a hell of a day. And they've and they've just beaten. Now Tre the problem here is is that oftentimes when Trelleborg's uh, back is against the wall. They turn into like a rabid dog. But um, the, the, amazing, <laughs> the amazing thing about that one is there's there was no obvious uh, tactic that they used that massively disrupted Trelleborg. There's nothing I can see. That, Definitely some that unforced Trelleborg errors though to... by Trelleborg uh, throughout that, um, which is yeah. uncharacteristic for them. Um, yeah, it's but... a, yeah. There were there were a, a re yeah a reasonably large number of unforced errors there from them. I mean, there's no there's no place in the standings at stake now. Bednar are ninth, Trelleborg are first. That we know. Um, but Bednar are one more win away now from not only advancing to their first semifinal, their first final, but they are one game away from winning a final. And only Which three just... teams so far this season have, have done that. So that's pretty impressive. Bednar have to be happy with making it here, especially heading into next month. They've shown that uh, they can hang with some of the best teams in the FSL. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. They beat, they've, they've, even, even if it's just one game, they have beaten Trelleborg. Yeah. All right, here we go. We're about to, about to start this one. So Trelleborg, at stake for Trelleborg mainly bragging rights and prize money if they were to win this that would mean that they have won half of the tournaments this season wow. with uh cortiva vulture winning three cortiva winning two and so far trelleborg have won four um so that's at stake prize money is at stake as well obviously so we've got that to think about uh you're talking about the a, a difference of about 900 euros first place in a circuit tournament gets 3,800 euros, second place gets 2,900. And Bednar again banning the uh, the telehandlers by the looks of things. I wonder if Felden, because I'm sure, I'm willing to bet Felden was watching the play-ins yesterday. Um, I'm wondering if he could tell us if when they set that record yesterday, was it Wooler, JK, and Beatmaster? Or was it uh, Bynan here, who it, I'm at least seeing for the first time? Because I'm wondering if that's why they've decided to to ban 
the uh, telehandlers because Trelleborg haven't been using them all day. So it's an interesting yeah. strategy. I mean, hey, they won the first round, so something worked. But uh, I, I do know that it was pretty sure it was JK and Beatmaster that were in the clip. And it was JK grabbing the bail off of the bailer from Beatmaster and tossing it into the top, I believe, that scored that. But I'm just I'm not sure what the thinking is about banning the telehandlers um, unless they're just like, let's not even risk them getting 140 point first bail because that might set us back. All right, similar setup so far. Two big tractors banned by Trelleborg, two telehandlers banned by Bednar, both uh, team captains going with the John Deere 6120M. And these are pretty popular oh. <laughs> choices. You get the 6120M John Deere for stacking. You get the Case Puma, the Care Wheels for bailing and first bail points. How many kebabs might be kebabs in the U.S. are something completely different, and we yeah. don't really have we don't really have what uh, you guys consider a kebab. It's not really a thing over here that much. You can find it occasionally in big cities i'll probably be able to find it when i move to the chicago area um but other than that it's not a very popular thing and i when i grew up kebabs to me were just like uh meat and vegetable that you put on a stick and put over the grill that's what we call a kebab over here it's completely different okay right, that's what i was just go. wondering so it was the usual three yesterday I do feel like from Trelleborg, this was like, okay, this is about the best opportunity between oh. now and the grand finals for us to give Bynan some some chance uh, to get some game time. Bednar pipping Trelleborg to the ideal combine with no other combine nearby. That's going to hurt. That's going to delay them. Interesting. And look, you can see Trelleborg now rushing all around the field trying to get a second combine yeah another good start by bednar and uh let's see what that does Double. for first bail points too this is going to be close still you can see the silhouette from trelleborg they're like in the same exact location there really and bednar already heading off to drop that first bail if bednar is... win this final today i'm not chalking it up to uh your prediction i'm chalking it up to their fans that have shown up in forts yeah in their chat fans that showed up in i mean that's been awesome yeah and uh knock on wood credit to them they've been having to play this the only team that's remote today due to the travel restrictions and as of yet, no technical breaks. First bail of 119 Where? for Bednar and oh, JK wow. still coming what in. What is happening to Trelleborg? Oh, is Fuller this... had to no. travel home, and that's why we've seen this rotation. Thank you, uh, ah. Jenny, I assume. Maybe Klaus. Someone from Giant Software DE in chat. Uh, thank you for that information. We were just scratching our heads over here why the rotation. I thought maybe it was just like, a well, this is our only chance between now and the grand finals to do this other than in scrimmages. Yeah. Uh, but that, that makes sense because it is a Sunday. Um, it's going on, what, it's past 4 p.m. over there uh, now. Um, so understandable. A gyro. It's okay. actually pronounced like hero, I think. Oh, yeah. Oh, hero. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, you find a good Greek restaurant, that'll make one. If it, yeah, if that's it's about a proper the only Greek place you can get them. Because there's a couple of nice Greek restaurants in London that, uh, that I used to go to that made them really well. Cool. You know what I, am, uh, I still am ashamed at myself for is we traveled all the way over the the uk we were in london for how many days mrs kerm nine days. we were in london for seven though the nine days and amsterdam for the other two and we were like we're gonna get fish and chips and it never happened we were just all oh. over the place crazy and we never happened to like pass surprisingly never really passed a shop but we also stayed in like the posh area of london because we went to see uh several Chelsea matches 
So. I was going to say, your, your, your Chelsea Kensington has an amazing fish and chip shop, unfortunately. Well, I didn't find it wherever it was. Um, um, are you so I missed out. That's where we stayed. So, we stayed in Kensington. Um, so yeah, we uh, uh, We've got direct delivery as an option with the team driving past it and then not using it. Bad team. Multi team. Use direct delivery. <laughs> it's awesome. Yeah, teams don't like that one. It does only last for 30 seconds now. I wish, I think we should have upped the time that it lasts instead of the other way around. But it, but even even 30 seconds at one time is going to be disruptive. This is what I don't get. I don't think it has as much of an effect as as you think it will, personally. Wow. Well, but I do get the disruption possibly. bit. But 30 seconds at one and a half times, and it doesn't go up as fast as if you're delivering grain it's just i don't know it's not too strong bednar it, it, meanwhile the the problem is Tre trelleborg is a team that needs to disrupt right now which is very shocking to say <laughs> everyone's saying hi to you now mrs kerm <laughs> <laughs> Oh, change of tactic from Bedna. <laughs> <laughs> Just this shot of the empty chair. Uh. Oh, brilliant. Uh, yeah, change of tactic from Bedna. They have not delivered grain. I love that um, the, the Twitch filter just filtered out Steve saying, I'll give you fish and chips because it thought that you fish is an insult. Like, is... <laughs> It does sound like it could be a British insult, like, you fish. I can't. <laughs> not, not one I've ever heard. Me either, but it wouldn't surprise me that someone in the UK somewhere has said it at some point in time. I do, considering, considering the things the Twitch filter does filter out and the and doesn't. Twitch filter doesn't filter right. out, yeah, I'm you not fish. surprised. <laughs> oh, man. <sighs> This is what I love about, uh, like, not the Farming Simulator League eSport as, like, a live stream event. I always have a blast because we also just get to interact with chat, you know? It's not, like, a yeah. super high pace. Maybe we're talking a bit too much about Cadbury and the like during the final, but, you know, we're having fun, and I love interacting with the Farm Sim community. It's literally my job now. Um, I am so, I, I, thanks I'm everyone trying to here. figure out. Neither team has... So both teams have changed tactics in this second game. To the tactic I've suggested all day, but both teams... <laughs> <laughs> so we'll see what both teams are Also, doing. they're going to do the grain chain is what you're saying, so... Yeah. yeah. Like, the, di the disrupt is not going to disrupt here because it uh, seems like both teams are going to do it. Because both teams are doing a like for like. Unless, for some reason, like... Uh, grain multiplier drops and it's just way too far away for one team and they can't get there in time but and here goes Ventil out for Bednar collecting up bales and... right. <laughs> why okay I'm guessing Trelleborg have changed their tactics because their tactics didn't work last time I guess so but I love that Bednar have immediately adapted theirs to do the same thing okay so it's bale multiplier and bridge is lowered, bridge is lowered. um and the well, if you have like some bales on your uh, Anderson loader now, then go ahead and drive over there because it's at the barn anyways and grab it. But I don't think either team's ready to do that. And here goes Bednar, who have more grain because they have those two ideals. Is this gonna cause an issue? I still think overall the grain was even because Trelleborg had already delivered some. They had the advantage. Now it's pretty close to the same as it gets to two to two. Uh, two, to two. There's a little bit more for Bednar at the moment. Interesting. Focused faces there from Trelleborg. It's gone Trelleborg's way. So at the end of this, they're supposed to interview the runners up and the winners. <laughs> and bet I don't think they expected Bednar, the the remote team, to make it to the final today. But here we are. 
Uh, it has Bednar been have one shown hell an of absolute day great. For today. Yeah, they've had a great day. Well, the thing is, is like we were saying earlier. Okay, they've beaten. Uh, oh, is they've there beaten enough? Krona. No, that's it. They've beaten Krono, which Six was two. unexpected early, and then they beat uh, Perdinger, which was a little bit more expected, just going by the standings. And then it looked okay. You looked even at the beginning when they won the quarterfinal in the first quarterfinal of the day. It was like, well, okay. But if they make it to the final, they're probably going to have to play Vulture or Trelleborg, and that's going to be tough for them. But <laughs> they're doing well so far. Yeah, having a laugh is important. Yeah. And I try to I, I try to keep, you know, Farming Simulator League, it's an eSport. There's prize money at stake for these players. So yeah. it is pretty serious. But at the same time, if you're playing a game and you're not having fun while doing it or watching it, then you're doing it wrong. Um, yeah. And I, I really, as community coordinator, oh. I try to make that uh, known to people. <sighs> like, don't get hung up on not having fun when it comes to playing. Like, a game like Farm mm. Sim, if you're not having fun playing it, then... You're doing something seriously wrong. Yeah. And the great thing about Farm Sim is there are so many ways to play it. If you find you're not having fun playing it one way, try playing it another. Right. Try, you know, try setting yourself a challenge in it. Try, you know, I doing mean, just something look at else the fact with it. That I know that you you took a little bit of a break, mainly from YouTube uh, this summer. Yeah. Uh, but you got back to it. But just look at the sheer amount of like content you're still doing in others too. Oh. Like the game's been out for you know coming up on almost three years. Nineteen has, and uh, the people that stream it as their main game are still going strong and still finding new things to do. And part of that is the strong mod community, and also the strong community as a whole playing multiplayer with people and the like it just keeps the fun going. Even, even after thousands I mean, of I, hours. I said it in the... Um, when I was struggling at the end of FS17 uh, to find joy in it and, and find joy in, in the live streaming side of it particularly, that's when I came up with the realism experiment and went, all right, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to play this with a lot more realism. I'm going to get heavy into it for that. And, and completely reignited my interest because it was a completely different way to play the game. And now you do and, that a lot, right? It's become oh, kind of your staple. Yeah, that's, that's my favorite 19. way to play it. We have 20 bail points up for grabs on the super drop. Under four minutes ago, 10 point lead for Bednar still, 219 to 209. I, I, I am finding this exceptional that Bednar are winning this. Hello, Bra20. Hello, everyone on Twitch and YouTube. If Bednar win this, it's the end of the 10th tournament of season three of the Farming Simulator League. If Trelleborg can win, which they got the bail points, they got 30 bail points, that'll help. It's completely even now, 319 apiece. Uh, so that'll help Trelleborg. <sighs> Those 30 points could make the difference. If Trelleborg is, win, we go to the third close, of the best of three. Though. The bales are there for Bedner to win this. Just look at them go. Three nine yeah, they nine do, to three they nine. They have nine three nine. more bales at the moment with the score even. So that'll help. But they've got to make sure they get them all in. More bales coming in for Trelleborg. And Trelleborg ba bail dropping falling bails off, off the conveyor again. And this is this is put this has Ooh. put Bednar in the lead. Well in the lead. We are one, on the brink. One load in of the bails final. coming in for Wow. We're on the brink right now, Alex, in the final regular season tournament of having the biggest upset of the season, in my opinion. I mean, Voltra have won finals cortiva have beaten trelleborg in finals like but that's kind of to be expected right they're the top three teams in the standings but bednar coming into this week 10th place had never made it past the quarterfinals and they're two minutes away from potentially winning this here uh i mean it's close right now trelleborg 20 points ahead but 
a moment ago, Bednar had the bail advantage. So it's about getting the bails in and making sure, <laughs> look at this, a full <laughs> Anderson loader. But it's a minute 45. Do they have time to get every single in. one of these into the top? The Trelleborg have just delivered. But do they have time to get them into the top? A minute and a half. Let's see. I think, I think they do. And more bails. And Trelleborg are without Wooler, who is one of the best stackers in the FSL. Not to discredit uh, Beatmaster and his skills. But, but it's not usually the job that Beatmaster is doing for Trelleborg. And we no. saw one fall off a moment ago that slowed them down a bit. They do have the lead now, but it's going to come down to, like, Bednar cannot make a mistake here. They need no. to get if as Bednar, many bails under the spell get as possible. If get all these bails in, if they can hold fast and get all these bails in, then they will be fine. But they're having trouble getting them off. No, that's Trelleborg having trouble getting them off. 659 to 619. Now it's 659 for both teams. Oh, man, this is this Trelleborg is are crazy. getting more on the belt right now. They're still stacking them better, but they do have Six more bails nights. overall, Bednar. Even if... And another bail oh, comes another down one for Trelleborg. Fell off. That's bad news. This is still going to be close. It's 719 for both teams with two and bales per piece on the belt. Two bales on the belt. So Trelleborg about to take the lead. And then it's going to be even again. But then Bednar is about to take the lead. And then it'll be even again. And Bednar is going to take the lead if that one gets in. They're going to put one into the bottom. Both teams are. 809 to 759. 819 to 769. Here comes two, 819, 819 apiece, 819, 839, 839, 839, 839 for both teams, 849, 869, oh, Bednar into the bottom, it. Bednar did it, Bednar did it oh with God. bails into the bottom at the very end, and plus some went into the top, and Bednar, oh my gosh, Bednar. virtual farmer, Bednar oh, have just won a tournament, geez. and look at their fans in I chat, I not. love it, the I pride of Czech Republic, Bednar. <laughs> The pride of Czech Republic and all of their fans have been in, in <laughs> chat throughout the day. Three more bales delivered bales. and 30 points was the difference. <laughs> wow. I am cast. Two more into the top, one into the bottom. That is just, <laughs> that's insane. And plus that's Trelleborg, Trelleborg got bail points or it would have been even further yeah. of a gap. Well, they got the bail point super drop for 30 points. Oh. Or it would have been like a 50 60 point win. Goodness me. Oh wow. my God. I, I'm I really just... happy to see that because it means yeah. that four teams have now won a tournament. Um, unfortunately, congratulations, Bednar, but because they're not there in person, we're not going to have the traditional like uh, no. prize ceremony. Uh, so I'm not sure. I think we're going to see some highlights maybe and wow. uh, just kind of wrap things up from there. But congratulations congratulations to bednar. I mean, bednar what a win what what a, a run they've had today if i was strelleborg that would be what like i would go with as the excuse That's, like we didn't want another noble chair uh, no. <laughs> we didn't want another noble chair <laughs> that badly <laughs> <laughs> look at what you've done you did oh, oh. bednar is uh now virtual farmer's <laughs> biggest fan <laughs> Bednar is now uh, Virtual Farmer's biggest fan. He's going to have an influx of Czech Republic viewership here soon. <laughs> Don't forget to go enter the giveaway on Gleam, guys. We're giving away so a copy of Farming Simulator so 22. That's, that is the prizes. Ooh, really uh, quick on screen well, there. So some prize sure money, Noble Chair, so is, Nitrado yeah. vouchers. Oh, no, just, um, oh. Yeah, I'm not sure oh. what's going on at the moment. Um, but yeah, I just... I, uh, I did... <laughs> Uh, what the hell just happened? <laughs> I know if anything, if today has taught us anything, it's to expect really nothing when that it comes is, to the FSL. Yeah. So there um, we go. There's the uh, there's the gift cards that the uh, the uh, top uh, the the top ones win. Uh, second uh, silver and gold win a noble chair each, and there's the big check that Bednar have uh, have won 3350 euros um yeah, wow more importantly for Bednar they've gone into ninth place which seating could mean yeah. all of the difference really um if you can make it to the final that's the most important thing next Thanks. month yeah. on the 12th the 13th and 14th 
we'll have the season championship live from the studio in Erlangen, and there's going to be a prize pool totaling over 100,000 euros. First place gets 31,500, second 16, um, and then so on and so forth, down the ladder all the way to 16. But just making it has earned uh, each team that makes it a minimum of 1,550 euros. Um, So lots at stake, including that nice fancy trophy Next month, bragging rights and a whole lot of prize money as well. We're going to have some replays um, play. of that final before uh, we wrap things up so we get to see <laughs> how well Be- Bednar did. I am gobsmacked. I, I, am, I am. Congratulations, Bednar. No, I mean, congrats, they had absolutely a, uh, congratulations, Bednar. As uh, Felden said earlier, and someone was like, what does that mean? He says, it's going to be a real corker. And it Don't. was. <laughs> First bail in both matches. First bail went to bed now. Some amazing driving coming in yeah. there. Give him credit. Oh, Maybe geez. it was a good idea to ban both of those telehandlers. <laughs> um. <laughs> what, what were Trello Ball doing at the start? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, yeah, let me get that link into uh, YouTube Look again, at guys. That. that is just Oops. mad. Uh, 819, says, 839, 839, and then at the last second, three Felton bails said, what going. today has taught us is to never take gambling advice from virtual farmer. <laughs> <laughs> no, no. No, bet do, but go against what he predicts. Take gambling advice from it, just to bet on the opposite. Yeah, do the opposite, yeah. <laughs> do the opposite. He gives good advice if you if you take the other team. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Oh. Goodness. What a day. That uh, was amazing. What I, I tell a you tournament. What, it's been a pleasure uh, this season. I know we still have the finals uh, next month, but, I mean, it's been awesome, you know, coming into the fold, doing commentary with you and, and Silver News, nice. Joe and Lars and everyone else. It's It's been an absolute blast, and I'm glad it we does. have the finals next month because that's going to be a great time, too. Um, as we see the, so there, the league standings, there yeah. There are the final standings. And this will be uh, the seeding for nice. the finals. So the places that these you see these teams now, uh, I'm guessing that uh, Herman should actually be fourth because Cortiva has uh, more higher medals. They've actually won yeah. some finals, so surely that'll be the tiebreaker. Um, so Herman will be fourth, Cortiva fourth. third. But if you being in the top four is huge because you avoid playing each other in the group stage, yeah, uh, which could make a massive difference for massive. sure. So uh, yeah, what what a tournament! I am, um, I I. This is what I love about the FSL. The FSL is full of surprises every single tournament. Thanks, Steve. Yeah, Just thanks insane. everyone yeah, for all the thanks, love Steve. and the interaction. Thanks. And uh, thanks to my colleagues, the Giants, for putting these awesome tournaments on. And I hope yeah. you guys can tune into the grand finals. I believe that it's like group stage on the 12th of November. 13th and 14th is when the main action is going to be taking place. But yeah. 16 teams... Uh, all fighting for uh, the grand prize next month. So it's all to play for still. Huge, huge thank you to Giants for having me back again. I, I love doing this. This is amazing every time I do it. And, and yeah, the next I said, time I can't we wait see to get you guys for the tournament, by the time the tournament's over, we'll be eight days away from the release of Farming yes. Simulator 22 as well. Don't forget to go uh, enter the giveaway for a chance to win that too. And we'll see you next time, we'll all right? We'll see you Keep being awesome, next time. everyone. Goodbye, all.